Hello, hello everybody. Welcome parrots and Barden. Thank you for the lurk, Barden. And welcome any lurkers out there. Happy Friday. We got a few early boosts by Barden. At Baldur's Gates. Bola Tree. And what was Zelda Scrolls? They must be stopped if we are not too late. How many Kelvins have been rolled this season? Today, oh, well. today is the final day of the Evilometer season. And um, we are going to start the next one from scratch with the same characters and everything next Sunday. No new characters added yet. I'm very close to very close to deciding um, you know all the ca all the new characters I want for the next season I think I want um, let me check actually yeah I need two more evil characters as long as I decide on two more evil characters I will start you know collecting s sound bites and stuff so yeah maybe the May season may have the um, you know new characters anyway I hope you're having a fine day. Let's just jump into the game. And continue from where we left off. We did unlock a lot of stuff yesterday. And we were only able to go to the new part of the map towards the end of the day and also towards the end of the stream. So we couldn't even complete the first walk around. But you know, lots of interesting stuff happens. We found our car, we found our badge. So we we found we found about Ruby. We did not find Ruby herself. So we uh, actually accomplished a lot yesterday. But there's still quite a bit to go. Let's remember I have two skill points. I have a map now. What is this visual calculus check? Oh, it is this one, right? A scattering of bullet holes is Oh yeah, I, I left here. Okay. Alright, let's start. But though I, I am sure I have something for visual calculus. Glasses. Maybe I'll, I already have them on, I don't know. Oh, it's here. We found quite a bit of new piece of equipment too. Okay. I think I get minus one from from something to visual calculus. Oh, I don't. Okay, I thought I I get minus one from its auto or something. Oh, it's hand-eye coordination. All right, let's try this. A scattering of bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall. Reaching from one corner to the other. Why this many bullet holes? Unable to piece together the big picture just now. There's a hole in the hypothesis. Fine, okay. The scattering of bullet holes looks like one giant New critical smiling hits mouth. boost. Boku underscore Boku just boosted 47 6 F okay. 74 69 69 63. What New is that? Critical hits Hex? Boost. Hex codes Boku for Gothic. Boku just boosted 47 6 F 74 69 69 63 32. <laughs> I, I will assume that it's Gothic, Bagu. I don't know. I will I will just assume. Good to see you. How are you? I guess I can put a point. Look him even more bullet holes. Something's definitely gone down here. Mm, correct. The loot the the of the bullet closely. holes is unusual. Even in a general, average bullet hole frequency... Speak to him like that again, and I will Spring cut you fair. down where you stand. Gothic, yes. Meaning, this is a lot of bullet holes. The 269 like fully automatic seemed wrong. Fire. Something you don't see these days. Why not? The manufacturing and sale of automatic rifles was curtailed after the revolution. The destructive power of such tools proved to be 
too much. <laughs> we do need to retain some humanity. No worries, no worries. Ah, Alright, let's let's put a point in visual calculus. I like the skill, so a scattering of bullet it's holes good to is have an extra across point. the wall, reaching from one corner to the other. A row of ghostly shades stand facing the wall. Oh no. There are many wow. of them. A dozen at least. Makes sense. The heads lowered and eyes blindfolded. It's quiet. No sound. No movement. Ten meters away, other shades are lined up in an orderly manner. Automatic rifles primed. A gust of wind blows by. The coats of the firing squad flap slowly in the breeze. A single person stands on the side. It's dark, very dark. Faint lights flicker at the edge of your vision. It's rare for the order to be carried out at night. A long time has passed since the moment of this fusillading. Rain and brine have since washed all the blood away. Not a trace remains. The abundance of bullet holes leads to two options. Either an inordinate amount of executions were performed here, or they did not use a conscience round, where only one soldier has the loaded rifle. Looks like this was a mass execution with everyone fully armed. Look at the people against the wall. A host of men, probably in everyday clothes, ragged from the conflict and covered in dust. They were not sitting. A common practice for executions in some nations, as demonstrated by the height level of the bullet holes. They stand, facing the wall. It's impossible to discern any details about their personality or background. Look at the line of soldiers. Seven men in combat uniforms and dark coats, holding automatic rifles aimed at the people. Soldiers from some side, but from which one? Look at the person standing on the side. The Commandant. The one who gives the order. Machine gun fire crackling through the air. The lights of the muzzle flashes dancing on his face. Kim, who was who was who in this execution? I don't know. I don't know who died here, lined up beside that horrible wall. It could have been any of the parties involved in the revolution. Perhaps the ones executed here were the loyalist conservatives killed by the communists at the start of the civil war. Or it could have been the communists put to death during the last stretch of the conflict by the coalition forces. It could even have been the employees of the failed R&D center down the coast, as their building was taken over by the revolutionaries. Or maybe... What about people from the coalition, the so-called moralists? Yeah. It's very unlikely the coalition forces were the ones who died here. They were always the last ones against the wall. To be honest, if a coalition member was anyone in this situation, it was a commandant. The superior giving the orders. Goodbye, Wall. A Goodbye. cold sea wind blows away the figures. That's a great bleak start to the today's stream. Fitting. So do I want to? I, I'm kind of, you know, I'm. Be right back. See in a bit, Parrot. I'm kind of regretting putting. You know, so much emphasis on volition. I feel like it has tried to... At first, it certainly tried to help me, but then it felt like it got overzealous and tried to, you know, put the blame on... Um, what's her name? The smoking coffee woman. Okay, let's not put a point in anything. Maybe I can... Maybe I can... Get a new toad. Well, Greetings! Hey, Vincino. Good to see you. How are you today? How are you today, Vincino? You're alright. That's good to hear, I guess, as long as you are not below all right. Material. The trembling reeds. Nice discovery. At first, it just looks like trash. But if you look closer. That over there must be the boy class you told us about. 
The one she hid her passport in. We should take a look. This is the last day of the Evilometer season and I... I am hoping we can discover three more. Because that will mean we have discovered more than uh, the season that we have discovered the most so far. Too early in the day for you to tell. Yeah, I, I guess so. I guess so. You need your coffee and your second coffee and possibly your third coffee to be able to tell, right? Pick up the boy. You lift the boy out of the water without much effort. It's not tied to anything. The cords dangling from the bottom appear to have been cut. Examine the plastic ball. The number 11 has been written on the yellow plastic. It hasn't been in the water for very long, but it's already discolored and slimy with silt. A latch holds it close, but only just barely. You're a number two. The brittle metal of the latch has cracked. Simple construction. Shake the boy. There, there's something in there, splashing around. Sniff the boy. It smells like you would expect it to smell. A concentrated version of the coast. Salt, industrial slop and decay. I've got water with me today. That's good. I, I had almost none yesterday. The water this side of the And I didn't take a break to fill my bottles. Actually, smells I should have. Salty. Open the boy. A shot glass's worth of seawater pours out. Some algae and nothing else. But today I have a lot of bottles. Well, damn. They're like he's still here, a little longer and today floated away. We still got here too late. There's nothing of use here anymore. No documents. Who do you think took them? I have no idea. It's a minor quirk. Quirk. We know what was in the boy anyway. Or think we do. This is a small loose end either way. Not important, I hope. Maybe Klasia took them herself. That may very well be the case. We should keep an eye on her. <sighs> Nothing more for us to do here. Let's go. You could ask the miss what she thinks later if you have the time, though you doubt she'll tell you much at this point. Let them to boy be. I wonder if if we came here earlier in the day we would be able to take it. Probably not. These heavy military blockades are riddled with bullet holes crumbling. These soggy logs smell of ignition fluids, still they won't light up. It's almost impossible to get a fire going this near to the ocean. Tiny cages carefully constructed. These must be the cryptozoologists. I'm still going to talk to people later after walking everywhere. Oh. The rear tire of a motor carriage adorns these reeds. Relax, it's not yours. You didn't crash every MC in Revishall. Hopefully. Oh, quick travel unlocked church. A kick drum pulse, the music is coming from somewhere on the ice. Is this the church? Full of holes. Could the post side treasure? Look inside. Before you, a drawbridge. It can only be lowered from the other side. Money. Ooh. More money. Even more money. Painkillers too. A school of fish huddle around the fence post and scatter into the dark. So how do I get across? To your right, a white bellied cormorant eyes you suspiciously. It must have taken a lot of patience to do this. Yellow moss on the stones. They are probably stolen from someone's garden. Painted with pastels, someone is trying to bring cheer into the world. Trash from an ending party. Ball screwed into the ice keeps the tent erect. More tribalistic markings. This post is covered in little humanoids. 
A pane of etonite has been planted into the snow. Two poles are holding it up, barely holding it up. It could fall over any minute. A stronger gust of wind might be enough. What's this? It looks like a makeshift bridge. Could be convenient. Push the etonite over. The pane falls into the icy snow with a soft thunk. We should ask that girl on the ice what's going on here. We don't just just sort the young woman next to the tents. The tent is just tarpaulin fabric covering a pile of stuff. The flap is open. Inside, three young men are listening to some new form of music. It's like nothing you've ever heard. One of them looks at you. Come on, get in and close the flap behind you. The warm stuff's getting out. No way. NPCs, we are skipping NPCs for now. You feel the shadow of a very large building fall on you. The sign reads, Sanbrun, 1147. That's the pews in the shadows, many seem to be missing. An altar shrouded in dark, or something like that, it's too dark to tell. The rusty gears used to turn the whole machine. The building before you housed the engine must have been a big one. What engine? The chain trails off into the ocean to who knows where. An old door, worn by elements, Ooh. guards the depot. Ooh. The wind has blown a sand dune in front of it. The door hasn't been opened in a long while. You see a handle. What is this thing anyway? It's military. A service depot of some sort. Used to service what? Probably something that is no longer there. The lieutenant looks at the hunching concrete sword in front of it him. It may have been used to service an aerostatic battleship in the atmosphere. Or a fortification. Like a sea fort in the bay. Would this structure have been used to take the shots? From here to the whirling? I can't see how. The church is in the way. We can't get this right. I mean, I can get some interfacing from items. I would need to put everything I have into this to possibly have a slight chance of getting it. Okay, I already have my interfacing items then. Wait, do I have interfacing items? I have this, okay. That's all, I don't have much. What if I... An old door, worn by elements. Okay, that is pretty bad then. I mean, if I put the two points I have... Then... I have, you know, a chance to get... Not just with double sixes, but also with a six and a five, which is not much. We are not going to try it now. This barrel has been recently discarded. It still smells of fuel oil. I wonder why it is a red check. Secret bots cleaned away under a rock. Brands. 
Kikyo Moturi. Or something like that. You take a mental note. Tiu Moturi seems important somehow. Someone's made a campfire here a long time ago. A rusted broken control box for the radio relay tower. The side is too rusted to climb. The sea, sea, the sea air has eaten away at it. What is this? I'm gonna let stare off into the far distance where the paws trail forward. Wasn't this one of the locations that we suspected could be a sniper nest? Maybe, maybe not. I am not sure. I am here, right? I'm right here. I guess now I can start going into interiors and talking to NPCs. I, I think I have walked around everywhere, although it's tough to be sure. Never mind. I haven't been here. Had that phone smashed to see where, like someone hung up too hard. Someone must have worked hard to smash the plastic dome. A metal payphone under a yellow plastic dome. You could use it to call someone, unless you're out of change. Pick up the handset. You hear the tone. The machine is inoperable. Put 10 cents and dial a random number. Why are we dialing a random number? If it was like a muscle memory number, like in the Union... Union area... Someone has left an unidentifiable article of clothing on this railing. It smells really bad. Take a closer look. It's streaked with dried seagull shit and tangled with pieces of seaweed. A dangling arm suggests that there might be a jacket beneath the crust of filth. It seems likely that it was left in the surf until someone laid it out on this fence to dry out. Unfortunately, that just seems to have stiffened it into a shapeless mass. Please tell me you're not taking that with you. Why not? It's a guano encrusted jacket. And you're already carrying around enough as it is. No, I'm taking it. Come on. It is it is a very important evidence, okay? As a makeshift roof, vagrants have tried to make the board world capital. That tarp will keep out neither rain nor snow nor winds. Another postcard. We have a lot of stuff to examine. The coin-operated weighing machine hasn't been used for a decade. The great white bat has great white guano. <laughs> hey, parrot. Welcome back to Encyclopedia Minus One Perception. Okay, vagrants have recently painted the tarp and water drips from it. More tear. What is this sound stuttering? Picking up random destroyed old jacket covered in shit when the video games got so relatable. A big wine canister is open and empty. Oh. The smell. It's awful and familiar. What is it? Don't you recognize it? That hideous pungency. That faintly cloying sweetness. Only death smells like that. Something cold wakes in the pit of your stomach. Fear. It is death. It must be. Heads up, Lieutenant. Something's not right here. The Lieutenant has already brought a handkerchief to his nose. That was another sword. Where did it go? There's some tear. 
an empty cigarette package and a crumpled kebab wrapper in the trash bin. Examine the tear. Two empty bottles of Tallulah vodka and a can of black potent porter is all you find. No, there's more in there. Livis strawberry liquor, plus some Pilsner bottles too. Better not pick them up. They seem unhygienic. A tragedy. Lieutenant looks in the can, eyes watering from the smoke. He shakes his head with genuine sadness. Examine the cigarette package. Whoever tossed it here was a heavy smoker. The brand name reads Red Astra. Examine the kebab wrapper. You see traces of mayonnaise and ketchup on it, as well as a tomato wedge. What? The wrapper reads Shish Kebab Revachol. Who puts mayonnaise and ketchup on Shish Kebab? Come on, come on, game. It's no older than a day or two. No mold yet. It's hard to concentrate in the smell. The sea air brings some relief. This coin operated viewer has been out of order for years. A man lies on the boardwalk, his limbs bent and neck turned at an unnatural angle. Right next to him is an empty bottle of spirits in his cramped hand. A chewing gum wrapper. Half of his body has slipped between the cracked boardwalk, starting with the right leg. The fall has left him broken, contorted like a sad puppet. The smell is not as bad as a two week old corpse, but it's definitely heading there. Hold on. Lieutenant squats next to the corpse and examines his face. Two bulging guys stare back at him, void of any signs of life. Lividity is faintly pronounced. Whoever this is, he's been dead for two days. No longer. We need to investigate. He stands up and shivers as a gust of wind blows through his bomber jacket. Another dead body. This is your job. Steal yourself. Calm now. Carefully. Just another day. Just another dead body. Breathe. A sailor. A man lies Study on the man's clothes. He's wearing mud caked boots beige trousers and an old brown leather jacket with a bright blue lining. There are traces of kebab sauce on his chest. The leather jacket suits him well. It must be custom made. Search his pockets. You find some sunflower seeds and a rain soaked library card folded into two. His jacket feels sodden and heavy under your hand. Good. We should take a look at that library card after this is done. Study the man, seems, study the man himself. The man has fallen through a crack in the boardwalk and hit his head against the metal bench. Coagulated blood covers his black hair. One of his feet is still dangling through the hole. A bad fall. It might have been dark outside. This place is a minefield in the dark. Examine his face. His expression is dull, like the sea behind him. Drops of water shining on his moustache. His eyes, empty and wide, look frightening in their frozen gaze. Height, 170 to 175 centimeters. Curly hair, stout build, age approximately 50 to 60 years. Study the surroundings. There's some dried blood on the metal bench, right where the corpse's head rests. The floorboards are rotten and slippery wet around the hole. An empty bottle lies nearby. A chewing gum wrapper is clutched in his fist. Be very, very careful where you step here. Examine the man's head. A dried chunk of blood covers the hair at the back of his head. An open wound. It's sticky and cold to your touch. I don't see any other major wounds, do you? It's hard to say. Seems like the head wound was fatal. It's exactly the shape of the bench. Examine the bottle. A 0.75 liter Tallulah vodka with its cap missing. There's hardly anything left inside. Tear all around us. He looks at two other bottles near the coin operated viewer than at your yellow plastic bag. I'd prefer if you didn't collect them this time. It's not proper. Examine the chewing gum wrapper. Rubowski spearmint chewing gum. Green leaves on the cover. The man's <laughs> mouth is half agape from the terror of the fall. Look in. The blackness of death. Stench. You think you see white chewing gum too. Confirmed. Nearly the whole pack is there. Solidified on his lower rear teeth. He ate the whole pack, right? 
it's to cover the smell of alcohol before going home. The worst thing is, I've seen it before. Almost the same scenario, even the chewing gum. It's always the same. The entire okay. boardwalk creaks in the wind as you take a step. I need so off here. As much as I can get. All right. A man lies. Up. There's some drop Be very step very on the floorboards. Careful. They screech under your feet ominously. It's hard to say whether the dead man's weight was the cause of the boardwalk to break. It definitely looks fragile. You see waves churning below. Something cracks beneath your feet. He could have easily disappeared into the sea through that hole, and you would have never found him. Oh, really? Okay. The entire boardwalk creaks in the wind as you take a step back. Who is this man? Looks like one of the locals. He'd have to know this spot to come here. You don't just walk over here. He looks south the way you came. But that's just a lazy assumption. What do you think? I think labeling him as an alcoholic is a bit premature. We don't know anything yet. We do know that he was married. The lieutenant points at the ring on the man's left hand, the flesh around it swollen and grey. But you're right. Let's not run ahead. For now, all we know is that he's an unidentified middle-aged man found dead on the Martinez boardwalk. What do you think happens here? Death by misadventure. He slipped and fell through the boardwalk. A truly unfortunate accident. If it wouldn't have been for that bench, he'd be alive. Could it be related to the lynching, Ruby? No, I don't see anything that points in that direction. For now, let's treat this case as a simple, albeit sad, accident, and related to the murder case. Agreed. If this somehow converges later, why not? But keep it simple for now. Do you think he was drunk? Point at the bottle. Oh, yes. What about alcohol poisoning and liver failure? Some symptoms of acute alcohol poisoning could have definitely played a role here. Severe confusion respiratory depression, and predictable behavior. But I think that death arrived through head trauma, not liver failure. What about the kebab? What about it? The deceased ate some kebab. He shrugs. It's probably from a nearby place, maybe in the box. Sometimes a kebab is just a kebab. A kebab is never just a kebab, okay? Someone should be held responsible for this broken boardwalk. It's dangerous. They'll seal this place off after the news reaches the coalition officials. I doubt that they have enough resources to actually repair the boardwalk. Not that sealing it off would keep anyone away. All it does is keep the city council's hands clean. Right. It does seem to be a pretty straightforward misadventure. Although there's still a question of identifying the body. What should we do with them? From where I stand, I can see two options. We either take the case and follow the leads to identify the body on our own. Or we report back to the station and leave this for our colleagues to handle. Hold on, what about field autopsy? A field autopsy isn't necessary if the cause of death doesn't appear to be criminal. And this looks like a simple accident to me. I'd say we should just write down head trauma and leave it at that. Let's keep this detour as short as possible. The sooner we get back to finding Ruby, the better. Yes, but isn't that kind of sloppy? Maybe, but we don't really have much time or resources to spare. The guys at processing will take care of the rest. He found him, we should finish this. All right, we should first examine the library card you found. Then we can call the station from my kinema. Let them know we are taking the case. Okay. The library card is folded into two and still slightly wet to the touch. The front side reads, Central General Public Library Card, issued to Billy Mejean. Expires July 53. Billy is a unisex name. Could be the deceased or his family member. Look inside. 
Whoever owns this card is an avid reader. You find a list of books written in blue pencil. Radio Thriller. Stand a little less between me and the sun. The last one in the list is The Glinton Curve by M. Theobald. A library stamp indicates that the book has been returned. Most of these titles seem to be in the sci-fi genre. Some thrillers too. Chances are the bookshop owner, you know, plain sounds not knows this man. Look at the back side. If lost, please return the card oh. to the library. Okay. Dial zero zero five. Now we zero don't. We have a five five non-random number to call. One one, or visit us at Moreau Street. 78 Jamrock. Business hours 900 to 1800. Gotta be during business hours, Good. obviously. We should give them a call from my kinema. See if we can learn anything about Billy Mejean. Hey QP, how are you today? Good idea. There was plenty of information here to go by. Let's check the jacket also. As you hold it in your hands, it makes an uncomfortable crunching sound. Man, how did this jacket get so disgusting? It's a sordid, filthy tale. Not for the weak. Are you sure you can stomach it? I can. Some secrets are better left uncovered. Don't even try. Seriously. Think about it. It occurs to you that you're not even holding the jacket itself, but rather the thick crust of jetsam and seagull shit that ensconces it. It smells like a dead sea creature, tangled in grey strands of seaweed. It must have spent quite some time in the water before the tide deposited it ashore. Okay, but what's the crust made of? Somehow, it was carried or dragged to the boardwalk. If not by human hands, then perhaps the feral dogs that prowl the beaches at night. The faint impressions of many footprints are also present, though it's impossible to tell what kind or how many. You are doing okay. Suffice to say, the jacket spent some time on the ground I'm before also someone okay. draped it over the railing. What happened once someone what happened once someone put it on the railing? The crust is hard. This jacket spent at least a day baking in the sun. Who knows what happened to it then? I'm just going to pretend I didn't think about any of this. It's too late. You've already thought about it. And now you're oh, before Lord Diablo. Ew, ew, ew. Flick your hands. Now you're just flicking that shit everywhere. This is a disaster. You'll never get the smell out. <laughs> no, they're covered in shit. That's okay. Can we make three more discoveries today? Even you are doing okay, if the right person asks. A man lies on the... We are all doing okay. There's some tear. Okay. Oh, 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 what's... Careful there, these floorboards look rotten and weak. Moonshine probably smells like t tasty fermentation. Alright, let's, let's start talking to NPCs. I think now we have been to error. Or not. There is a slit in the concrete here, a sewer. Rust eaten lettuce read mazuts. Mazuts. Oh, another completely different area, okay. Bars cover these long dust windows. Where does this connect to? Ah, wait. I was here, right? I think I was here. The remaining windows rattle from a strong gust of wind. They're covered in a thick layer of grime. They must have been like this for 40 years. 
Try to see inside. Dripping water falls from a high place. All you can see is the shadow of a collapsing staircase. There's rust and corrosion on the bars. They're foaming with it. And a small layer of white salt from the sea. Lieutenant, can you make out what's inside? No. I won't even try. You know... He takes his glasses off. I had a partner once. They called him Eyes. Because he had to show me things. It's that bad. Can you still shoot though? Well enough, actually. It's odd how that works. I'm no sharpshooter, but I pass my shooting courses 7 out of 10. Another power box. It charges nothing now, it's empty. Defense blocks the path, no way from here. Are you sure? I have chain cutters. You see, a once bright mural towering above you. The signage has peeled off over the years, but you can still make out Feld Electrical R&D, a slogan used to intertwine with the loops a long time ago. Now, only a shadow of peeled letters remains. It says, tomorrow is just a whisper away. Tomorrow is just a whisper away. Looks like tomorrow never came. Lieutenant raises the collar of his bomber jacket. Run away. Isn't that a Bond movie? Tomorrow never comes. Or, I don't know. Am I making it up? I think that's a Bond movie. Tomorrow never dies. Right, tomorrow never dies. Not tomorrow never comes. I made that up. Johnny Isle would be disappointed in me. Don't tell him I, I failed. I failed Bond. You won't tell. Thank you. How do I get here? It looks like there are stairs from inside, but there is no way to go inside, is there? Oh, there's a ladder here. Can I climb it? You see, a slope. On the other hand, the links to the song Tomorrow Never Comes were written by John Johnny Bond, so I put it now. Really? The light vanishes inside the concrete slit. The structure goes deep under the earth. What's in there? Maybe it's just a storm drain for the sewer. Kim, any idea what's down there? No idea. Could be connected to one of the buildings around here. Think we might find Ruby down there? We might find her down somewhere. There's an old storm drain system beneath Martinez that's mostly collapsed. Revachol sewage system has been built and rebuilt four or five times now. In conclusion, she could be under any building. But not in there? <sighs> I hope not. Let's not yell. If she's there, let's not, you know, tell her that we are coming for her. I see a tear there. No, I wasn't seeing anything there. Have I been everywhere? This area is so confusing. Let's go all the way to the back. To the start. 
and try talking to people. I think I went in there. Can I locate myself on the map? Not, not exactly. So I am somewhere here. No, I am here. Exactly here right now. A creaking ahead, a broken axle grinding. Alright, this is where we started. And there are no NPCs in this part. There is nothing here. We have been in here. There was no one in here, right? Let's let's check again. Yeah. So these are the first two NPCs. I think this is the fisherman's sh fisherman shacks. So one, two, three NPCs that I remember. Let's start with this. I'll just keep oh, the cordial in the channel, if that's okay. It's too shallow near the pier. She wins the mooring line around the post. Hi, ma'am. And it's a jetty, by the way. Ilian, the net picker. Of course. Jetty. I prefer a good jetty to appear any day. Jet jet jetty. Hello, ma'am. Hello, detectives. She fastens the end of the line around the post and straightens her back. It's good to see you here. I only just arrived myself. What brings you here, madame? Nothing, really. I've had my eye on this jetty for weeks now, so I decided to investigate it personally. This cluster of buildings isn't on any of the official maps, as far as I can tell. That. And she's also keeping an eye on you. Have you been spying on us? Spying has such a negative connotation. I did track your progress along the coast, however, and decided I would be better able to assist you from here. Then there's the matter of that little scamp in old lady clothes. She threatened to paint the cordillate she read. Like blood, you see. Well, I like it the way it is. White. So how do you like it here? Look around. Hmm. How do I like it? She casts her gaze towards the village, slash melting on the cinder blocks construction work left half finished ten years ago. Water drips down eaves of Etonite. The jetty below her feet creaks to the tune, with a smell of salt and dog shit in the background. It's pornographically poor. The street has no name, all the men are dead or missing. And is that the carcass of a motor carriage over there? No, 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 it's not. It's not. I'm it's, surprised it's that something woman hasn't put different. me to the sword yet. Maybe she will. You should ask your questions while you can. Dark eyes survey the coast leading up to Martinez. Dull grey metal rests in her scabbard. A sword. The wind is too loud for her to hear. Fortunately for you, madame, the RCM is on the scene. You are in no danger, the working class have no idea what's happening to them. Try not to be scared, this is just how the real city looks. Oh, I'm not frightened, officer. I'd never... She leans against the railing, looking up at the grey sky. Have I told you how they discovered this place? The wind picks up, her raincoat flaps in the gusts. Be silent? No, the Insel Indian, Isola. No, you haven't told me how they found it. Well, your condition has left you no worse off than most of these people. The literacy rate is around 45% west of the river. 50 years of occupation have left these people in an oblivion of poverty. 45% is around where I operate. Things are getting better, though. I knew you would sympathize. Most Revisholians will never know what this place means. Our home. This island of matter. Or why they were ferried over in the first place. 
Remind me to tell you one day. For now, how can I assist you in this new location? Tell me now, we have time. Do we? He glanced at his watch. It doesn't look like he does. I hear you have singled out a suspect and are in pursuit. This is cause for cautious optimism. I would not want to delay you. Maybe there is something else I can assist you with while you're hot in pursuit. Show her your badge. I found my badge, by the way. I love you did. He inspects the, the, blue piece, the piece of blue plastic, her eyes scanning from left to right. Fast, observantly, like an electronic printer. Pleased to meet you, Lieutenant W. Freighter Dubois. I am glad to see a man of high qualification. The situation is precarious. What can I help you with, Lieutenant Yefreiter? Double Yefreiter to you, ma'am. Hmm. She's not even asking you anything. It's so easy to just say. Should I tell her? Sure. I mean, I don't like Everard or, or this one. Come to think of it, the only character I like in this game is Kim. <laughs> I don't like anyone else, <laughs> including Harry. He asked me to open the door. A referral, you mean? I take it this was for someone in the RCM. Don't answer that. Yes, a referral. Such referrals may sometimes get you information from a man like Everard. Did it? Detective, I advise you to be very selective with what information you choose to share. This may have consequences beyond our line of sight. Okay, this is... The Union's militant wing is organized. Milton Wing organized the lynching. Everard says the Wild Pines sent mercenaries after the Union and now one's dead. Everard asked the Union's Milton Wing to fully cooperate with the investigation. He didn't seem at all worried about the whole conflict that's developing. Okay, let's say this. Let's say this so that it's, you know, it may not defuse the situation, but it might at least not make it worse. Because I fear anything else could cause more mercenaries to be sent and the civil war to happen, you know, on the streets. Let's say this. How benevolent. Hopefully they'll help you sort this whole business out, <laughs> if they easy. haven't already. While we appreciate your assistance, ma'am, I'm afraid we can't discuss the specifics of an ongoing investigation with you. That is only fair. This Milton Wink has singled out a suspect for me. It looks like you may untie this knot yet. That's all I've got to say. New critical no worries at all, Vincino. Thank you Vincino for the boost. Vincino Min just boosted Dungeon Siege. New critical hits boost. Vincino Min just boosted Nox. New critical hits boost. Vincino Min just boosted Elder Scrolls. New critical hits boost. Quiescent Pandemonium just boosted Kingdom. New critical hits boost. Quiescent Pandemonium just boosted Nox. What? New critical hits Kingdom. boost. Quiescent Pandemonium just boosted Revenant. Thanks for the boost, Wincino and QP, and good luck with your work, Wincino. I'll see you later. That's all I've got to say. Naturally, Detective. There are lighter topics to gossip about. He asked me to deliver an envelope. Sounds like he has you running errands, Detective. A well-established dominance ritual. Where did he have you deliver it? Here. Here? Oh, no. What does that bloated hellbat want with my little cinderblock town? It's clear the village has already grown dear to her. Strangely so. Why did she come here? No, don't tell me. I don't want to know what he has in store for this place. Probably a statue. It's a statue, right? A giant statue of him. Or better yet, his twin hey, brother. Hey, Happy Friday. Practically the same thing, but makes him seem less like a psychopath. How are you today? I hope you're having a good day.
You're quite fond of this village, aren't you? I should be. In my youth, I had a brief dalliance here in Martinez. Yeah, good, good to hear. He was an older man with impossibly broad shoulders. Did you make much progress with um, Grimrock yesterday? After I left? He's probably dead by now. Even his shack is long gone. Not that it matters. These buildings are all carbon copies of one another. You've been to Martinez before? Yes. I was slumming it with some girlfriends of mine. We had boats and... Don't hold it against me. My paramour certainly did not. Sounds like you missed those times. Not but overly that's the so. puzzle. It's not like this was the only place we visited. Sounds me very and good. my girlfriends from Azon with our shiny boats. Like Reavers. You got me excited to play it too, but I think I will wait for it to be selected. You know, in the... In the next few decades, I'm sure we are going to select it as part of Critical Hits. We told ourselves we were the worst thing to happen to the coast since the Coalition landed in 08. Imagine. She tosses her head. Oh no. She's sentimental, all right. Why would she come here otherwise? Why did you come here, Dan, to this jetty? I'm over-radiated, Harry. I do silly things sometimes. Out of pale related illness. Like sail over here. The moral of the story is... Do not spend 22 days a year in pale transit. Don't waste your 20s slumming it with your stupid friends. And don't deliver Everard Clare's mail. Her bony finger is pointed like an arrow at your chest. Are you satisfied, detective? What else can you tell me about your mail delivery quest for Everard? Do you, you think it will improve the place? He wants to build a youth center here for the children of Martinez. A youth center with Edgar Clare's statue on top of it? She looks down the jetty remorsefully. Go ahead. Help him. Make it so. I have no power to stop him. You would prefer something else, not a youth center? First, there won't be a youth center. Yeah. Whatever he has told you or the residents, it'll be something horrific, perhaps even worse than a statue. So, yes, I do. Like what? A fishery. I've been speaking with Lillian here. She gave me the idea. The infrastructure is all here, and with my connections... Sadly, it's just one of the million things I'll never get round to. I just have to accept that I'll never be the rich candy girl who goes around solving people's problems with money. So you're sad you can't buy the place? Yes. I'm sad I'll never have the time, Detective. I've always wanted a dilapidating fishing village. I know the feeling. She is more defensive about it than usual. Full of ghosts and ancient memories. <laughs> Has this errand yielded you any... information? No. Of course, detective. Let's go. So it is 2, 2 a.m. Time doesn't pass after this point, so we can do anything. We can take our time with everything. Hi, officer. A woman in a raincoat stands on the quay, considering an overturned boat. A sword in a scabbard hangs from her hip. Anything I can help you with? As always, I am the lawbringer. No. I have questions first is what's your name? No, that depends. Where are we exactly? A fishing village on the seashore. This place doesn't really have a name. I it's am sometimes the called bringer. Elisibla. Why? The sign on the street leading here is illegible. Has been since they built this place. The wind rattles her earrings. Our questions first is what's your name? The name is Lillian. People call me Net Picker. She just just sort of fishnets. I think I have time for questions. And that was actually the second one. <laughs> Indeed, you're always confused as to your whereabouts. I'm looking for someone. Maybe you can help. Let's see. Who are you looking for? She tilts her head ever so slightly. I'm looking for a suspect who might have stayed in this neighborhood. Okay. When did this person stay here? Here recently, over the past few days. She might have arrived on Friday. Oh. I've been out on the sea for most of the past week. The weather's been good for fishing, so I usually start at four in the morning. Really? Yes, that's the optimal time. Got to make the most of the calm. I've been sleeping like a corpse after. The sea really takes its toll. Now I'm just waiting for the wind to settle to get out there again. Sorry I couldn't help you out. Maybe I can help you find someone else. I'm looking for missing cryptozoologists. 
I don't think I know what these are. Care to elaborate? People who look for animals who are hard to find. Aha! Like snowmen. Snowmen? I haven't heard about those. Two old guys have been wandering around here. Nose in sand, talking nonsense about snowmen and the like. Wait, the like? Right. Not only snowmen, also green men, monkey men, burning rhinos. You get the picture. Oh, you're getting it. And it is gorgeous. Where did they go? I don't really know. I know where they are. Further down the peninsula, I guess. I mean, that's where they were heading. That's what it. What are you looking for besides snowmen? That's it. I'm not looking for anyone else right now. Well, how can I assist you then, officer? Oh? Well, how can I assist you then, officer? What do you do around here? Like I said, fish mostly. Sail the waves, take care of the kids, pick nets. Right now, I'm tarring a little skiff. What else? I sell the fish to people in the Delta to serve at their fancy restaurants. Authentic insular Indian cuisine. Is it enough to make a living? Sometimes I also walk to the beach to see what the sea has given up. The sea is full of surprises. Interesting. What have you found? Wood. Pieces of glass. Every once in a while we see dead bodies. Human, animal, fish, other odd sea creatures. A mine washed ashore once. Bottles, drugs also. Lost cargo in general. Most of the time it's just wood and glass. All right. Major choice moment. You only get to ask one thing. It would be weird to say them all. Choose wisely. Mines. Mines. You need mines. Hmm. You know what? Maybe with that mine we can open that door. I think physical instrument has a point. Human bodies, you know, staying at the sea, depending on the time, it probably has decomposed to the point of being unident unidentifiable. A mine, the RCM could use a mine, where is it? Well, the RCM has to wait for another one, because some army folks came by, Aww. took it in the middle of the bay and blew it up. The blast was surprisingly timid for such a huge spiky thing. Spiky? Must have been a naval contact mine. Unfortunate. Nice sword. Point at the saber on her hip. Does it come with a story? Unfortunately, the factory sold this one with a three-year warranty instead of story. She smiles at her own joke. <laughs> it's to intimidate folks, mostly. Hold on, do you know how to use it? Not really. I know some basic moves, and I know it sure as hell beats a knife when you're in a tough spot. But not when you're in a tight spot. It is imposing. It's a regular mass-produced sword, like a shovel or an axe. Nothing fancy, just for intimidation. Why do you need intimidation tactics? From time to time, people need a lesson in respect. That's just the way it is. Back in the day, I caught the eyes of many men. <laughs> and believe me, men need a lesson in manners from time to time. Can I borrow that sword? No, I'm afraid not. Tempting to confiscate the blade I use to keep these animals in check. You would put me in an early grave. Why don't more of you and arm themselves if it's so effective? What makes you think we haven't? <laughs> the truth is that almost everyone in this life is scared and tired and stupid and too dull for that. That goes for men too. But they put on an act for us. Pretend like everything's good and living in shit doesn't bother them. Like anyone falls for that. That does not go for real men. It does not go for you. Shut up, physical Show instrument. Her. Show her the wonder. Coach means the expression. Yeah. True, most people I've met are scared. I. No one wants to talk about how frightened they are. But only frightened people are really dangerous. And plenty of them are dangerous. So where are all the men now? Some went to patch their wounds, their lesson learned. Others were more thick-headed. And one of them, I ended up marrying. Wait, why, if they are thick-headed? Guess I enjoyed the way he bled. Her expression doesn't change. It's hard to say if it's a joke. If it is, then why the melancholy? Where is your husband now? Gone. Gone where? To the waves. The sea took him. It was a long time ago.
Oh, say no more, wait for her to continue. He didn't respect the sea. Went out there, drunk like a skunk, and sure enough, one day the boat was found floating empty. The bloated corpse turned up two weeks later. Now, before you tell me how sorry you are for my loss, know that it was four years ago, and I've moved on. There's only so much mourning you can do for a drunk with sinewy muscles. <laughs> you should have thrown yourself in the waves after him, not sagely. Time really is the best cure for sorrow, isn't it? Us working folk don't have the luxury to be bed sick with melancholy. She crossed I her arms. Him, mourned for an appropriate amount of time and went on. Life didn't really change that much for me and the kids. She glanced at the village where two little kids are playing with what look like little... With what look like rocks. Where are the kids? There are no kids. It's 2 a.m. This is neither a touchy nor a very interesting topic for her. She looks like she's ready to go on a date with another, better, drunk. Fuck. Ask her. Both of you could need some action. No. So I take it that's your skiff point at your return boat? Sure is. The sun, I call her, coated with a fresh layer of tar just yesterday. It'll take some time for it to dry, assuming the sunny days continue. He's seeing you. So this is locked. Oh, wait. Where is the NPC around here? There was a woman sitting here, so I guess she was gone at two. Can we open these doors? No. So there was the tent and the woman near the tent. There were the cryptozoologists. Um, did I see more? Maybe I should just come during the day. Looking back at you from the rust colored water, you... Okay, the, the woman and the tent is here at least. A shaggy looking girl in her late teens or early twenties kneels on the ice with an electronic contraption in her hand. Hearing you approach, she looks up. Oh, hello there. It's cold out here, but she's not wearing a hat. She must be freezing. Dear child, it's freezing. Where's your hat? Huh? She looks up at you, distracted. Maybe she didn't hear you. I said a you should have loud. a hat on. So should you. I do have a hat on. I should and I do point at your head. Oh, I didn't notice that. It's nice. You should have, you should wear one too, if you plan on staying outside in the sweater. Yeah, well... Look, man, fuck the hat. Okay. Is that kind of language really necessary? So fun. I'm sorry I said fuck the hat. I was concentrating on something else. My whole family swears and it rubbed off on me. There's a pained expression on her face. She'll answer your questions now. Have you seen a red-haired woman around? No. Just no? It's pretty desolate here. I only hear the dogs bark at night and see the shadows move down the coast. Teenagers skulking around. Gang members looking for a hole in the Union's defences. Maybe Ruby too. But she wouldn't be able to tell from here. What's your name? Acel. Her hair is dyed blonde, with dark roots showing. There's a coarseness to her features, some masculinity below that timidness. And your surname? Why? I'm from the police, it's for the paperwork. Okay, it's Berger. A very common name. She made it up. What's that device you have there? This is a portable recording device. It's for field recording. Low quality, but still. And the wires? Actually, just one wire. I picked on it till the braiding came loose. The wire leads to a contact microphone. What's a contact microphone? A contact mic records sounds from inside things, like this ice. 
Nice. You could maybe bug someone with it. Wiretapping. How does that thing work? The mic? I don't exactly know. Somehow it doesn't pick up vibrations from the air. The book said it only picks up structure born sound. If you like techno babble. What did you where did you get the mic from? Same place I got the recorder from. The Palisseum. It's the Palisseum. Oh man. You haven't been to the Palisseum? It's the coolest place in this whole drug addled shithole. It's a music club and a synthesizer workshop on Boogie Street in Jamrock. Musicians live there, like real musicians. I once saw Arno Van Eyck. Thinking about it really cheers her up. It's a long way from here, though. Sounds interesting. Who is this Arno guy? Oh, yeah. Guess you wouldn't know Van Eyck. Or really be a Palisseum going kind of person. I get down. I don't know what that means. I grind. I don't know what that means either. It means I'm hippie on my ears. That's cool. She breathes on her fingers. Looks like she doesn't know what to say. You're right. Time has deserted me. Sucks, man. Was there something else? About the contact mic, perhaps? Actually, I had some non-mic questions for you. Okay. What are you doing out here in the cold? Recording, I guess. And what is it you're recording exactly? I think I'm recording cracks in the ice. But there's no way to tell. Not without headphones. I think I just recorded your footsteps, too. Not sure how that will sound. She scratches her forehead. What happened to the old headphones? Wait, what happened to the headphones? My boyfriend sold them. What for? I don't know, man. Things. Just stuff you need for life. Everything checks out, sire. And what are these recordings for? The cracks, the footsteps? The musicians in the Palisseum used them for making music. They looped the stuff, cutting the tapes together. They make music out of cracks in the ice and keys jangling. Crazy sounds like that. It's hard to explain. Just not. Anyway, I thought I'd make some too. It's supposed to be, like, a music place anyway. She rubs her shoulders and looks around. I don't really know what I'm doing. They use synthesizers too. I don't have a synthesizer. She looks at the recording device. The thing she thought would fill her hours with joy and escape. It's turning out to be an empty fantasy. She feels childish very useless all of a sudden. The sharp drop in endorphins is almost visible, like a warm blanket has fallen off her shoulders. The wave of chill, the quivering jaw, indications of a drug high. Take this, you're cold. The lieutenant begins to take off his jacket. No man, fuck that, I'm cold. I'm sorry I said that. I'm sorry about the fuck. It's okay. The lieutenant backs up, he throws you a glance. You hurry your hat. Here, you need this more than I do. But my hat. I like my hat. It gives me. What does it give me? Ah, heck. Here, you need this more than I do. Thanks. We lost the orange bomb hat. <laughs> I should have given her the other hat. You said it's supposed to be a music place. What is? That. The boys think it could be a place. Like the Palisseum or something. Stupid. It's really not going to be a Palisseum, that's for sure. And who are these boys? The boys? Yeah. Andre and the guys. They're inside. In the tent. And why is that? It made your bum oranges. Oranje. Why is that? Why are you freezing out here while the boys are inside? They got too much stuff crammed in there. No room. Stuff like what? Music stuff, mostly. Like this tape recorder, but bigger. And there's piles of it. Why not just leave some of it outside so you don't have to freeze? That stuff is more expensive than I am. More expensive than any of us, really. Doesn't matter. I can take the cold. I have some other questions. Go ahead. Okay... Tell me more about this music place you've been planning in the church. It's supposed mm -hmm. to become, like, a club. For anodic dance music. Like that new style of synthesizer stuff they play at the Palisseum. Except that... Yeah. She looks at the old wooden church up on the poles as a, me as a mean wind comes from bellowing in. Comes bellowing in. The six-story structure lets out a doleful, sh doleful shriek. What is anodic dance music? You know, anodic. Cathodic. Anodic. Music that's made with electronic instruments. Electronic instruments, like what? Synthesizers and tape consoles. 
microcomputers too. Anything that uses electricity, but isn't guitars. Also found sounds, stuff like that. This is an evolutionary step up from amplified instruments, which in turn are a step up from acoustic instruments. What comes after it, you wonder? I can tell you what a comes after it. nothingness? But or I something won't. finer? So you want to turn the church into a club? I know. It's not my idea. Andre and the boys found the place. It was supposed to be deserted, but now they can't even take it. Hey, don't get me wrong, but you're cops, right? Yes, why do you ask? Okay, well... Maybe you could talk to Andre and the guys. Because there are some strange things going on in that church. If you're police, you should look into it, right? I'll talk to them. They're inside that thing there. Would be cool if you did. Was there something else? Enough about the church then, I had another question. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Bye. Let's buff our empathy. We found some empathy items lately. <laughs> Thanks for the buff. I need a hat. I can't take the minus one perception. I have very high perception. I have eight. And I have three points. Yeah, I think I'll keep this on to logic. Okay. Hello again. The device no. is cold to the touch. An angular Omicron logo adorns the yellow plastic cover. Underneath, you see a reel of tape rolling. You put the device back on the ice. The problem. We cannot put a point in empathy and retry that check. I think I need this toad. To raise my empathy cap. What else do I want to put the points in? Composure? Rhetoric? Or just endurance? No, not really. Reaction speed, maybe. Well, we will think about it later. Come on! Get in! The warm stuff's getting out! Squeeze in. Sorry, we barely have room for one. You go ahead. I'm too old for this. I'm actually not, he thinks. I just dislike delinquents. I'm sure you will feel right at home. I'll keep watch. He just is for you to squeeze in. I, I forgot to put on my conceptualization equipment. Let's do that. And I forgot to set them apart, apparently.
Wait, I had I had two. I'm sure I had two. Do I still have one of them on? Yeah, okay. I never took it off. It smells like sweat and laundry detergent, plus a trace of ether. Canisters filled with what appears to be water, the label says distilled. A speaker, the big kind they use for live music. Pile of nasal sprays, brand name Nosafat Ultra. A young man with peroxide blonde hair holds up a Harmon Walshy tape player, nodding along to the music. He looks at you with a knowing smile and says, Hardcore! Is this it? <laughs> Hey, Trick Me, you always wanted to play this game. It's great being able to watch some gameplay. Your play. sound card works perfectly. Thank you so much for the follow, Trick Me. Request by <laughs> it is a great game. You know, I hope you enjoy watching, but I still recommend if you find the time, you know, try and play it yourself because there are so many different ways to play this game. You know, no two playthroughs will be the same, that's for sure. I hope you get to experience experience it yourself but for sure enjoy the stream enjoy the gameplay is it it's hardcore you are just gonna keep saying it's hardcore aren't you skibber d skibber danger i am the rearranger hey sangnif welcome how are you today could there be a right way out of this garden of forking paths you think it's all day cat puzzle Let's get a hardcore save. The young man with the tape recorder acknowledges your return. When he looks at you, he squints as though you were the setting sun. This is hardcore. Is it? It's hardcore! I don't know what to say to that. Skibber D, skibber danger. I am the rearranger. Back to the heavy hardcore! Say nothing. Hardcore! Still say nothing. Hardcore to the mega. Say nothing. Internally coherent. Still say nothing. All car. All right. Yeah. Say nothing. He furrows his brow as his very large head traces the sublime invisible movement of the music in the very real air of the stuffy tent. You just had no idea with no idea what it was about. Now you understand why it was a cult. Why? Why was the cult? Hardcore. Yeah, we are going to get the sound effect of that. Hardcore! Ah! <laughs> you let an agonized roar over the feeblish, obviously not too hardcore beat below. So hardcore! Is it though? It is. But is it? I mean, really? I was thinking that too. I am the mic enforcer. I am the chick's checker. Yeah! Be close. True. Hard. Full. Hardcore. Hardcore. To internally coherent. New channel SFX request. All the hardcore. You want all of them? Okay. All car. All right. Yeah. He furrows his. Hardcore. Ah. <laughs> no, but seriously, I'm a little worried it isn't. The question is, what is the question? Just answer the question. But there was no question. Okay, this is interesting. The cloud, true, hard, full, Can I say without reading it? It's called The Torment of Rachel Ames by Jeff Gunness. Can't recommend. It's not a story. Okay, thank you. Hard car, hard car to I honestly coherent. don't read anymore. All car. He furrows. Hard car. The question is, what is the question? That would have been good if I had asked you a question, but I didn't. Now it's just idiotic. But there was a question? The club, true, hot, yeah! But is it? I mean, really? Yeah! Lucky Erski, Materialski! What is happening? The clouds, true, hot, hot car! Yeah! You can yeah and say random things all day long, but the track still doesn't sound all that hard to me. Spinning out lyrics since the day I was born. And the amount of lyrics I got is against the law. 
V Club. True. Hot 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 is a mega. All right. Here comes the night. V Club. True. Hot 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 internally coherent. I was wondering if you knew who killed the mercenary hanging behind the whirling in Rax hostel. Good morning, yeah. One, two, three. Yako Kata, the place to be. Why is this Yakukata the place to be? What does that mean? Yakukata is a hardcore place. Be close. True. Ha hardcore. Hardcore. Intern. Good morning, yeah. I am One, beginning two, to three. think this still doesn't have anything to do with the case. It's the message, so listen and you will see. No illusion. The spirit is what you feel. Okay, let's try every option systematically. True. Is it? Skip. So we can go. Be close. True. Whatever we choose, this ends. Be true, hardcore, yeah. Okay. Be true, hard, hard, yeah. Like it ends everywhere here too. Let's go to the third one. All right. Here comes. Okay, third one also. Bad ends. Fourth one. Good morning, yeah. Fourth one is also bad ends. I tried all of those. Internal. Good morning, yeah. It's the. Yeah. Let's go to the fifth one. True. Hot internal all car all right yeah please tell me what exactly are you doing gotta get the people going why i'm the party boy it's my job i think i'm also a party boy two on a track watch your back watch out for the heart attack hmm. the true hard hot internal all car gotta get the people going why I'm the party boy it's my job what's the party boy hardcore party 25 7 beyond the winter's orbit style Okay. The club, true. Ha, ha, inter all gotta get the people. I see. Yeah. Request. I want everybody as close to the stage as possible. That the these are dead ends also. Ha, in all car. He furrows his brow. Hot car. Ah. So hardcore. Is it though? It is. What is it? I mean, really. The question is, what is the question? No, but seriously, I'm a bit worried it isn't. He frowns, then starts bobbing his butt back and forth once more. Don't be alarmed. Everything is okay. He isn't actually worried. Everything is still super hardcore. What he probably means is, it could be even more so. So we switch places. We said his stuff, he said our stuff. You said you were worried. What do you think? What do you think is wrong with the music? There's nothing wrong with it. I'm still in love with the hardcore. He turns pensive all of a sudden. Sometimes I just feel like anodic music is in its infancy, you know? For example, take this Arno van Eyck jam I've been pumping for the last month and will continue pumping for the rest of 51. Isn't something holding it back from being hyper? He thinks for a moment, then his expression clears. It's like it's only ultra. I think it's super hardcore, but you're right. It's not hyper hardcore. If anything, it sounds a bit proto. Like it's not fully formed yet. You might be a moribund alcoholic and a failed cop, but you are pretty certain a thing cannot be both proto and hardcore. It's proto, not hardcore at all. Wow! Culture card! I think you might be right, but how could it become hardcore then? I know it in my heart, but cannot sink it in my head. If this is not hardcore, how could anything be? Hmm. Try to think if anything could make it harder, car. What? Guys, there's something happening in his head. Think even harder. Oh, yeah! He's doing it! But you're not. This is almost certainly a matter that surpasses the limits of reason. Ah, oh, my imagination fails me. I know! So does mine! So conceptualization wasn't enough? Or is it... Or was our logic too high? It could be something like that, our logic being too high. Sounds suspiciously like a question. I thought the question was, what is the question? No! This is the answer! 
I can't help you with with this right now. I need something else, something extra. Or maybe I need to, I don't know, consume some drugs or something. Yes, I think I need to fail that logic check. Exactly, that's what I was thinking. Wait, I just remembered something. I'm the police. Uh -huh. The young one is bursting with anticipation. Nothing. Me being the police isn't going to help us. Oh. I can't help with you with this right now. I need something else. Something extra. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Okay. All we right. can get that check. We can get that check. We have plenty of physical instruments. Equipment, I think. I might have them on, though. Oh, I could lower my logic. It's very hardcore, yes. Can I lower my logic somehow? Is there anything with minus logic in it? Uh, maybe there's something with plus logic that I can remove. Coupri Lange engine started. The launch hit. Good morning! Yeah! Pop! There's nothing wrong. Sometimes, isn't some. It's like a thinking. If anything, it's. Wow! I think you might be right. But what? Oh, yeah! I know! Oh, so didn't design. work. Didn't work. Yeah! Well, we can try this. Expert on anodic music. Maybe your body can tell you what Arno 118 jam is missing to make it harder car. You know it in your lungs where the pressure should vibrate. In your heart that's alone. And in your solar plexus where the hits should land. So does every chordate animal. Needs more bass. What? The young man makes a sudden move like he's about to turn the volume down, but that would be ridiculous. And the melody. A good melody is what makes the song realistic, so that you can't get it out of your head anymore. Point at your head. Wow, okay. We should start with the melody. But where would we get that stuff from? I don't know, I was thinking you would know. I'm sorry, I don't know anything about anodic music. I'm just the party boy. I get the people going and say it's hardcore. He feels ashamed. He can't be of more service to the future. Of dance music. Okay, I'll look into it. It's an official, in an official capacity. It's up to the police to make the beats go harder. The young man falls silent with appreciation. He even tries to contain his smile, as if it could hinder your investigation. Basically, what you need to find here is a tape with some banging music on it, so that Egghead could use it to remix Van H's jam. Yeah. Maybe that street talker across the pawn shop has got some tapes to sell. That's just an idea. Anyway, that's all yours to figure out, Copman. Copman! Copman! Here, I have a... Hey, I have a tape with me. Maybe you can use it to improve one X jam. Tape! Yeah! Spins the tape until the space escape! Yeah! I'm not going to give him the great door gunner mega mix. Yeah! Are you a thought reader? No! But transnation, no war, but class war. Does that mean you're a torch reader? Don't be a lunatic. Of course he isn't. Germania just yells random things. Odds are, sooner or later, one of them will come off as fault reading. Yeah! Revachon imperative! Unless you were thinking Revachon imperative right now. Anyway, I've had a similar thing happen with eggs yelling. I know what you mean. You're right, I wasn't thinking that. Hardcore Superstar! 
So you're not a thought reader, you're a communist? He's not a communist, it's just something he likes to yell. He picked it up from a tape jockey at the Palaceum. She was a communist though. Yeah! With the rebel yell! Best not to be a communist, having extreme views on issues is detrimental to understanding all sides. Oh sure, I can do that! Spoken like if a true centricist. That, I can avoid taking a stand. Please don't turn him into a moralist. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. Okay. Don't be a moralist. Wait, what am I saying? You should consider your choice carefully and ration rationally. No, we don't want Egghead to be a moralist. He wouldn't be a, an effective party boy if he was a moralist. Don't be a moralist. That, that path requires a sensible examination of all nuances unattainable to most people. I feel like all of these, you know, say good things about moralism. Let's say it's... You guess I can't is a moralist now. Tell me something I can. It's time to compromise. <laughs> he looks at you with an almost impossibly wide shining grin, looking to see if you approve. Almost there, you could use just a bit more something. Incremental change! <laughs> oh no. Appropriate. I'm swiftly moving toward a solution which pleases nobody. You feel Jermaine Egghead's smile is too enthusiastic. But it'll have to do for now. Is your real name Jermaine? Dark Hard Hardcore! Jermaine Egghead! Um, basically, yes it is. Why are there lungs on your belt buckle? Lungs are for love! L'amour, la compassion, l'autre discipline. Love! In a woman's lungs! Lonely as I am, I'm not afraid! This strange, damaged feeling grows on and on, because I've never loved someone like you before. Alright, goodbye, Cad. We made them boring. You see a youngish man bleaching the tips of his hair with a toothbrush. He puts the toothbrush down and extends his hand in greeting. Hello, I'm Andre. It's a pleasure to meet you. There is definitely something futuristic about his hair. <laughs> Aggressively so. You get the sense that this I didn't mean to is do what it. the future it just happened. Like. Imbecilic. Yes, should the future ever come, it will look deeply imbecilic. Like this guy. Shake his hands. His grip is strong, sweaty and warm. He's trying to project and inspire confidence. This is my posse. Noid. The young man with earrings looks at you suspiciously. An egghead. Egg! The tape player high above his head continues to blast what is probably an Arctic music. Together with a cell burger, who's out there right now, doing some seriously progressive sonic experimentation, we like to think of ourselves as music venue organizers. Wait, how many music venues have you organized? We have many in the pipeline, officer. Why are you here? You see, we've been all over Jamrock North, prospecting for real estate to establish a new venue in. Honest of talent! Yeah, thank you, Egghead. And while there is no shortage of raw, unfettered talent spinning tapes in Jamrock, we've had rotten luck with the real estate part. Place is a shit hole. I, I apologise for my friend Noid's potty mouth. I realise this is not how you speak to a police officer. I I he has authority issues. Was there something you wanted? Your friend Asel said there was a problem with the church. Ah, oh, so you've met her. Good, good. Yeah, it's a matter of occupied ecclesiastical property. I bet you've noticed the derelict hive of Narcomania on the coast. An attempt to pander to your perceived conservative sensibilities. No person his age would ever use a word like Narcomania with a straight face. Don't fall for it. Enough histrionics. Histrionics. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the church. And I'm not exaggerating. Even a place of spiritual refuge can become a magnet for all sorts of dopeheads and burnouts if left unattended. Dopeheads! Burnouts! He angrily spits on his screw, then starts cleaning it. Well, I'm sad to say, that's exactly what happened. 
Sad because we were just about to put Martin Hayes on the map with one of the maddest dance clubs in Jamrock. Nah, strike that in Revershaw. Voice acting is great, yes. Strike that! The world! And sad yet, because the dope heads and burnouts hold up in there with the worst kind. He leans back a little, watching you with a steady, serious gaze, letting you imagine just how bad those dope heads and burnouts really are. Voice acting is hardcore! Good. This calls for an opinion. You're an expert in those. I won't stand for narcomaniacs of any kind. No narcomaniacs on my watch. I feel like you may be laying this on a bit thick. What's really so bad about those dope heads and burnouts? They're spooky! What do you mean? What exactly do you mean by spooky? I was hoping you would be the judge of that, officer. All I can say is... Their spookiness is the kind that keeps us from restoring this church into a community centre and a place of spiritual refuge. Also, they don't eat or clean the building. Shit's gonna collapse. People just wanna spin tapes without them spooking it up. Place has bad signs. No one can dance like that. Thank you, Egghead. So you're gonna look into it, right? It should be a police matter. Getting them out. Whatever spooky stuff they're doing, I'm sure it's not what the Ecclesiastes meant their property for. I'll look into it, tell me more. Alright, man. He claps his hand enthusiastically. Andre is obviously very happy you took him seriously. The whole tent is. The boys exchange giddy looks. What's the status of the church? I haven't gotten inside the building yet. I asked Noid to install a measure against more drifters wandering in. A padlock. It's a temporary fix. Just something to contain the situation. I had to do it in an hurry. Not my best work. But it should hold for a while. What about the key? Of course. Noid, give the officer the key. Alright. The speed freak dips into his belt pack and produces a yellow key. He then makes a sudden cool infused move, tossing it in your general direction. Be the cool cup. Catch the key as it flies towards you. It's as if time has frozen. No! So you think you can sense the key moving in the air. Yeah. This the 83%? Why do you fail me? Don't ruin the cool by overdoing it. Raise your hand in front of your face with minimum effort. Blam! Straight in the eye. <laughs> we are, we are going to die. Ball. In the looking ball. A stabbing pain. Tears stream uncontrollably from your right eye. Ouch, goddamn asshole. What is wrong with you? Can't you say I'm in pain now? Man, I'm super sorry. That was totally my bad. I got overexcited. Threw him too hard. I'm sorry. He looks like he's genuinely sorry. He didn't throw them better. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Banjo face and mockery of his useless contrition. You almost I murdered me, a cop! That's use of little force. I really am sorry, man. Just take this, okay? He pulls out some black paper from his belt bag. Well, looks like there's quite a lot there. That's the least you could do. Take the money. I hope that settles it. Or wait! 25 real as a bribe for taking some key to our eye. The key? He cautiously hands you the yellow keyring. He is shifting in his spot, uncomfortably, still feeling sorry for the mishap. We were talking about the padlock, I think. How long have those people been locked in there? Not long, like a week maybe? How can you be sure they even starved to death? I'm super sure they're alive. I mean, come on, I'm at least 90%, maybe 85% sure they're still alive. 85% is not good enough when you're dealing with another person's physical well-being. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry too. I guess it wasn't very hardcore of us to just lock them in like that. Me too. I shouldn't have that kind of power over another person. I'm not the one with the violence monopoly here. You are. I'm glad that key is out of my hands now. Right, other questions. Sure, man. Tell us what you want to know. Let's do it. Where exactly are these people inside the church? The truth is, I don't really know. None of us do. I don't even know how many there are. All we've seen are glimpses. You haven't, ever, you haven't even seen them and you want the police involved? Well, there's also the machinery. He leans in for emphasis. When I first scouted the place, back in February, it was abandoned. Empty. Took some time getting the crew together. So about two weeks ago, we came here hoping to set the stuff up. Suddenly, there are all these strange machines lying around in there. One of them has wires running into bowls of water. Wires. 
into water. Never seen anything like it. Andre, tell him about the feeling. Oh, and it felt like there was something in there with us, watching us from the dark. No, the other one. Um, which other one? I'm not as in tune with my emotions as you are, Egg. Hey, Pat Bates. Felt like silence. Awful silence. But you haven't physically seen anyone. Not exactly. We've just seen someone who we think is a woman go in and out of the church. A couple of times. And we felt someone or something eyeing us inside. But that's kind of it. A woman? Red hair maybe? A lorry woman? Sure. Why not? Yeah. But not really. Brown hair. My life for Hey, Gigi. Dark side. How are you today, Gigi? Good to see you. Which one is it? What Noid said. What was it about something watching you? Like you aren't alone, you know? It wasn't quite human, if you know what I mean. My wife for hire. Not human? As in a ghost? Do you know what he means? It was this dark shape climbing upside down along the ceiling, like some kind of crab man. Crab yeah, man? you know, the way it was climbing up and around the ceiling, like a crab. It was stalking a cell, exhibiting ambush behavior. Are you sure that was a crab man? Yeah, totally. I mean, I didn't personally see it. A cell was alone that time, but I believe her. If she comes out running and says there's a crab in there, there's a crab in there. So he hasn't even been in there lately. Is he afraid? You should ask her about it, but be nice. Don't tell her you don't believe in the crab. Can you tell me more about this machinery? You should talk to Noid about that. I just got a distinct burnout and Cheap don't get sign from them. Probably jacked up to some snuff station too. Probably very likely. So how can you be sure they're burnouts and door pads if you haven't even seen them? Well, honestly, I can't, but I am. This is a below feeble attempt at avoidance. Basically, he is attempting to weaponize idiocy. Wow, you can't, but you do. I should add weaponized idiocy to my own repertoire. Hey now, I'm 70% sure they're substance abusers. Don't let all that technology fool you. Where do you think the drugs come from? All right, let's talk about something else. Sure. What? You mentioned some kind of ecclesiastes on the church. Who are these ecclesiastes? Oh yeah, that's a meteor and name for the founding party. Thought it'd be cool to use it. If you don't know what the founding party is, there might be a way to mask it with minor demagoguery. Mask it. Now nah, humor me, Andre. What is the founding party? Come to think of it, I've never really looked them up, you know. I can't give you a precise definition, but they're a very powerful religious organization. And? And they have roots in ancient mass society. And they're the custodians of the Periconassian church. Plus, they anoint the innocents. They, like, made the innocentic system, no? Now, Andre, in your opinion, would this ancient religious organization who anoints the innocents want to club for anodic music in one of their churches? Totally. There isn't a trace of doubt in his voice. The Periconassian church is about love. Anodic music is about love. I got love for my Periconassian posse. Love is the relay out of death. We dance. Hardcore. He violently shakes the tape player as if to see if he can break it. Love is hardcore. Heck yeah. Unity. Unity. Make some noise for my Insulindian posse. He turns the volume up then looks at you with a knowing nod. As if it's obvious you will now break into dance. You feel it. The anodes and the cathodes coursing through you. Your big toe starts tapping along to the base. As if testing the waters. I guess loud can be pretty hardcore. Oh yeah, it can. He's coming around. You're getting it. I don't quite understand what you're talking about. What's a posse? Your posse's like your people, man. Like you got your cup posse. You look out for each other, and you party together. That's a posse. And where is your posse, detective? Nothing comes to you. The world is silent. No words, enjoy the beats, nod your head. Feels good. It sounds like you're just saying random things. Loud, posse, make noise. Are we? He looks at you mysteriously. Yeah! The one with the large head really enjoys it when his friend gets mysterious.
I now understand it was lame of me to suggest otherwise. Anodic music is about love, and so is the Pericarnesian church. Yeah! Yako Qatar! The place to be! He seems ecstatic that you share his vision of Pericarnesianism. Do it for the masses! Do it for the crew! His friend forms a fist with a screwdriver still in his hands, approvingly so. I didn't want to say it, but it was pretty lame of you to imply otherwise. Anyway, you got more questions? The one with the large head is still looking at you. I don't know where this is going. His head, <laughs> we'll waiting see. for your body to start moving. You feel like you could go for a little disco when, or if, they get this club going. You've got it in you. I wanted to ask about this tent full of equipment. Yes. What? I see you brought your own water. Yeah, yeah. Good to have. Bitch to carry. When I first scattered the place, I did some reconnaissance. I'm not sure the church even has running water. And it's distilled too. Uh, oh. He doesn't know what to say. It's the one they sell at the fuel station. Hate to tell you, but it reeks of sweat in here. It does, doesn't it? Told you we have a smell problem. He picks up a piece of telephone cord and inspects it. Wait, I also smell ether. Why? Ether? I don't smell ether. Do you, Noid? No. It's mixed with a peculiar chemical scent like laundry detergents. He sniffs the air, then shrugs. A shrug is good enough for us. Why say it when you can shrug it? Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. I took out my logic hat. What's with all the Nozafed? The what now? Point at the bottles of nasal spray in the corner. The Nozafed Ultra. You have a lot of it lying around. Oh, the old Ultra. We... Uh, I have a major sinus infection. Stuffy nose. We all do. Shit's all blasted up. Winter. Can't even breathe. You sound fine to me. Yes. That's all Nosafed's doing. Without the Noza, I'd be drowning in shit right now. Nosafed is the shit. Can I have some? I have some nose problems too. Um, sure. Here you go, officer. He picks up one from the corner away. and hands it to you. I get the nose of that, but what about the engine starting fluid? The engine starting fluid? It's for starting engines. What engines do you start with it? What's with the goddamn Romangorod earrings? It's cold. The fluid's for the generator. He points towards the machine. How is that extra high ether content working out for you? Does it do the trick? I guess it does. You know, maybe that slight scent of ether I felt before is somehow connected to the ethyl ether. No idea, man. Alright, enough of this. He nods enthusiastically. No doubt, a little relieved. That's it for now. As always. Wow, so someone's been a little boring. What? Yes, my standard liege. Someone's seen all sorts of wild Thanks for the ideas recording. pop off and thought, I'll take the boring one. The regular, please. The brown. Look, I'm just trying to do my job. No need for extravagance. Of course you do. Let's get right to it. My lord's copo type is regular cop. I'll let everyone know. I'll send out a telefax. Wait, wait. This will be my copo type now? Yes. The type of cop you are, sire. Think of it as a caste. A class, even. A nation of regular law officials that you belong to. It comes, of course, with the usual benefits. Why not send it out to Telefax then? I'm not ashamed. Done and done. No actual communiques will be sent, of course. That would be too dramatic. Regular love official. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Nothing funky. Okay. I'm not going to, to even read that. So let's get some logic on. Does anyone have minus logic? I'm I've been forgetting to look at this. Hmm. Plus one empathy in here. Okay. Hi again. So uh how are things going? You're happy for me? <laughs> Why is that parrot? 
a number of things don't add up. Let's take a look. How about gather around, kids? Okay, kids. Now, gather around. The young speed freak puts down a busted capacitor and looks at you. <laughs> yes, I am actively trying to stop myself from organizing the inventory by slots and then bonuses. I think about doing it every time I open the inventory, but I don't do it in the end. The one with the large head seems very enthusiastic about whatever you have planned. Their would-be leader is less amused. Sometime in the past, I'm not sure when and where, but betrayal was involved. I fell sick and became the shadow you see now. But before that, I have reason to believe that I was a police detective. But you still are! Thank you for your kind words, but everyone in here sees I'm a disgrace to the uniform. Hmm. I was good enough in this job to be awarded the rank of Lieutenant Lefreitor. I could have been captain, imagine that. What happened? Disco happens. I've been trying to say we need the next step in dance music to happen fast. Shut it. What? I have. I've said that. Now, obviously, that might as well have been a thousand years ago, but there's still some detective left in me. The young speed freak is silent. He senses something is wrong. This isn't the makings of a club. It's a tent full of laboratory equipment for manufacturing drugs. I have no idea how you arrived at that conclusion, but it's wrong. Look, we even have speakers. He points at the speaker. One speaker. They have one speaker. Where is his friend? Did he lose his friend? What do you mean, friend? The other speaker. You have only one. It's a one speaker system. It's monodynamic. You wouldn't know the first thing about sound reproduction in anodic music. Other speaker. You have no headphones. Wouldn't Asel need her headphones to spin tape? What do you know about spinning tape? Nothing. That Nozafad is here for his active ingredients. He said it was for his nose. What more do you want? The distilled water, cornerstone of a clean lab. And of all cellular based life. What's your point, Lawbringer? The ethyl eth ether from Coupri Lange is a solvent, good for getting acting agent out of a solution. Make up your mind. First it's the sweat, then it's the ether. There's no need for me to pile on anymore, is there? No shit. In short, you tried to use a police detective to set us to set up a drag lab. That's... come on, that's... Against the law? I meant to say, not true. So what are you... so what are we going to do with you? What do you mean, do? There's resignation in his voice. He's almost ready to drop the act. It wouldn't take a lot of pushing. You tell me what's really going on and I will work from there. I can be lenient. What do you mean by lenient? Not calling back up and holding you all off to the pan, for starters. Okay, man. Okay. He raises his hands. Things are just so, so hard for an entrepreneur in this city right now. It's not like we lied when we said we want to turn a church into the wickedest club in East Revershaw. Because we do. We totally do. We just... Need to turn it into a speed lab before to get our foot in the door. And why did you need me? Like I told you, spooky arseholes moved in while I was getting all this stuff together. A month ago, the place was empty, and now it's all spooked up. They are not really spooky, are they? No, man. They're spooky, all right. It's just that they would also probably call the police if we started cooking speed in there. But the sign was way off, too. I couldn't feel the love at all. Sir, you promised you'd be lenient. Let's do this clean. No speed lab, just a club for anodic music. Yeah! The young man's smile widens to inhuman proportions. His teeth beam in the floodlight. I knew it! The would-be leader drops his spiked hat between his knees. It's impossible now. No, Andre! It's harder now! This hard cop has come to show us how much the hard fish car. is, and the fish is cop. always so much more! We all know there was never going to be a club for anodic music with the speed lab! Now it has a fighting chance! What's that about a fish? There needs to be a club for anodic music in there! Needs to! Everyone hates each other! Everybody hates it here! It's all just drugs and we're slaves and I can't! We are running out of time! We need a win, Andre! He looks I at you. I promise this will be a win! 
We won't cook speed in there. We'll do it clean. We'll do it true. We'll do it sober and real and beautiful. This will be a victory for the light. Right. Let's call this instant crime prevention, but I have my eye on you. Okay. We'll try to do it without the drugs. We'll do a straight club up in there, spinning the maddest reels and nothing but, I swear to God. Okay, Egg? From here on, it'll be straight all the way. That's it for now. As always, we'll be right here. Hardcore! Waiting patiently for the news. <laughs> hey, broccoli. Yeah. Or broccoli, not broccoli. So you had a talk with Andre, and now you want to discuss things with Noid. Good. Skin shows through the holes in the Speed Freak's two light sweater. In front of him, an open toolbox full of carpentry tools and parts. It's good you talked to Andre first. Gave me time to get a reading on your sign. Can't really talk to people before you get a reading. He runs his hand through his hair, which is combed back in mock seriousness and continues to fiddle with some gears. Sign? Yeah, gotta compare. See if we can align. Interesting. I suck at socializing, man. Even now, our sign synchronization is way off. But I'll see what I can do. He continues to rearrange his tools. Tell me about the machines you saw in the church. Weird stuff. Specialized. There was a data processor and some sort of long wave machinery. Wires going into water. Gives off a spy sign. Or some fucked up Samaran science sign. You know, the kind shall that prevail. goes first hey, into the Anaman. supernatural. Today is the last day of the season, by the way. So get your last rolls in. What's wrong with the supernatural? Nothing's wrong with it. You should definitely be researched. You can still do sick shit with it, though. The sickest? That's perhaps why it should be researched. The supernatural. So you think it's real that it actually exists? Most of it doesn't exist. But there's also stuff that isn't allowed to exist. Because the moralists think it's too dangerous for the plebs. Psionic powers, pale related diseases, pretenders pretending to be human, folk rights, that kind of stuff. Why are you called Noid? The hardcore aesthetic is esoteric. It's not meant to be discussed with the law at this moment. He picks up some sort of a widget. It's not easy to reach a harmonic resonance of signs without some adjustment. Does this mean we need sign matching? Yes. Further sign matching would do good for us. One way to achieve this would be by getting us into the church. Okay, maybe I'll come back later. Huh? Is this all? The launch head. Increment! Okay. Let's put the conceptualization stuff back on. We need to talk to Asal. We did good in that, I believe. The girl kneels on the sea ice. She looks up as you approach. So you talk to my associates, right? Are you going to help us? With the church, I mean. I'll help you, all right. Great. Let us know if there's any progress, will ya? We've There's... been waiting for weeks here. The researchers tried to use me to set up a drug lab. I'm guessing you knew of this plan. I did, and I'm sorry. For what it's worth. Which isn't much. This is why you Yes. Might. Nice. 101 characters remain undiscovered. The best we did was 100 characters remain undiscovered. Can we discover two more today? Before the end of the season? I hope we can. You don't get to choose your posse, they choose you. Mine are idiots, but they're mine. I tried to talk Andre out of it. I even tried not to lie to you. Indeed. She merely tried to omit the truth instead. Instead, you opted to omit the truth. It's the same thing. <laughs> but I knew you Very plan unfortunately, not in I'm not discovery. an idiot. I should have been able to control them. And I will in the future. I promise. May I ask? What did you tell them? Do what you will with your dance club plans, just no drug labs, please. Thank you. I'll get them under wraps, I promise. The others told me you went inside the church. What did you see in there? Oh, that. Oh, Mary is amazing. Mary is great. There's no point in me telling Especially you. in the third game. She's less prone to blurted out crab man than the others. We'll see. Go ahead and tell me. Okay. I went in and I saw a woman next to one of those machines there. Noid calls it a mainframe. 
She was dressed like someone who's been raised by their grandmother, you know, strange old clothes. Had this absent expression, didn't say anything, just stood still. Go on. And then, you know, right behind her, a man crawled down the wall, upside down like a crab, down the church wall. I think the woman didn't even know he was there. He was completely silent. He stopped right before he got to the floor, then just hung there like that, looking at me, right at me. I fucking turned around and walked out. End of story. Like a crab, you say? Ilvan nods, his face is stone. What did this crab man look like? It was too dark. I couldn't tell exactly. Come on, she obviously could. She already went into detail. Come on, quit stalling on me. What did you? What did he look like? He looked like a banger, okay? He was all muscular and stuff. Had a mesh tank top. I know it sounds ridiculous, but that only made it scarier in a way. A crab and a banger. Lieutenant raises an eyebrow. Yes, a banger. As in a mess gang member. I know what it sounds like, but that's what I saw. A gangster crab man. Yeah, I don't believe you. You are wrong. I do believe you. Why? Seems too ludicrous for a lie. I guess so. Anyway. I want to try this again. I'd like to know more about your associates. My associates? I haven't got much to say about them. Just answer the question, please. Sorry. I just don't tell people about my friends and who they are and so on. I don't provide information on them. To the cops. What about yourself? Tell me something about yourself. Me? I'm a silver bird. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Maybe I'll ask later about all this. Don't know what makes you think it'll be any different later, but... Actually, that's it for now. Alright. I'm going to take a quick break. A few minutes. I'm going to let you enjoy the clips. I'm also going to run a 3 minute ad to be able to disable pre-roll ads for the next hour. So thank you so much for your patience with that. I'll be back in, I don't know, 3-4 minutes. So I'm done, we will continue the game. See you in a bit. I see you are back. Have you had any luck? I think I have found one of your druids. Steadfast Orlane has returned. It is good to have him back in the circle. Here is your 300 gold ray. You are overjoyed to welcome back the Ubri. Here is your 300 gold ray. My dear friend Terrari's return was welcomed by the Grove. Here is your 300 gold ray. Nature herself is impressed with your abilities. Here is your 300 gold ray. Thank you for rescuing all of the druids. I have great hope for the spirit of the woods. Good luck. I see you are back. Have you had any Excuse me. All right, all right. Take my money, but don't hurt me. What the heck? I was just wondering if I could ask you a couple of questions. Oh. Oh, I, I see. I thought you were one of those awful gangster rappers. What, dressed like this? Well, exactly. They don't dress well, do they? Excuse me? What did you say to me? <laughs> do you like golf? No, sir. I... I wish to summon a horde to overrun my enemies. Wait, it's going to be a horde of rabbits or something. I wish that magic would fail to affect me or my party. Well, that might... Okay, let's try this. <laughs> what? It was actually rabbits! What the heck? <laughs> I should have picked up the heal option. Where could the clue be? These pews are strangely in order. You figured someone would have vandalized them a bit. You would have. Pew, 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 pew. Scanning the wall, Sorry, you can make I out some of the that. old fry. Don't pick at it, Max. It's too hard to get back in the socket. Jimmy, I don't know how I got here, but I'm sorry for all the things I said. Don't worry, baby. Now that you're back in my life, nothing can stop me now. I'm unbeatable. Thanks for the glove, Jimmy. <laughs> I'm feeling full of the Christmas spirit already. Where to, Sam? We're off to the north. I should probably do this right. <laughs> Sorry. 
sorry. This better be good. What well, they're old friends. They won't mind. Um. What is this called? The the head. The skin. I can never hit these. <laughs> well, I killed it. Alright, I'm back. Thank you for sticking here. Alright. So we are done with them Welcome for back. now. Thank you, Gigi. Good to be back. So we gotta take a look at the church and then there is the cryptozoologists. I think that's all. Around here. That we can do during the night. I might possibly be forgetting something, uh, I don't know. Should I try opening this? I won't be able to open it. And it's a red check. An old door, worn by elements, guards the depot. The wind has blown a sand dune in front of it. The door hasn't been opened in a... I mean, I have two points. Still very, very difficult. I guess we could save Skamit if he really wanted to succeed in it. Is there something here that would indicate a sniper used this place as a nest for taking the shot? It does, Just yeah. some urban detritus, a bottle, and a dilapidated old comms tower. In the distance, you can hear the breakers roar. I don't see it, Lieutenant W. Freitor. I don't see a person take a shot here and hit something there. In the whirling in Iraq. Maybe the assailant climbed the comms tower, took the shot there. It's not possible to climb that ladder. And even if it were, why? There's no platform up there to aim from. Pluton looks up, raising his collar. It does look extremely rickety and wouldn't help much either. Maybe the campfire was used by the perpetrator. To warm his hands before pulling the trigger? Perhaps. But anyone could have made this. The coast is specked with fires this time of year. He looks around. Truthfully, this seems like a very Another poor level. choice to take a 1.2 kilometer rifle shot from. Visibility yeah. is awful. There's water vapor everywhere. I think we can rule out Beatable Prime, was it? What about the cigarette butts? Those? A smoking assailant who favors Tumutiri to Astra or Juan? Cigarette butts are everywhere. This is a common brand for all men. Still, you felt it was important enough to make a mental note. That means something you didn't pay attention to any of the other cigarette butts on the coast no it, it just means we are hung up on this way of thinking look over the water to the burning in rags 1.2 kilometers over the cold water of the bay blue from the distance and the air you see the smallest rectangle barely visible it's glowing in the dark night the lights are on glazia must be in there looks like she kept her promise not to go out at night anymore Okay, we can rule out B double prime. I don't know why this toad didn't trigger last time we were here. I even said there should be a way to examine this place for a sniper nest and it, it didn't trigger. The boardwalk rises to your south. It casts its long shadow over you. There should be another B triple prime? Or was it just B prime? I don't know. There should be another 
spot that we considered close here. One of them was here and the other one was here maybe? Maybe it was the unopenable door. An old door, worn by... I kinda want to save Scum and succeed in that red check just to see what happens if we succeed. Because it flat out says it's unopenable. So what happens if we get the check? Do we open it? Heavy wooden doors, more than twice your height. Okay, we will come to the church later. First cryptozoologists. If I can find them again. Oh no. Did I skip this? There's some tear. No. No. Moo 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 moo. I should I should put some points somewhere. Um Physical instrument, I don't want to put point, more points in there. Pain threshold could be composure is a good one. Let's put this here. Maybe another endurance. Visual Calculus? That's a good one, I like that. Maybe I need some more of this Perception? Possible. Composure, Interfacing, other Interfacing. Let's put a point in Interfacing. No, can I revert? I changed my mind. Let's just Composure for now. I will definitely put a point in empathy once we research that toad. Yeah. Bunch of ducks. There are, yeah, I think some animals have more sounds than other animals. Ducks and geese. Hello, I'm Gary. How do you do, officer? Yellow man. I mean, officer. The lieutenant raises his eyebrows slightly and takes out his notebook. Yellow man. Interesting. This is something to ask him about, after a little probing first. I'm just waiting for my friend Morel to finish up with his insect traps so we can return to civilization. Not a lover of the great outdoors. I like nature, just not this bloody coast. It's mostly drunks and degenerates that come here. Nobody is perfect. I'm sure you've been tempted to drink. Oh, I've been tempted. But someone has to stay strong for Revacall. His gaze shifts to the pile of soggy logs at his feet. He pronounces Revacall with a hard K, unlike other people. You said Revacall? I like to pronounce it the hard way. The old way. The Vespertine way. He nods solemnly. He winks at you. Trying to relay some hidden message, inviting you to mispronounce it too, perhaps. It's odd. It's a secret right. A very fringe nationalist handshake, probably. Do you know anything about the man hanged behind the whirling in rags? Oh, so that's what the RCM in Martinez is about. Great. Great to hear someone's finally taken care of that. So you do know something about it? No, no. Nothing. He was some kind of mercenary. But everyone here knows that. I'm just glad to hear you're looking into it. That's all. He's not feeling very comfy in his clothes, is he? Strange. Is this your mug? Hold up the yellow man mug. My mug? W why would you think that? His eyes widen at the sight of the mug. He's seen it before, right? 
You said yellow, man. That's not something many people go around seeing. Really? I hear it all the time. All in jest, of course. No offense meant to anyone. Still seems suspicious. Did I mention the magmas found at the scene of a lynching? Okay, okay. I admit it. I threw the mug away in the it's trash actually him? behind the hostel. I know I shouldn't have, and I am very sorry. It is actually officer. him. You're not going to find me, are you? I am. Report the fine slip for 20, 250 real, the maximum. Oh god, 250? How am I gonna pay that? Okay, I'll work harder. I'll pay it off. I promise. He looks at the slip of yellow copy paper, then gets a hold of himself. This is a considerable expense to him. One month's wage, most likely. That's what you get for being it's, a crypto fascist. In a way, admirable how quickly he composes himself after such a blow. This man digs authority, even when it's bullying him. And I'll never do it again. I don't know what got into me, really. Work has been stressful lately. Damn Koiko's price dumping us out of competition. What did you do, Gary? Nothing. Nothing. Just answering some questions. Helping out the law. How did you get into the trash container? I know a guy who works with the trash collection services. CS Municipal. He gave me a master key for the trash containers of Martinez. Why would you need to get into his one's trash? So I can use the Whirling's trash compactor to store my own stuff. Garbage disposal is expensive as hell. The damn Himeans run it like a mob. I'm sorry, okay? I thought I could cut costs. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have disgraced myself. Disgraced? No need for the histrionic, sir. It was, after all, just a trash container. He studies his reaction. Gary doesn't answer. Gary, did you put the clothes of a murder victim, the man who was hanged behind the whirling in rags, into that trash container? Officer, please. Let me explain. It's not like that. Do. I was only cleaning up. I live right across the yard from where he was hanged, and I saw him stripped naked. All the clothes lying around in the yard, smelling... Oh, the timers. ...animals, you know? <laughs> Okay, how long have I been here? Let's see. So it is 2.30 right now. When did I come back from... ...the break? Two eighteen. Okay, so twelve minutes. That's at twelve minutes. All right. I think. It's fixed. Actually, give me a moment to double check something very quickly. Yes, it is indeed fixed. All right. Yes, yes, what happened? Okay, then what happened? Then I came out to clean up the rags because no one else would. I put them into the Whirling's trash, along with a broken mug. Admittedly. He changes his mind mid-sentence. Okay. I was coming to throw the mug away, and, well, I threw the mug there and the clothes too. Right. It was just civic duty. The lieutenant remarks strolly. Exactly. That's exactly what it was. Civic duty. As he shifts uncomfortably, a series of clicks, like the clinking of glass beads against one another as they roll across a hardwood floor. You've heard this sound before, but where? What's that strange sound? What sound? That clinking I just heard when you moved. Really? He fans his arms out slowly, and this time his motions are soundless. There's lots of weird stuff out here in the reeds, though. Insects, 
trash. Could be the wind shifting some garbage nearby. Does he have a piece of the ceramic armor? The sound you heard was not the sound of something easily abandoned. You wouldn't know anything about the victim's missing armor, would you? Armor? No. I, I mean, yes. Of course. I know he was wearing armor. But I don't know anything about it. There's something going on here. You should observe it more closely after this topic is concluded. I hope I could help your investigation in my small way. He's visibly relieved. It's over. It's not over, man. It's not over. His apartment, admiring his colonial mug collection. Perhaps it would be interesting to tell him. That shirt looks very uncomfortable on him. Look at the buttons, barely keeping that thing together, as if something is ready to rip out from underneath. Something worn underneath it? Yes, like a piece of ceramic armor, for example. One that makes a clicking sound when the plates meet each other, resembling pearls or marbles, stolen from the corpse in the yard near where he lives. I see you're a connoisseur of high quality combat gear. I knew you'd figure it out, officer. I'm sorry I didn't tell you at once. I he was... Open... He unbuttons the shirt. I was ashamed of what I did. And I didn't want you to know. You see gleaming white ceramic shine underneath. A thin layer of interlocking plates My covers his gun torso. Legion, for we are many. <laughs> hey, Legion. You knew I'd figured out, yes. Of course I would. Of course I would. How are you, Legion? Good to see you. This shame is surprisingly sincere. Gary, what's going on? Later, morale. I've got apologizing to do. No, you've got to explain. Run all you do. like, you insignificant insect. The human race is doomed. <laughs> Give me that armor now. He sighs again. Hangs his head and unbuttons his Howdy. shirt fully. A cuirass that today? matches the dead man's boots comes into view. Soon it is in your hands, smelling of his sweat. But so, so light to hold, like a bag of cotton. Why did you really put those gloves in the trash? Everyone was picking those pieces off him and I was watching them do it and they'd scattered his clothes all over the yard. Everything was smelling. He looks at his feet. So I went there to take out the trash and started cleaning up. All those rags on the ground, him swinging up there, and I had a lapse of honor, sir. I thought, he's a foreigner. They all say he wasn't from here. Only the caress was left. So I stripped it off him. It was early in the morning. No one saw me. I took it with me. It was a mistake. Had I known it'd give you guys trouble, I... I wouldn't have... Fuck. His lips start quivering. It's okay. It was a loose end, and you are tying it up now. I'm so fucking sorry I called you Yellow Man. CLI officers commanded the Suzerain's navy. Most of them sided with the king when... He shakes his head. They were thoroughly conservative men, he realizes suddenly. Why did you lie to me, Gary? Because I was weak. I should have told you the moment I saw you, but... The hell, Gary? You in trouble? I'll explain later. He doesn't muster up the strength to yell. Do you know who killed the hanged man? I always thought it was the Union. Some Union hard You actually made this guy regretful. Because of the Apologetic. I'm but surprised. almost everyone in town knows that. I wish I could tell you more. He shakes his head. Are we done here, Gary? Yes, absolutely. I will never do anything like this again. He looks around, relieved of some burden, his mouth still quivering. Are you a cryptozoologist too? No, no. I help Morel with research sometimes, and I've learned some things along the way. But I don't usually go in for picnics like this on my own. After all this time with Morel, he must have an opinion on cryptids. This could lead to a good one. I'm into cryptids. Do you have a favorite? Oh, yes. Just a crypto fascist. Yes. I'm not a cryptozoologist. real, but I don't much care. Because I won't be the one looking for him out in Safra Serai. What's a burning rhino? A rhinoceros that looks ordinary during the day, but burns brightly by night. Well, at least the males do. How do they burn? They have special ducts 
just above their shoulder blades that secrete a combustible fluid. When the rhino is just beginning to light itself, it looks as though it has wings of fire. But how is this combustible fluid lit? How does this lighting of this fluid actually work? The rhino starts running very fast to build heat, then stops, raises its head, and sparks fly from its neck, setting its back ablaze. I can buy into that, the flaming rhino. Revacol used to be a flaming rhino once, a long time ago. He says, then pauses thoughtfully. Why only the males? The flames are not just for decoration. They are an integral part of the beast's mating behavior. How so? During the burning rhino's mating season, herds of male rhinos, all aflame, encircle herds of female rhinos, forming a fiery ring as they begin to copulate loudly. Local peasants call it the passion ring. They fear the rhinos, as perhaps they should. Anyway. The lieutenant sighs without <laughs> looking up from his notes. Gotta love him, gotta it's love clear him. the burning rhino is dear to him on many levels. Some even spiritual. You are surprised to see my colleague, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. I'm sorry for what I said. He replies, down for Short silent. means sincere in these things. So, Gary, you live nearby, in an apartment in Martinez, pointed in its direction. Sure do, officer. His eyes narrow slightly. He's wondering where this is going. Mr. Claire must be very angry with you. Mr. Everard? The color drains from his face. Yes, he insisted that I open the door to your apartment. So you work for Everard Claire? Officer, please tell him we're good. No, no, tell him I'll make it up to him. What have I done? He'll send the muscle after me. The man looks around whispering. He makes sure no one hears you talk. As he lowers his tone, he hunches his back. Really, I don't even know what it was about. I just opened the door. Whatever it is, tell him I'm silent as the grave. No, no, I no, no, no. I was probably talking too loud in the whirling the other night about some theories. Tell me about those theories now. I won't do now. it again. Now. No, no, you if will do it again. If there's anything I can do to assist you or the union, just ask, okay? I'll try to help if I can. Tell me this the theories. This scared him proper. He's positively melting from fear. Has to prop himself up with a lot of anger to keep it together. The weather vein has turned. He cannot be unturned. He clearly liked his squirming. He may even have changed his mind about the whole door opening operation. Thank you for our cooperation. Oh, are we done? We couldn't ask why that happened. Two points. Let's keep those two points. Here we go. Nice and easy. No way out, little guys. Not out of this gem. This is the husband of the cryptozoologist woman at Whirling in Rats, There's right? There's a cylinder on the ground in which the man oh, I forgot to is check arranging the armor. some netting. It looks like some kind of trap. He notices you. Who's there? Oh, the police. Hello, officers. His self-conscious enthusiasm renders his movements ungainly. He looks like your understanding of a scientist. You must be Morel, the cryptozoologist. To what do I owe the pleasure? That's sarcasm. He takes no pleasure from your appearance. Lena sends me. She's been really worried about you and is waiting for you to get back. Hey, of course. Thank you for passing along the message. That damn water lock is broken. And we can't go all the way around the 881. Yeah, that was me. I broke the water lock with my motor carriage. But it's fixed now. You can go back. Do you want to say that or the water lock's been fixed? It was fine when I crossed it. Yeah, let's say this. Oh, good. We should really be getting back. Gary could use a hot shower and a warm bed. Did he say we can go back now? Yes, Gary. We can go soon. If you see Lena, tell her I won't be long. Sir. Your wife is waiting for you. I just have to do one more round. See if the phasmid has taken the bait. Then we're going. He refastens a bit of netting that has come loose in the His wind. hands are large and weather-worn, but also used to delicate, precise work. For all his passion, this man is diligent 
and patient. You could learn things from him. I'm looking for a suspect. Have you seen a woman with red hair who seems to be on the run? I'm afraid not, officer. I've been busy digging around in the reeds for days, looking for signs of insect activity. I'm less interested in mammalian concerns, to be perfectly honest. The lieutenant takes a short note in his notebook, then gestures for you to proceed. Tell me about this plasm phasmid you are looking for. Hmm. Well, first of all, it's damn difficult to find, which is why we've been knee-deep in the reeds laying traps for it. What makes it so difficult to find? Good question. Being a phasmid of the order Phantasmodea, a ghost insect, it disguises itself as plant matter. In this case, the reeds. Awful lot of reeds around, aren't there? And I suspect it may have also developed other specialised techniques to protect itself from predators, or scientists, in our present case. What sorts of specialised techniques is the phasmid using to hide itself? It's my hypothesis that it has evolved certain electrochemical defences that allow it to interfere with animal perception, impeding pattern recognition, confusing the visual cortex. But I cannot describe how these defences work, much less how they evolve, without studying a live specimen. Yes, it makes perfect sense. You're beginning to suspect there's something paranatural about this phasmid. A ghost insect, he said? These people are looking for a ghost. Ghost insect, so you are ghost hunters. No, that is precisely what we're not. We are zoological specialists looking for an extant species of phasmid. How big is this phasmid? I'm expecting it to be quite giant. One known species of phasmid, called the Megaphasmodea zoensis, is about the size of a grown man's forearm. So, uh... He leaves the conclusion up to you. Seems puny, to be honest. Why are you so interested in that stick bug? It doesn't seem to be as colorful as some of the other cryptos I've heard about. Typical rookie assumption. Insects are much more sophisticated creatures than those unversed in zoology give them credit for. Even simply catching a glimpse of the Insulindian phasmid would be the apex of my, of any, cryptozoologist's career. But to study it and its defences, find out how it stayed hidden so long. He shakes his head. What have you discovered about it so far? Very little, I'm sorry to say. No one's ever captured a specimen, so all our information is based on first and third hand accounts. So no one's ever found one? Not yet. That's what makes it a cryptid. <clears throat> Just out of curiosity, if there's no proof of its existence, how do you know it's real? I know it's real. Cryptozoologist says, brusquely enough, that even he seems taken aback by it. It's clear that his obsession <laughs> with the phasmid is driven by something more than the pure pursuit of scientific advancement. By which I mean, I've heard enough first-hand accounts to believe quite firmly that the Insulindian phasmid is more than mere superstition. Lina said there has been a sighting of it here in Martinez. Yes, the most recent sighting was by a couple of teenagers along the coast here. That's what brought us to Martinez specifically. It's the first credible sighting in several decades. Admittedly, it's an unusual location for this species, but with all the sewage runoff upstream, it probably doesn't matter much anymore. Maybe the insulindium phasmid has died out? I have to resist the thought. Such an extraordinary creature is doubtlessly highly resilient. After all, it's generally thought to be capable of parthenogenesis. Um. Parthenogenesis? Yes. The females don't need males to reproduce. Makes it easier for a species to survive in adverse conditions. That's pretty clever. Yes. The Insulindian phasmid is a very clever insect. That's why it's so damn difficult to catch. But as a scientist, I'll try my best to remain dispassionate. Tell me more about these traps. Well, they may not look impressive, but Lena designed them quite cleverly, 
so I'm sure they'll do the trick. Lena designed the traps? Yes. I'll do the traps for it. Simple. Attracted by the locusts, the phasmid crawls down the funnel and, having eaten its fill, can get back out. At least, that's the intention. The net isn't a perfect solution, but we didn't want to use anything that might damage the specimen's delicate exoskeleton. What are you using as baits? Locusts. Nearly all known phasmids are herbivores, of course. But we've hypothesized that the Insulindian phasmid might occasionally prey on other insects. Inside the traps, a number of locusts crawl and tumble over one another in a tiny, chittering swarm. A meat-eating stick insect? Does it pretend to be the reeds as part of its ambush behavior? This seems unlikely. A carnivorous stick insect seems unlikely. Thank you for your opinion. We have also included plant material in the traps to satiate your skepticism. Thank you. What will you do if these traps don't work? They'll work, I assure you. The predatory hypothesis, using locusts as bait, accounts for the failure of previous efforts by other teams, which use plants. We have given this some thought. The traps do seem to be deftly and thoughtfully constructed. It's clear the cryptozoologist's wife knows what she's doing. Let me ask you about something yes. else. What? Lena seems pretty eager for you to return. And I'm eager to return to her, I assure you. But I can't leave before we finish with these traps. My wife understands that just as well as anyone. He looks south where Lena would be. Come on, Morel. We've been soaking out here for days. It's time to go back. And leave the traps? Absolutely not. I won't let Lena down. Come on, she wants us back. I'm soaked up to my nuts over here. We'll both catch reed crabs if we don't dry out soon. Won't let Lena down? Sounds like the cryptozoologist's wife shares a special connection to the phasmid somehow. I didn't know the phasmid was so important to Lena. Of course it's important to her. She's seen it. A verified sighting, on record. One of only four this century, and it's hers. She's seen it? Really? She sighted the phasmid? She didn't tell me that. Yes. That's how we first came to know one another, in fact. But that's her story to tell, not mine. <laughs> Needless to say, you must ask her about yes, the mysterious I must. phasmid. I must speak with you, Lena. Suffice to say... It's long been our dream to find proof of the Insulindian phasmid together. I must speak with you! I can't abandon course now. Another cough into his fist this time. Maybe you could come back to Whirling, warm up, come back to check the traps later. No, no, no. The traps need to be monitored on a regular schedule. What would we do if the phasmid were to starve? While we were sipping tea at the hostel. He's dead set on this. Hmm. I could go for some trap setting. What if we check the traps for you? I didn't expect you to take such an interest in our work here, officer. Cryptozoology and detective work are very similar. Yes, indeed. Both require a great deal of research, attention to detail, and, above all, Persistence. Where are these traps? There are four in total. One is to the south, on this little peninsula. By the boathouse is there. Okay. It's very near. Another we set in Land's End, to the northeast. It's behind a small sand dune there. On your way to the old radio tower, after the church. Okay. The third is set near the canal, where you crossed, by a concrete slab. A big thicket of reeds going up the slope. I'm among them. He gestures to the trap in front of him. You should check at least one of those before returning to this one, since I just said it. This one's more of a technicality, but still, better safe and stupid than sorry. That seems like a lot. Do we really have time for this extracurricular venture? Of course we do. Time doesn't pass. It's 2 a.m. But Kim, maybe our suspect is hiding out in the reeds along with the traps. The pursuit of knowledge is its own justification. Is it? He doesn't look too convinced, but the small shrug indicates why not. 
What do I do if there's a phasmid in one of the traps? Bring it to me at once. Just make sure the trap is closed tight. What if I encounter the phasmids in the wild? That's highly unlikely, officer. But in the event you do, he takes I'll spray out the you with a pheromone thing. mixture I developed. It's made of musk and research chemicals. The pheromone should attract the insect to you, or at least prevent it from bolting at the sight of you. It's quite potent. Will last you about a week. <laughs> do we want this? Lay it on me. Wise choice. He douses you with the odd smelling spray, then gives you a sad smile. I hope you're not buying this. He dispenses it without letting you touch the canister, so it would be precious like holy water. It is precious. A single dose cost me 50 real to develop. Not that I expect you to understand self-financing one's own research. <laughs> I wonder what, what, what will happen because of that. I'm ready, let's get right. to it. Which means you two can pack up and go back to the whirling. Whatever he thinks about this detour, it's clear that these men are exhausted and in need of assistance. Finally, someone's talking sense. Thank you for your help. Gary and I'll enough. start breaking Maybe down. I should have asked for him to if you have any more lay it on me thick. Now's the time to ask. We'll be gone once you get to it. If it's more cryptid related business you want to discuss, you'll have time for that later too. But what if the information is vital on the hunt? How did you become a cryptozoologist? I've just always liked animals and puzzles. Searching for cryptids is a bit of both. So you are living your childhood dream out here. It's not child's play. Just because I have to trade through the mud every so often. Why not just be a zoologist? Real animals are puzzling too. Real? I know you think one is a respectable profession. While the other is superstition, everyone does. I don't. It's a profession, just like any other. Indeed. My methods do not differ from other scientists. I simply draw upon a wider variety of evidence. And I have more hope that something truly surprising might happen. And has anything truly surprising ever happened to you? No. As I said, I have yet to catch a cryptid. Although I have come close. Close enough to keep trying. Okay. Entirely different. Well, not entirely different, but... He didn't say what's written here. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Something for later. This close call. What kinds of evidence do you use? Everything from forgotten regional law to newspaper accounts. Like the one that brought us here. To look for the phasmid. I keep a very open mind. He's interested in things that people believe that scientists don't. You think other scientists don't listen to ordinary people enough? Most establishment scientists only care about reputation and remuneration, not real research, and certainly not the truth. They're a cowardly lot, and both the field and basement archives can be dangerous places. So you have never discovered the cryptids? No. Very few cryptids are ever discovered. And not for a lack of trying. To stay hidden is a cryptid's primary quality. It's even in the name, cryptid. So how many cryptids have been found? Of the list of cryptids kept by the Cryptozoological Society of Shemni, which is 4,082 items long, about 2,000 have been confirmed as hoaxes. Two are categorized as confirmed discoveries. The rest are in differing stages of discovery refutation and data collection only two have proven to be real yes the chateau quan forest pygmy who turned out to be an extinct species of primate and a cave salamander from hugo grad who is honestly quite unremarkable it's in a zoo somewhere we cryptozoologists are brutally honest with ourselves more so even than the public with cryptids most cryptids are hoaxes or they are never found. That does not mean we should stop searching. Two out of four thousand is not even one person. Not approvingly, then the insulindian phasmid will be the third. Indeed. He does not smile. If our just expedition looks in the is eye. successful, every paper in the world will report on it. From Revachol to Dushan too. 
It will be a zoological miracle. No, sir. It will be a cryptozoological miracle. He has clearly done his math on this. There is no surprising him or swaying his opinion. Thanks for explaining that. Now about something yes. else. Let's talk about specific cryptids. All right. What cryptids precisely? I usually discuss these things with specialists, so I don't know what. We would have to discuss. He wants to say, but decides against it. Since you've offered to help, you need to ask him about <laughs> specific cryptids. Cryptids you've heard about from Lena or his friend Gary. He well, this is, this is the talk. best time to do this, since time doesn't pass. If we were to do this, you know, in the next day, during the day, which cryptid did you almost catch? You said before that you almost caught one. A willow person. It's a long story. One non-specialist would find rather dull. Willow people? Not at all. What are willow people? They're not people, really. Some argue they aren't really animals. As they seem to have evolved directly from trees. He says it's in a self-explanatory explanatory everyday manner. They're very, very thin. Almost flat, in fact, and can camouflage themselves easily, wrapping themselves around trees and blending in with the tree bark. In that way, they're not too dissimilar from the phasmid we're looking for here. Wait, so I may have seen these Veloth people without knowing it? I see a pattern here. It's the... what was it called? Called the Mamadakua. We might have heard it without realizing, and we might have seen these without realizing. You probably have. How did you almost catch a willow person? Gary and I painted an entire grove's worth of trees in slow drying paint. It was a bright lavender color. I was hoping one of the willow people would get paint on it and not be able to camouflage itself. After waiting in hiding for hours, I saw a figure slip from one of the trees, a lavender shadow. Dashing through the grove. And then? I chased it with a knit. Not very elegant. You can't be elegant in the field. And, well, it was faster than me. A lavender shadow. He smirks. I know you think we were snacking on funny mushrooms. It's easier to mock someone than to admit that the world might be more interesting than you've imagined. Furthermore, I'm not saying it was a confirmed sighting. I'm painfully aware of what goes into verifying such things. There is a serious possibility that I saw a squirrel or a trick of the light. I am my own harshest critic. He makes it a real point here to sound falsifiable. And Lena's sighting of the phasmids, is that... Confirmed. It's 100% verified and meets all the standards of an authentic cryptid sighting. I know all about the kind, kind green ape. Look, I even have a, have a kind green ape pen. Take out the pen. I see you've been talking about cryptids with Lena. The kind green ape is one of her favorites. A warm wave passes him. Of course, the kind green ape is her favorite, he thinks. We traveled to South Safra to look for it once. Gary and I got stuck in a rainstorm, though, and had to spend most of our time there in a little village. The search was fabulously unsuccessful, but the people were very nice. I'm glad they didn't understand what Gary was saying about them. What? South Safra? They're just on a different rung of the ladder, Morel. I had no problem with them. Really? You kept complaining about how dirty everything is, but we digress. They're a nascent culture. I just didn't feel comfortable, and... Let's change the topic, okay? Talk about your critters, or whatever. I know about the most dangerous cryptid, the Gnome of Jeroma. Formerly the most dangerous, yes. But do you know the most dangerous living cryptid? Living? No. That must be the evil apes duking it out on the giant ball. Living? The no. The most dangerous cryptid is a carnivorous ruminant, known colloquially as the Dread Moose. Get out of here. No. The Dread Moose? Yes. The Dread Moose subsists entirely on flesh. It has even been known to dig up fresh graves in search of sustenance. Moose are very dangerous, yes. <laughs> exactly. Moose are very dangerous, and Dread Moose? No. 
That's on a, a whole other level. Hold on, does it also attack people? Human remains have been found deep in the forest, torn apart, then trampled into the mulch by large hooves. Infer from that what you will. Okay, what do, what does the dread moose look like? Just like an ordinary Arden moose. Then how can you tell if it's the ordinary or the dread kind? You can't. That's what makes it so dreadful. And hard to identify. That, that's stupid. A moose that looks like any other moose. What's going on here? He's kidding, right? I'm not completely sure about this dread moose. The bodies found in the forest are just one piece of physical evidence. There's more. What's the other evidence? The recent surge in the moose population. As hidden carnivores, the dread moose are effectively removing competition for both themselves and their evolutionary cousins. But why would it need to hide this carnivorous nature? Moose are already being hunted for sport. Can you imagine what would happen if they came to be viewed as predators? What exactly is, your, is the relationship between carnivorous moose and regular moose? The carnivorous moose are a very young species, the result of a genetic mutation that fared well in the process of natural selection. It makes sense that such a majestic animal with natural weapons, antlers, would come to rule the forest. The only strange thing is that it took so long. <laughs> he kind of makes sense. Are there any reliable eyewitnesses accounts of a moose killing other animals for food? One slaughterhouse at the outskirts of the woods in Vasa reported that its staff kept seeing moose in the distance. The moose would just stare at the building as though they were waiting for something. Its eyes bloodshot full of cruelty. <laughs> That's not how blood chains work. <laughs> well, in, in the case of Dread Moose, it is broccoli. That does sound suspicious. And that's not all. Some of the slaughterhouse apprentices went hiking by a nearby creek and saw a moose nibbling on an unidentified <gasps> carcass. This isn't something unique. Various species of deer have been known to scavenge when plant food is scarce. Anyway, there is more than enough evidence to justify a thorough search for the dread moose. I know. Let's close the subject. Okay. Before it turns into an argument. I know the biggest cryptid, the giant of Coconut. That's impressive, I guess. But have you seen it with your own eyes? Have you seen it? I haven't had a chance to travel to Coconut. No, and I likely never will. The Samaskilt Desert region has been embroiled in a small civil war for the last eight years. I fear this mindless barbarism may have wiped out the elusive creature entirely. Sightings of towering luminosities have grown rare recently, while they once used to be constant. Yes, sightings of mirages are constant. A mirage is a constant phenomenon that people have no time to report when a war is going on. It remains unclear what this has got to do with you seeing it, as he was inquiring before. He was just being defensive. I know about Cryobacter Catlensis. Oh, everyone knows about that one. Thanks to Professor Mijanu being the talk of the town for a time. He coughs in his fist. Although, probably because her life ended as a result of her working gutler. No one remembers her contributions to the search for the Nongok. Nongok? A flightless cursor owl found in the Seminine Isles. Its long legs permit the Nongok to run faster than any other avian. Perhaps any other animal. Who knows? When it's not hunting its prey in its manner. So it's a roger? Hangs from tree branches, like a bat, waiting to dive on hapless prey below on the jungle floor. Mijanu liked extreme animals, you see. One of the few figures of the academic establishment I respect. Really a shame she disappeared. When did she disappear? Oh, decades ago. In the 30s. I didn't know her personally, of course. A chasm of academic pretension still stood before us, even though she had unusual courage for someone from the other side. Your friend Gary told me about the burning rhino. Did he? That one's a hoax. Some Seroese rice farmers set fire to rhinoceros cadavers and use them to scare tourists. Have you told Gary this? 
Many times. It always turns into an argument. I don't want to repeat it. The rhino holds a special place in his heart. Let it. Myths are part of my field. What if the other cryptids are hoaxes too? Many of them probably are. Statistically speaking, about 20% of all cryptids are verified hoaxes. What? Uncovering you said 2,000 fabricated in about 4,000. It's just as it would much be my calling as finding new species. If perhaps slightly less enjoyable. See, Kim, one of them is a hoax. Which one? <laughs> he hasn't been paying attention. The burning rhino. Mm -hmm. The burning rhino is where they draw the line. I knew it can't be real. Did you? It is almost as difficult to confirm a hoax as it is to confirm a sighting. <coughs> Just tell me about a cool cryptid, any cryptid. No offense, officer, but I'm not much of a pedagogue. I don't know what I would have done if Lena hadn't persuaded me to go back to field research. You should ask her if you want interesting stories. Me? I'm not a people person. Unless you haven't noticed. I don't know, man. I think we've been talking for an hour. I don't make a good lecturer. My strength lies in field work and persistence. He brushes an errant strand of hair from his eye. This is a gruff man who's been ridiculed too many times to feel comfortable talking about what's dearest to his heart. It's in his shoulders. His face is everything. Enough tales, then. Let's change the subject. By all means. Did you know <laughs> Gary was hiding the armor? Hell no. I had no idea, and I'm still cross with him, to be honest. It's not like him. He's got his quirks, but dishonesty, disloyalty, are not one of them. Thanks. The man mutters in the distance. He doesn't dare say more. He's still glad his friend stood up for him. I'll get going. Okay, let's check this armor. Minus one empathy, plus one pain threshold, plus one volition. Plus one volition. It's pretty good, actually. This honestly is not one of the quirks of the literal crypto fashion. <laughs> but clearly not. Oh. What was that sound? I have three points. I can spin around. Okay, what, what is a good skill to put a point in for passive? Let's think about it. So, Inland Empire Encyclopedia, Logic, Visual, no, not Visual Calculus, Logic Encyclopedia, Inland Empire, Esprit de Corps, Reaction Speed, Perception, Shivers, Electrochemistry. These all show up a lot. Volition. They show up a lot as passive check. Passive checks. I kinda like logic. Encyclopedia is also good, but I don't know. I don't find it interesting. I feel like this might become useful once we find the gun. Perception. It's a good one for sure. Reaction speed. I can't decide. They are all good. Maybe put some points in authority. We sometimes need to use authority. Yeah, they're all good. Endurance is also good. Make a poll. <laughs> maybe I should, maybe I should. But I can't decide even what to put in the poll.
Let's put one here. One here for now. He will keep the one point for empathy. So, okay, we need to find the traps now. Three traps. I don't remember where the traps were at all. Oh. There's a trap in the reeds at your feet. Looks like the same one you saw Morel set before. Same mesh, same wiring. Look around. The reeds rustle confidentially while the residential building menacing in the darkness behind you shield them from the wind. Reach for the trap. Locusts are crawling around in the trap, confused but uneaten. You see no carnivorous reed phasmid gorging on them. Big surprise. Anyway, one down, three to go. No need to grin, I'm not expecting to find anything. I'm helping some citizens and getting some fresh air at 2 a.m. I meant no offense, just... The lieutenant doesn't know how to finish the sentence. He looks at you, putting the trap back on the ground. I don't remember where the traps were. There's no way the perp is in here, officer. Look how scarred the boards are. All attempts to pry them off have failed. Can I try to get in though? Not this time. The opposition is insurmountable. But I like the spirit. Have some points. Hey, points. It's lonely and cold without points. And dangerous. Dangerous too. Kim, you think she's in there? Point at the boarded up building. The suspect? God, I hope not. I can't see a way in. Though many have tried. Nothing more to do here then. New critical hits boost. Alright. Paratwise just boosted Dragon Age 2. New critical hits boost. Paratwise just boosted Might and Magic 7 for Blood and Honor. Oops. New critical hits boost. Paratwise just boosted Pillars of Eternity. Oh. What is that, Nyx? That is a confused command. New critical hits boost. NIXED242 just boosted Gothic. New critical hits boost. Xav just boosted Wilder Myth. No worries at all. New critical hits boost. Did you roll the 666 sided die today? New critical hits boost. Xav just boosted the Witcher. Do I hear Johnny? Worlds will be crushed. Britannia first, then. Ooh, that's pretty high. Witcher, right? Did I get it right? Witcher. Have you come to help hey, the Johnny. Alliance? Oh, Johnny gets a new discovery. Happy Friday, Johnny. How are you today? You are very well. That's great to hear. I'm I'm also alright, thank you. It's good to see you. Are you streaming today, Johnny? Jane Pradmore is evil? No, she is not evil. Look, she is below 200. How are you, Blackbird? Good to see you as well. So, alright, uh, evil Omiser characters are not all evil. You know, it starts with one hits boost. most good to 666, most evil. There are neutral characters in between. There's, there are all sorts of characters. Thanks for the, thanks for the boost, everyone. Parrots, GG, next. We also got GG. No. Wait, I said GG. Okay. How has my week been? It's been alright. You know, we are making good progress in Disco Elysium. Mostly. I had the extra stream. It's actually been tired. Tiring this week. 
I might have kind of overdone it with six streams this week. Being, uh, in all honesty, it's been a little bit too much. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. To chill all day. The rating went from evil to mythological evil. No, it goes from extreme good to extreme evil. Mystical, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely need the rest. I'm definitely looking forward to tomorrow. But you know, I, I'm I'm happy to be playing this game right now. I'm making progress. Okay, one is here. How was your week, Johnny? A familiar apparatus lies among the reeds. Another one of Morel's traps, weighed down by stones. It's to nothing keep a few slices of pizza wouldn't cure. I hope so. I hope so, Parrot. Look around. The reeds shake sadly in the coastal breeze, weighed down by rain. They seem to be waiting for something. The wind picks up here, near the cape's end, surrounding the narrow strip of land from three cardinal directions. It's cold for this time of year. I think I passed where you stopped, right, Johnny? Reach for the trap. This trap is also full of panicked locusts. No sign of any cryptozoological beast inside. Another empty trap. How are you enjoying the cardio, Lieutenant? I'm quite enjoying it myself. Always up for a good job. Otherwise, would I still be on this case with you? He smiles and raises his collar. It's windy. I must. I, I feel like I must repeat though, Johnny. I, I really want you to continue your playthrough. And now, you know, when you started it, I don't know, was it two months ago? Even earlier? I was expecting to play the game and I, I had to avoid your streams to not get spoilers. But once I finish this next week, if you continue this realism streams, I will definitely be watching with full attention. Because your character is quite different from mine, and our playstyles quite differ from each other too, so your playthrough will be completely different from mine, I feel. And I'm really excited to see how you will fare in the game. I hope you continue. It's a, such a great game. So the the um near the canal you cross southeast of the village. So that is the entrance near the swing. You really enjoy peop watching people play it. Yes, great game. It takes it really is great. You are having pizza too? I want pizza now. Great news. The boat is big enough for a grown man like you to fit underneath it in a supine position. Wait, what would I be doing under there? I don't know. Sleeping? What do people do under boats? This is merely a measurement from your visual cortex. Do with it what you want. Great news. I found somewhere new to sleep. Huh? I can pretty much finish the case from under the boat there. It's dry, weatherproof, and free of charge. Sarcastic self-pity is not what we need at this moment. Of I understand the situation <laughs> ah, looks grim, but we must continue with our investigation. The situation doesn't look grim at all, Kim. Look, I'm, I have 169 reals. Think of it as a salvation. Nom nom nom. You have a home somewhere. All cops do. When this is done, you can return. New critical hits boost. Legion Grey just Mass boosted effect. yes. This is a great game, but you know what's also a great? <laughs> the critically acclaimed and world beloved series. Mass Effect. Oh, the series even. Why don't you put your points where your toads lie and also boost Mass Effect 2? Wait, 
Oh no, we don't even have Mass Effect 2 nominated. Legion, why don't you nominate the rest of the series then? Thank you, thank you for the boost, Legion. I appreciate it. This trap's not too hard to spot. Once you know what to look for, keeping it hidden has not been a priority for the crypto. Rage on follow. Dude, it's not my fault. I don't nominate games, the viewers do. Like you should, you can. Look around. The reeds bend forlornly toward New the sand. New critical hits nomination. Some toughs have Legion been crushed. Gray just the broken stalks seem like a rebuke. The sound of the city hums in the east. The constant, distant song. Louder on this part of the coast. Nearer somehow. And there's that cold again. Always the cold. Alright. Let's get the nomination in. Mass Effect 2 is no longer a nomination idea. Instead, it is it is on hold, nominated by Legion Grey. Wait, the G is not a capital. Hydrate. Nominated by Legion Grey on the thirty first of March. And it goes right here. Thank you for the nomination and thank you for the hydrate. Capital lower abbreviated. Okay, reach for the trap. Nothing but locus in this trap as well. Definitely no cryptozoological monstrosity. Empty as all of them. One more of these and we're done. You getting tired? No, no, I'm fine. I didn't mean to complain, it's just... He's short-winded, the sentence ends there. And to think that I could maybe walk around this place yesterday before I end the stream. I know most of it was dialogue and I would leave it for today regardless, but even walking around... You know, we've been streaming, what, 3 hours, 15 minutes or so today. I'm still at the same night. No, did I? I guess I haven't really learned the layout of this place still. Come on. I keep making the same mistake every time. Okay. How how does fast travel work? It doesn't work. It doesn't. But the game says we've unlocked fast travel locations. Why does it say that? If there is no fast traveling. I like takeaway pizza, but it's just way too expensive. And homemade is better, regardless. 
but I'm okay with takeaway pizza. Not the frozen supermarket stuff. They are they are terrible. This relay tower coordinates both traffic in the bay barely. Where is the where is the trap? It's, it wasn't this one. Okay, I'm I'm confused. I don't know where I'm supposed to go. How am I back here? In the cryptozoologist camp, which is... It wasn't it here? And that's where I am. How can I not find this place now? Oh, here? No, it's not here. Back in my day. <laughs> this is the village. Was it this one? This is the last of the Okay, traps. this one. The one Morel just set. Checking it over. He said is just a technicality. Look around. The reeds by the abandoned campsite hiss and shake in the lazily falling rain. It's good the cryptozoologists left. This isn't a very cozy place to stay night after night. The later it gets, the colder. Remnants of the camp can still be seen in the sand. The fire that's gone out. You feel strange, somehow. I should save. This is the lock. The trap feels light and silent as you pick it up. Something is different here. Look closer. No locust. No phasmid either. But still. The closer still. Well, the bait worked on something. This doesn't mean it was a reed monster, though. Unless you see one in there, I just see an empty trap. The netting is a little untidy. Messier than the others. Like someone or something picked the trap up and shook it before dropping it back down on the ground. Actually, I do get the feeling that someone or something may have messed with the trap. Perhaps our cryptozoologists have competition in the form of an actual entomologist. Or someone else is sabotaging them. I could present more theories. But then I would be taking this on as a case, which I'm not. 
But what if it was the phasmids? What if they them then got out? Right. Anyway, that's for the cryptozoologists to figure out now. We are not cryptozoologists. We are cops. What if we are crypto cops? A cold gust of air dries your sweaty face, and you look to the dark shadow, the felled building in the distance, drawing you to it. What a strange sensation. Once this is done, should you try to ask again? <laughs> You've checked all the traps now. I don't know, maybe I need more perception. Maybe I didn't I needed more perception. That maybe I would see the crypt cryptid in there. Maybe I needed heroic legendary levels of perception. I don't know if we can actually discover the cryptid. Okay, I think... Oh, never mind. We still have the church. And now I will not be able to find the church for half an hour. Never mind, I just found it. Heavy wooden doors, more than twice your height, stand shut in front of you. The rectangular sea-worn ornamentation appears in stark contrast to the padlock carelessly drilled into the wood. Inspect the carpentry. The carving on the door is block-like and angular, like the church itself. Two large beams shoot downwards, sinking into the wood before they reach the threshold. Run your hand over a beam. The surface is smooth from the wind, but moist to the touch. Feels exceptional. 300 tons of pine wood fit together seamlessly. It's old too. Cut and carved many centuries ago. Take a closer look at the padlock. This cheap-looking padlock is sturdily built. It shackles together a hasp and a staple screwed Maybe into I the Maybe I want one more door. pointed interface. The lock is adorned with a yellow sticker. It'll be easier to break the staple than the lock. Also, that sticker is interesting, somehow. So what does these passive totals work? It says your total is 30. In fact, I have seven. So... Do I add a passive of six, which is you know half around half of what you roll on on a two d six? Well, the average would be six point five, but you know rounded down it would be six. So so I guess you add six to your current and get the passive check against that. It's like taking ten in in a d twenty based game, and the checks. <laughs> You know, they start with trivial go all the way to legendary, which is 8 to 18. No, 8 to 20. So I guess to be able to get legendary passive checks, I would need 12 here, which is very difficult. Regardless, 7 does not mean much. It could be 6 for the purpose of passive checks. But if we put another point, for example, on interface and get it to 8, then we can get one tier higher passive checks also. Which was a long-winded way of saying that I shouldn't keep skills at odd numbers if I can help. It's better to get them, keep them in even numbers. I see perception, interfacing, visual calc visual calculus doesn't really get passive checks though. Open the padlock with the, the key. The lock turns easily. You hear a click as the shackle pops open. Let's go. Lieutenant nods at you. As you Pull do, on the doors. You hear the echo of the doomed commercial area, its black holes and dusty machines. Then the feeling passes. A great whoosh of air rushes into the dark innards of the church, as though rushing to fill a great vacuum in the heart of the city. So this area is the last thing I remember from my previous half playthrough. 
I don't remember details about it. I remember a few bits and pieces, but this is pretty much the last thing I remember. After this point, officially we are going into territory that I have zero idea about. Which is very exciting. A strange stillness fills you as you look around. You should walk here, not run. Hmm, interesting. More of the fork lightning pattern you saw outside. Bark beetles? No, it looks intentional. Some long forgotten style. Okay, what? Uh, I should probably check my equipment. What do I have? Perceptualization. Let's keep it on. Inland Empire? Why do I even want Inland Empire? Let's keep shivers. Let's keep logic. We want conceptualization. I think we want perception boots. Let's keep shivers. Hmm, let's keep logic. Empathy. You gotta keep conceptual conceptualization. Logic suggestion. Um Minus suggestion, one logic. Two logic minus one perception. I kinda want to keep my perception in this place because we were told about the crab man, right? Let's not put on this Savoir Fair. Let's keep Savoir Fair on. Rather than logic. Yes. Suggestion half light. Now we want conception switch. Hmm, electrochemistry or interfacing? Interfacing. Even though it's not really used passively. Half light? Nah, not half light. Alright. This, this looks good. Even though <laughs> we, we look silly now. I wonder what happens if we run. This grotesque wooden figure looks half finished. This figure was added later, it's not part of the original church. The blackboard is filled with complex equations. They look recent. Something to do with radios frequencies, by the way. I probably want this in my hand. There may be tear around. This is a new location. Oh, I see boots. A prayer book has been left open. The bowl is filled with water. A live wire runs directly into it. Would these wires work as contact microphones? The silence in this part of the church, it's almost palpable. All the shifting matter and shuffling of living things is gone. Nothing seems to exist beyond the church anymore. Maybe if you were to stand in just the right spot, even your footsteps would be completely silent. Wait, I think I still hear something. And then it's gone. Almost all of it. But for the faintest of hums, you can hardly hear your own breathing. Yell as loud as you can. Your voice is barely audible. Not a howl, but the softest of whimpers. Stomp your feet and clap your hands. You produce a few muffled thumps, after which the silence feels even more total, somehow. Turn to Kim. What's happening? The lieutenant points to his ears and shakes his head. Then he leans closer. Can you hear anything? Almost nothing, and it's beginning to worry me. Not really, but it's extraordinary. I've never experienced anything like this. I wonder why the church was built with such strange acoustics. 
His detached tone conceals how uncomfortable he is. Maybe the church was designed this way to prevent boisterous activity, singing and dancing on its premises. Whatever it is, it's definitely real. Something odd is happening around us. The lieutenant doesn't reply, but you can sense him tense. The I, I pass too fast. I wonder what his I want Maybe this. the church was designed this way to prevent boisterous activity, singing and dancing. Hey, what if it's premises. something supernatural? Please, detective, not this again. Look up into the bell tower. The orderly rows of ceiling panels become barely visible. Then disappear completely in the darkness of the time. I, I expected ahead. something like this. But isn't it great? A challenging a 12 check and it's 97%. It's like there's something What's moving happening? up there. A shadow has emerged from the tower and it's making its way toward you through all the other shadows. All the shadows moments. It's not a shadow anymore. Becoming more substantial as it gets closer. The shape of an animal descends. I'm not seeing anything. What? Here? Officer, is there something up there? The lieutenant follows your gaze attempting to see whatever it is that you are seeing. Oh no. You've lost sight of it. Where did it go? On the ceiling? Yes. The darkness makes the ceiling feel infinitely far away. Blink. Oh. You see something hanging from the rafters, looking straight at you with dark eyes. Maybe it's possible to talk to it. Oh no, new NPC. Is this the crab man? Doesn't look like a crab. Well, let's go this way. Two decks of real to real tapes spinning on empty. In white, silver, and apricot films, the young mother of humanism stands above you. A crack runs across her. Young body. mother of humanism, is she that Dolores Day? Oval faced and sad, a dark and radiant majesty. This is her innocence, Dolores Day. Cradled in her arms are a pair of glowing lungs, clearly visible from underneath her flowing dress. You should kneel. Kneel. Your knees touch the floor. The floorboards are hard and cold. There, you kneel among the snowdrifts, diffuse light falling on your hands from beyond the glass. Close your eyes first. The world is silent, but for the creaks and cracks of the massive wooden structure behind you, it covers you from the wind outside. The ocean feels distant, its ebb and flow blocked off by the centuries-old pinewood sarcophagus around you. Never mind. Forget all I said before. This is an odd number check. 11. I was wrong. So the tears don't increase by two by two. Open your eyes. The woman looks down at you, kneeling. She towers among her followers, architects, laymen, courtiers. There is a sad smile on her lips and a glint in her green-blue eye of what? Compassion? Remorse? She acknowledges the passing of someone who is still alive. You. Is compassion. As that soft word passes through your mind, the lieutenant draws an X-shaped cross from shoulder to shoulder. Do the same as you get up. Your fingertips touch your chest four times. Then you rise from your knees Ooh. into the apricot-colored light of the window. Above you, the woman still smiles her distant smile, sundered by the crack in the glass. This is Dolores Day. Yes. I wasn't sure before, but this must be the DeLorean Church of Humanity in Martinez. It's called the Small Pinewood Church in some records. You knew of the place? It's a minor landmark, not easy to find. Most maps misplace it. It was built not long after Revachol's founding, 300 or so years ago, 
by first-generation settlers. What else do you know? There used to be seven stiff churches on the coast. Lesetsa, they called them. The Seven Sisters. Only one remains. The rest were burnt in the revolution or used for building materials. We should be respectful here, although the building appears to be deserted. I do not believe we'll find an instigator here. Something else, perhaps? He looks at the machinery lying around. Respectful? Is the lieutenant a follower of DeLoreanism? A pang of guilt. The lieutenant is leaving something out. Do you know why it was abandoned? I have a theory, yes. There was a police raid a while back. I heard the place was shut to pieces. Who conducted this raid? Well, your station was involved, I hear. Although I can be sure. How come the lieutenant isn't sure? Is this confidential information? You're not sure? Three precincts were involved in the raid, and people say Precinct 41 was one of them. I... I guess I could have been here. I'm sorry, I'm not saying you were. It was a clandestine operation. I don't know anything about it, why it was conducted or who participated. I try not to pry into extra-district matters. If I was here, perhaps I should find out what I was doing. There is no perhaps there. Good luck. You will not get information on a confidential operation from your station secretary just by calling. If you really don't remember, it might be better to keep this one forgotten. It happened a while ago. It's an important to our business in Martinez now. Kim, are you a follower of Dolorianism? Yes, we all are. Her name, body and rule are synonymous with humanism. The laws we enforce are Dolorian in origin. Hmm, stroke your chin first. The woman looks by in silence, smiling enigmatically. I don't think you were spiritual. It's not spiritual, it's constitutional. The DeLorean system does not demand faith, only accordance. Okay, encyclopedia and visual calculus. Let's see what we can come up with. I'm sure I have some encyclopedia items. Some glasses. I might have more. We might have minus. Really? We don't have much, do we? Humanism stands above you. Well, it's a precious it's all right. wax painting on a single pane of glass. A crack runs across the length of her body, her face oval and sad. How did I know this is the mother of humanism? Despite the damage you've done to yourself, the title appears lodged in your hippocampus. This is her innocence, Dolores Day. The innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state. Perhaps the most famous human being ever to have lived. No amount of Commodore Red can wipe her sad smile from your brain thing. It has survived the deluge and haunts you still. And will haunt you forever as it haunts all men. Wait, what exactly is an instance I've heard of the system? The highest category of historic individual. An embodiment of the world spirit. A ruler? More. An innocence is elected to office by the founding party, a precedent that has taken place a mere six times in the entirety of history. The legal system of the Real Belt is built to accommodate an ascetic rule should it coincide with our time. An innocence is infallible. The decisions made by one are not decisions. They are inevitabilities. What would have happened anyway? Only accelerated packed into decades instead of centuries. An innocence is a continuous compressed event, a sacred human being. It is an honor and a glory to live when one is in office. Is she in office now? No, we are alone. Okay, when did she rule? 300 years ago, in the wake of the discovery of this Isola, the Insulindian, 
by explorers from the continent of Mwindi. She is, among other things, the innocence of inter travel and the connected world. What else do I know about her? Many things. You know she was a woman of the court, the wife of an influential Marchese, and eventually the principal advisor to Irene Le Navigateur, Queen of Seren, modern-day Sir Laclay. Also, that she was gorgeous beyond beauty. Okay, what else? Was she smart? Terribly. Women of the court were expected to play both contract bridge and chess sufficiently well to prove an interesting challenge to a man. A simple grasp in matters of if philosophy, you tell me one more theology, time something's and missing, science I'll... was encouraged. She was, by all means, a kept woman. Hey, BG Nerd. Welcome. Good to see you. So we officially discovered more this season than any other season. That's great. 165 discoveries. How are you today, BG Nerd? Good to see you. She made the most of her position in the anti-Delorean court. A court visited by the most prominent thinkers and artists Lord Blackthorn. of Makes the day. Sense. In secret, she was becoming the era's preeminent philosopher of the state. A scalpel, a piercing gaze. She was an almost preternaturally magnetic and intelligent individual. To her contemporaries, she appeared out of time. A messenger from the future Hydrate. of the species. Hydrate. We all Good fell idea. in love with Thank her. Thank you, me. Head over heels. Even before she was declared an innocence, her influence was tremendous. How come? It was on her advice that Irene Le Navigateur sponsored a number of voyages into the Pale. A costly, often tragic endeavor, ultimately vindicated by the discovery of the new, new world, the piece of reality you're standing on. She was crowned two years after the first expedition returned, setting in motion what is widely considered the greatest era in history, the DeLorean era. Wow. Wow, indeed. When her innocence was declared and the queen she had advised for years fell on her knees before her, she was so overcome with emotion that her lungs started glowing in her chest. Bystanders reported golden filaments lighting the already sunlit chamber around her, clearly visible beneath her dress. That is why the lungs are the symbol of love for the cultures of the real belt. I want more. As did we all. The lands of the Mesk and the Occident, and even far away Supram Windy. Altogether, 21 of the 40 Mundial nations of the time immediately accepted Innocentic rule, even before her crowning. Her crowning? In a city called Advesperaskit, in Vesper Messina, her homeland. The name of the city means evening comes, but it happened on a winter's morning with the canals frozen and slush falling out of the sky. She was dressed in a white and pearl dress on an emptied out plaza with the crowd far away. Already her thirties, the secret servicemen of the innocents, were worried about an assassination attempt. She must have been beautiful. Oh yes, she looked like humanity's young mother, a perfect mother, insultingly beautiful. It was as if her face and shoulders and hands were covered in a soft down of underfeathers. You know this well, very well. Midwinter snow was beating the cobblestones around her. A small attaché of officials stood by as her therriers placed a white gold wreath on her head. The crowning was mostly witnessed by secret servicemen. Done what? One of the men in this secret service killed her 22 years later. A young man who had come to suspect that Dolores Day was not entirely human, but something else. What? Something that had walked in our midst, watching us stumble for hundreds, if not thousands of years, until it decided to interfere, interfere in the course of our history. We were supposed to come up with this ourselves. The man was reported to have screamed at the innocents. Dolores Day was shot in the chest with a fowling piece eight times. The man, thought to be insane, said he once touched her and her body had been unnaturally warm, like a furnace, and that sometimes, while on duty, he observed her forgetting to breathe for over ten minutes. 
This inhuman quality was witnessed by many others as well, glowing lungs and all. It is commonly attributed to mass hysteria and religious psychology. Was there something terrifying about her? Terrifying is a term too emotionally charged for your semantic memory or what remains of it. But although she's often considered to be the greatest human being to ever live, there was something ominous about Dolores Day, constantly surrounded by her therriers. She was the most socially secluded and least self-aware of all the innocences. Some modern thinkers would consider her a war criminal for the campaigns she waged against the Mesk state. And then there were the resettlement programs. What happened? The Mesk state tried to detach itself from innocentic rule. Parts of the world were experiencing whiplash from accelerating into secularism. Her mandatory education programs and mass resettlement of upstream Marguerite were problematic as well. Dissenters were suppressed by a military force she called the Army of Humanity, suggesting those who fight against it are not part of humanity. She adored chess, yes, but also military war games. Dolores Day often holds a tiny tin soldier between her index finger and thumb in icons such as this. She was also blonde, the blondest woman you have ever seen, with green eyes the color of the Pacific, Mare Interregnum. Little is known of her Marchese husband. It's as if he vanished from history after completing his role, which was to introduce Dolores Day to court. In conclusion, yes, there is something lonely, paranoid, and even terrifying that people seldom mention, but feel when they think of her. This subtle terror is part of her iconography. Lieutenant Yefrater, you've stood there for over five minutes. Lieutenant's calm voice echoes in the cold air of the church. What are you thinking of, if I may ask? War criminal. Hmm. What do we choose? Glowing lungs. Lungs, that's fucked up. Yes, glowing lungs are quite unusual. After that one time, they have not been reported to glow. He takes his glasses off to clean You them. know, this church, the coast, we shouldn't linger. Finish what you came here to do and let's move on. This isn't a good place to get lost in. Reconstruct the cracked glass. The shards Aww. glow in the dark. You see little pearls of light on the edges of the crack that splits the female figure. Something was written there. Remains of broken letters lined the emotion. What it said, you do We will try know. again. Reconstruct the cracked glass. The mother of humanism stands a jigsaw of broken shards falls into place in front of you. A ghostly reconstruction of the stained glass window. Before it was shattered, there was an older woman beneath the younger one, and a text, a light motif below them both. What shattered this mosaic? Unknown. Something during the raid the lieutenant mentioned, or just hooligans looking for something to break. Who is this older woman? The escutcheon on her throne says, Irene the Navigator. She is depicted as an older woman wearing thick-rimmed eyeglasses, holding a golden rights apfel in one hand and a scepter in the other. This is the queen her innocence day advised. Above, she herself is whole. Small figures of wise men, common men, worshippers walk up the stairs to stand at her feet. Secret servicemen, thirty years, stand in a row guarding her. It must have taken years to produce this work in all its dizzying detail. The motto? What does it say? Below both women, in luminous black letters. Après la vie, mort. Après la mort, la vie de nouveau. And then along the left side, Après le monde, la gré. Après le gré, le monde de nouveau. After life, death. After death, life again. After the world, the pale. After the pale, the world again. 
This is the great leitmotif of humanism, a summary of the effect of the discovery of this Isola, the Insulindian, on human thinking. A tremendous sea change akin to finding life after death. Eutanantis used to say after life, death. Death, life again. After the world, the pale. After the pale, the world again. This exaltation is common in Dolorian sacralism. In the early years, it was even incorporated as the RCM slogan. No more, however. Why? It was deemed subservient to use a strongly moral intern related motto. We are already suspected of bootlicking. The sentence was also seen as too feminine. It was a macho thing. What is the RCM motto now? Justice, union, prudence, and force. I like the other one better. So do I. Step back. The mother of humanism towers above you. A wax painting on a cracked pane of glass. I like these interactions. Wait, what is this? A portable Harman Wow sheet tape recorder. Is it possible it's recording something? Someone siphoning electrical current from outside into his antenna. A machine stands in the corner, watched over by the figures on the stained glass window. It's turned on and quivering with soft electricity. Another radio computer. And this time it's already turned on. He seemed cautious around the machine. These machines sometimes harbor traps, he thinks. Alarm systems and the like. Let's be careful. We should leave. I doubt this place bears any connection to the case. Yes, but this machine looks like the one in Doom's commercial area. It's also quite similar to the one we have down at the station. Must be the same model. He inspects the machine's framework, careful not to touch anything. The one you saw earlier was the Ream Civic. This is the Ream Prefect, a model number RC7024, equipped with a Feld mainframe and a Ream compatible interim printer. The Ream Prefect is the governmental version of the commonly used Ream Civic model. Although mostly based on the same technology, the Ream Prefect is equipped with better noise attenuation circuits. Wait, let me just investigate this. Step behind the computer. You see fluorescent play and print buttons on the keyboard. A hatch connected to the central compartment is wide open. The lieutenant says nothing. You see the machine's glowing frame reflected back from his diamond-shaped glasses. You're free to proceed. Look inside the compartment. Behind the hatch sits a cube-like crisscross of filaments smoldering in the dark like fireflies. Silver tape on the side says, in black marker, Log, February to March. Another filament memory. Press play to talk with the repeater. Play. The speaker comes to life. Static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. An old lady greets you. Her voice sounds a hundred years old. Good evening, Votre accident on Saint-Brun. This is the East Insulindian Hopita Station 1. Please repeat, is this the personal log? It's the same old woman you spoke with through the radio computer in the doomed commercial area. Yvonne, it's me again. How are you? Good, thank you. Please repeat, is this the personal log? I looked inside the car, but the tape on the filament just said log, February to March. Good, please repeat the password. Let's look around. There's no use trying to guess the answer. This is police, please open this thing. I am contractually obliged to protect We are afraid we are not doing Now, can you please repeat? I don't know the password. I will fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Fortress accident. Like the one in the Doom commercial area? I have two machines registered to this company name in Martinez. One on Saint-Brun, the other on Rue de Saint-Guilaine. Saint-Brun, that's the church. And Rue de Saint-Guilaine, that's the Doom commercial area. Anything else I can help you with? Thanks, but I'm finished with the call. Sleep well, Fortress Accident. She says as her voice disappears into a world of stuff. The machine's keyboard is Let's try nothing happens. Okay. That reminds me, I want to... I want to take a look at that, that check. 
empty boots. Ooh. Innocence Dolores Day liked little figurines, right? Liked holding little men between her fingers, remember? What? You have the headless foul rider figurine. You should give it to her. Win her back. What? Win who back? I can't win her back. She's along that historic historical figurine. Don't be so pessimistic. Love doesn't die that easily. I should, yes, this is a task of mine now. So very, very, very nifty. Nifty and mysterious. This is surely what the figurines are for. So how do I do that? The mother of humanism stands above you. A precious and complex Looks like I can't give painting. this figurine to her. Why? Because she's a stained glass window. That does seem to be a problem. Maybe you meant something else? Like what? Is the task still on? I don't know. What are we thinking of? Part of your mind has gone on to other things already. The mother of humanism towers above you. What? Offer figurines to Dolores Day. The task is still on. You should offer her any and all you have one day if you meet her in person. Okay. Let's not run. A cracked pane of glass, colorful. It came from the stained glass window. Still has letters on it, too. Frost has drawn flowers on the glass, obscuring the view. A figure drawn in frost on the window, depicting a deer. Pain threshold scarf. Okay. Alright, the, the final interaction of this, of this place, I think. Let's see what the this shadow is. is. A man? A man made of the same stuff as the carpentry of the building. He is studying you intently. The crab man. Hey, who is there? The man leaned forward a little, fixing you with a steady, unreadable gaze, then speaks. Habitual alcohol use has made you into a scared little pussy, Holmes. But don't worry. Everything's gonna be all right. You come to the right place. I wasn't expecting this from the crab man. Right place for what? Here you can receive the mother's love. And when you're ready, she will take your hand and lift you out of the despair at the bottom of that bottle. This man is obviously a habitual narcotics user. Do we really need to question him? Hey, and what was that about the bottle again? You haven't even drank that much lately. Lay off it already. Let's see the Shift. whole church quest line is the best sequence of him. Well, I try to do everything 100% to the best of my ability, so I will try. Welcome to the channel, Discoism. Your name is after this game? Yeah, I guess I have a bit of a problem and it's been getting out of hand lately. No. Okay, let's try this. It's that cruel way. You must really I like the game. <laughs> Welcome to Your the channel. I hope you've been enjoying the stream. Suffering greatly from overindulgement, and you don't even know it. Great, more patronizing, so original. Hmm. Oh, I'm very in touch with my suffering. Not all of it. I was like you once. You don't know all the havoc Elvino is wrecking on your mind and your spirit. Necesita parar, el homie. You know, actually, since we're here, you may want to pay attention to what the ceiling climber is saying. For some reason, I feel like you have a point there. Don't trust me. Trust the mother. I'm only the messenger, Holmes. Mm.
Maybe you can quit. You know what? This is the kind of thought that I want for my character. Quit alcohol. We have one point. I mean, we'll certainly level up again very soon. 20 hours, though. Hmm, okay. So, insomnia. So, this is a problem. We start the day at 7, and it ends at 2. So, that is, what, 19 hours? So, we will have to go through at least one night with this insomnia. It doesn't finish in, in a single day. It's going to be tough. And I bet the night will have some something special with it. I can start this the first thing in day 4. Because if I start this now, we will have two nights with insomnia. Since research time doesn't pass during sleeping. Yeah, okay, I'm going to learn this, but next night. This is the church of the Mother of Silence. You are welcome here. He sways gently on the beams, waiting for you to take it all in. You have no idea what the fuck he's talking about. Is he just trying to throw you off your game? Whatever it is, he's quite confident about it. Just look how gracefully he sways. You must be the crab man. Hmm. Do you know where the other spooker is? Hmm. What do you want to say? Some ravers want to turn this place into a nightclub. The ones in the tent outside, right? I see him. Think they scared of me. I can stop drinking tomorrow. <laughs> it's just suboptimal. We would have to spend two nights with the insomnia debuff. I, I think it's going to have an effect. Obviously, I don't know, but I think it will. I would rather spend one night with it. I mean, it's not going to help us if we started today. Wait, do they have reason to be scared? Nah, man. They look pretty funny. And I don't harm no one anymore. Anyway. So what do you think about the nightclub that is? Why not? They wouldn't bother me none. I'm usually way up there. Imbibing. Ain't no music on earth that can reach where I go. Might even be nice to have some company. He said that in spite of himself. He's more attached to the human than he'd like to think. You must be the crab man. Do I want to say this? Sure. Never known myself to be a crab. But if that's the name you got for me, I won't stop you from using it. If you're not a crab, then what are you? Hey, it's your neighbors that came, who came up with this name, not me. I always thought of myself more like a flame, flickering oh. along the rafters and beams. It may be that I gotta work on my technique. What were you before you became a crab man? I was in a gang way, but my memories of that time are fading. Most of them are already gone. So many people losing their memory, a certain portent of doom. <laughs> nah. I lost my memory too, and it haunts me. No, man. You gotta let that shit go. Then the mother's light touch will fill you with rapture. Do you remember your name, sir? Tiago's my name. But those syllables don't mean much to me these days. A name isn't just your identity, but also, so to speak, your place amongst your fellows, your place in the world. I ain't got no use for such a place anymore. My name is Harry. Extend your hand for a greeting. That's just the thing, Holmes. None of that matters. Come on, bro. Don't leave me hanging. What are you doing here? This is a special place. There's a perforation in the world up there. A way out into nothingness. This church was built around it. For purposes of veneration. He now stores the ceiling. I circled it. Nurtured by the silence bestowed by the mother. One of these days, 
I'd be pure enough to go drink from it directly. This mother of silence, you mean her? Point to the window. No, no, no. There's a new god in town. And she can be painted or sculpted. Because she has no limb or even a face. She is the end. She is a cavity in the dark beyond sense. She saved me. But I couldn't describe her to you. No one can, Holmes. And no one ever will. What will happen once you drink from this perforation? I will be incinerated, but not destroyed. Finally, I won with the state of the world before reality began. That sounds a bit like substitution behavior, no? You know a thing or two about that. You sure you didn't just switch one drug for another? It's not like that at all, man. It's just faith and joyful service. Faith is a kind of drug. I heard that before, Wei. And I know I can't convince you on the spot. But think, when's the last time you woke up from silent communion with a hangover, regretting what you did last night? There are drugs darker than alcohol circling your system. I think Lao might have been my drug of choice, and I think I'm still hungover from it. She took you for a good spin, huh? Don't yeah. worry, bro. That love is but a drop compared to the ocean of the mother's love. The mother will eat all of you and never spit you out. Let's agree to disagree. I know it will take time. Don't sweat it. I still don't understand what you're doing in the church. I know it will take time. Don't sweat it. What, why did he repeat? I'm a seraph, Holmes. I sing the mother's glory. Can you sing for me? Sing for me something. I am from No Marietti, if that's what you're thinking. And the song I sing is Silent as the Mother. He lost his cool there for a moment. Seems you hit some nerve. How did you even find this place, this church? Hard to say. I think I did some construction work here. Back when I still had material worries. Up there, I realized what the true purpose of the church was. Been spending a lot of time here ever since. The past is nothing to me now, way. Eh? It didn't belong to me. Hmm. Does it mean he witnessed the police raid? Are these yours? Show him the scarf and shoes you found lying around. I think they were. A long time ago. I had to shed them like skins. To get closer to the center of the silence. You could have them. I don't need them anymore. They'd only stop him from climbing. They look pretty dapper, actually. Right, I hear other questions. The sinewy figure lingers on the wooden beams, blending into the shadows. You've been here for a long time. Did you see the police raid that took place here? <sighs> Something like that. He responds, his voice suddenly flat. Did you witness it? Not really. Or at least I don't remember much of it anymore. The mother's love has done its job. That's what's so great about the mother. It lets you forget about everything. Do you know where the other spooker is? Point at the strange machines around you. Other spooker? Oh, esa viejita es muy estudiosa. <laughs> Don't know, Holmes. The Aita is grandma. Wait, so there is another person even in the church, and it's a viejita? No. I just call her viejita because of her viejita. clothes. She's actually quite young. Or maybe not that young. Age is just one of the many masks we wear. Wait, what if it's Ruby? Did it ever seem to you like she was hiding here from something? The lieutenant seems to be thinking the same. He takes out his little knot. You knot mean like pack. a fugitive? He glances at the abandoned radio computer on the other side of the nave, pulsing with light. Then he shakes his hand. No, man. Why the opposite? I don't think she cared much about authority or anything else for that matter. Maybe only about her machines. I see. And where is she now? Lieutenant seems contented with that answer. I told you, Holmes. I don't know. How can you not know that when you both live here? Don't really follow her comings and goings. Just see her typing on her computer now and then. We got different interests. So you got nothing else to tell me? How she looks, what she does, who is who is she? I'm afraid not, Essay. 
You just have to wait until she comes back or... He shrugs. Or search through her radio computer. Have you by any chance heard the Vieta say the password to a radio computer? Too many times, Esse. You need it for something. Just tell me what's the password. Don't swear, Evato. The password is afterlife death. What you think of that? Makes me almost pity La Nilita Pequeña when I hear it. Okay, then, thanks. I think we're done here, Esse. The figure crawls off into the darkness above. That was an interesting conversation. However, I'm still not sure whether we'll find our suspect here. Machine's keyboard is the speak. Good evening. Uh, Let's try this again. Good. Please repeat the password. After life, death. Good. I have unlocked the filament. After ending the call, please press print to access the filament. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Thanks, but I'm finished with this call. Sleep. The machine's keyboard. The printer prints out a long text document with dated paragraphs. It looks a bit like someone's journal. Read the printout. The first entry made on the 4th of February, 51, by an unknown author, is short and concise. Arrived at the church, the door was boarded up, so I used the crowbar to get inside. Looks like the place has been deserted. Nothing out of the ordinary, but I'll ask around. Need to figure out how to get the electricity in. The lieutenant leans closer, scouring the printout over your shoulder. Just as you finish reading, he looks up, muttering under his breath. 4th of February. That's over a month ago. Whoever set up those machines has been here for quite a while. Do you think this log might be connected to the case? Our case? No, I don't think so. It must be some local eccentric. His eyes wander to the various machines around him. Read the second entry. 6th of February, 51. Had a little chat with the local fishermen said I shouldn't go near that place, that the church was spooky and ridden with narcotics. It's a little spooky, all right. Still haven't figured out the electricity. Third entry. 7th of February, 51. Finally got the electricity in. Next on the agenda, a new antenna. I'm thinking Esca series, something advanced. Why would she need an antenna? Why would anyone need any of this equipment here? He steps on a wire running on the ground, inspecting it with his boot for setting up a radio computer. Read the fourth entry. 8th of February, 51. Bought the antenna, had some problems setting it up. Called Simo for help. Heard the others are back to making art. Drinking somewhere out of town. Sulislav started a rock band again. Lexi has been seen asking money from strangers, but at least the artists have their act together. They're qualified labor. They can get work anywhere. Graphic design, ads. The programmers are doing fine too. I mean, they're programmers. The writers, though, they're fucked. I just have to find out what caused that data loss and be done with it. Still don't understand how it managed to wipe out the backup when the backup wasn't even connected to the front. I know, I know. Everyone thinks it's impossible. They say I must be lying. I'm here to set it right. A data loss? Seems like something to do with radio computers. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about them to understand what the author is saying. Something about the backup data getting destroyed, and how everyone thought it was the author's fault. Let's just keep reading. Artists, programmers, Lexi, who are all these people? I think these people worked in the radio computer games business. The one we saw in the Doom commercial yeah. area. They must be our former co-workers. Read the fifth entry. 12th of February. 51. Brought some food from the grocery store. Apparently, there's a strike going on in the harbor. Definitely not happy to see the Martinez people again. Everything's now set up in the church. Going to start working tomorrow, 8 a.m. The strike. We are nearing the date of the murder. Keep reading. I'm interested now. I want to know what's that radio anomaly that sent this person here in the first place. 
6th century. 25th of February, 51. I've been sending data up to Lintel for a while now, trying to recreate the data loss, but nothing. Didn't even feel like logging in the disappointment, but I did discover a curious audio-spatial anomaly at the back of the church. I've named it the Swallow. It swallows sound. Need to get some money. This is what we discovered. Is she talking about? Lieutenant looks to his right toward the silence. Read the seventh entry. 28th of February, 51. Yes, the first recordings confirm that the swallow is real and I'm not just losing my mind. It's a pillar of silence with a diameter of approximately three meters. Seems like the higher I go, the less I record. This might be a coincidence or it could be connected to the data loss that led me here. The pillar of silence. She is talking about the silence. Is she suggesting it's more than just an architectural quirk? Well, what could it be? Look at the water basins behind you. The lieutenant doesn't answer. He follows your gaze, studying the basins. The water shines in them. No ripples. Read the eighth entry. March 51. Some kind of young disco men have appeared next to the church. I've been trying to record the silence to find the epicenter, but now it turns out I've also been capturing the future of dance music, one neo-disco song, over and over again. Fortunately, the song is so monotonous, I was able to devise mm -hmm. an algorithm to factor it out. The other day, one of the disco men came in. Before I could even say hello, she got scared and left. Good, I don't want anyone distracting me from my work. That disco man? Must be a cell. She must be describing a cell. A girl on the ice? Sounds like her, yes. Read the ninth entry. March 51. I got a call from the repeater station. Someone has tried to access the radio computer in our old office in Yeah, Martinez. that's me. Can't do anything about it. The storekeeper still doesn't want to let me inside the building. Thinks I'm part of some kind of curse. How Martinez of her. That's me. I was the one who broke into that radio computer, and the storekeeper must be Placence. I knew it wasn't a good idea to meddle with the machine. No, no. It was a great idea. You're learning things. This is how you learn things about machines. Read the 10th entry. March 51. A new 2 meter aux cable. Noodles. Crackers. Ping ping energy drinks. Water. Toothpaste. Gum. Also, some canned air. Your reading is interrupted by the sound of the church door opening. A strange woman makes straight for the radio computer. Will we be able to finish this night today? <laughs> Breaking into my radio computer, I see. She glares at you as she holds down the off button for several seconds. The machine reboots. Yes. You are breaking in, but not into her radio computer. You're a master circuit bender. I do apologize for the intrusion, madame. We are with the RCM, you see. <laughs> you don't want to say this. <laughs> I can assure you I'm an expert circuit bender. I'm not breaking into your computer. I'm using it to access coalition military data links now. They are looking for a suspect in a murder investigation. We thought they might be hiding here. No one's hiding here. She barely looks up from the keyboard. You hear the machine roar back to life. It's just me and my computer and it has been this way for weeks. Now please give me some room. I need two seconds to see that you haven't destroyed anything. We should talk to her. After she has rebooted the machine. Have you rebooted the machine already? I still have these. I'm going to read this. Read this. Read this. Do stuff with this. What is it? 
woman is still hunched over the keyboard, gently illuminated by the purring machine. I didn't break anything, did I? No, you just printed out my personal log and wasted some paper. It does not look like a big loss to her. Hey, are you the lead programmer of Viral Untethered by any chance? Yes. Or, no. Not anymore. That project is dead. She doesn't seem surprised to be recognized. Rather sad. Something passes over her face before she straightens her back. Sorry, but who are you? What are you doing here? I am Sona Luukkanen Kilde, the former lead programmer of Fortress Accident and RSA radios. I have over 16 years of programming experience, and I'm proficient in both Vox and Orbis languages. If you're not here to hire me, I don't really know how I can help you. She turns back to the terminal. That still doesn't answer what she's doing in an abandoned church. Have you seen the crab man? No. But you know he's around? Yes. He's seen you. And? And the crab man has seen you. I don't care. I don't care about crab men. She barely looks up, now drinking with the machine sprinter. Have you seen anyone suspicious, say, a woman named Ruby? What? No. No one's suspicious around here. She has not seen her, sire. It is true. Why are there so many machines in this place? I brought them here. These are my machines. Please don't touch anything. Why do you need an antenna? I use the AR-1 as my RAIN prefects processing unit. RAIN prefects? That's your radio computer, right? Mm -hmm. And that antenna is its processing unit? Yes. You really don't know anything about radio computers, do you? I know a little. All right. Well, all radio computers perform operations up on air. So in order to gain more processing power, you need to invest in a good antenna. Wait, what's on air? On the front. The unified front of radio waves. Licensed and controlled by Lintel in the east in Selindic region. It's all around us. That's what on air means. Like love. And the air one is the good antenna? I guess it is. So far I've been quite satisfied with it. Martinez is an unstable region with bad coverage and the operation has been surprisingly stable. But it's not the cheapest one on the market. So I wouldn't recommend it for your regular red tape operations. Fraser 1000 is a foolproof line for civilians. Anyway, you should do some research before you decide to buy anything. Ask around, compare the prices. There are many milieus dedicated to that sort of thing. She liked telling me this. It calmed her nerves. What are you doing with your radio computer? I'm working. The machine seems almost alien with its pulsing core. The light casts in her face in a strange shadow. Working on what? Could you... Could you just... Shh... For a moment? Or get to the point. I really need to focus on something. <laughs> I feel like more people should say this to us. It's not just rudeness. It really is hard to concentrate on whatever she needs to do. And you're not helping. Isn't your RAM Prefect computer made exclusively for government use? So you do know something about computers. I told you. You're right. Prefect is used mostly by the government peeps. And you work for the government? No, I don't. So why do you have it? Because I needed something good for my investigation and RAM Civic is widely agreed to be below all standards. So I had to upgrade. Besides, owning a RAM Prefect isn't such a big deal anymore. No, actually, it is kind of a big deal. You don't see Reem prefects in every police department, for example. How did you get your hands on it? I know a friend of a friend who used to freelance for the coalition. I was actually aiming for the military grade Reim Rational series, but couldn't find one. Prefect is mainly based on the same technology as Reim Civic, so it's kind of a ripoff. But it does have better compatibility with newer antenna models, so I won't complain. What about those balls of water over there? They are connected to my rain prefect. Whatever you do, just please don't move them, okay? Thanks. Short and terse. There you have it. Whatever she's using them for, they're hers. Right, I'll try not to touch anything. Next question. Great. What are you doing in an abandoned church? You really like those questions, don't you? There's a hint of amusement in her tired eyes. I'm a police officer. It's my job to ask questions. I'm conducting scientific research here. You can't throw me out. She says to stand her ground. What research? I'm looking for the location of a two millimeter hole in the world. Wait, what? She's looking for a disruption in the radio waves. 
That's what her personal log said. The lieutenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. Is the hole connected to the data loss in your journal? Yes, that's what led me here. But I suspect it might be something a bit more complicated than that. A hole in the world, what does that mean exactly? Exactly. What does it mean? Up to now, it has been impossible to say what it is because it's impossible to measure nothing. What do you think it is? What qualities does nothing have? How do you measure something that does not exist? She's suddenly absorbed in the conversation, waiting for your answer. That's a little above your pay grade. At Ooh. The if we had put on our logic logic cap. Hold on a moment. Does it mean we are now living in a world that has holes in it? I don't know. Are we? That's what I'm trying to figure out here. But how do I figure it out? I can't even understand how we are talking about something that doesn't exist, let alone measure it. You measure it by its surroundings. By that which does exist. Which is what I've been trying to do. I've tried using hydro transducers to record the silence. To find out where it begins. But honestly, it's not progressing very well. She grows silent, staring at her circle of patience. It looks like some ancient ritual. Exactly. Can, what do you can we get that check again? Yes, we can. Grade at the moment. We can. I don't know. I'm not here for some. Okay. You miss her, but honestly, it's not progressing very well. We can co come back to this. Do you have any idea where this hole might be located? Somewhere underneath those roof beams, I assume. She looks up, eyes trying to pierce the pitch black heights above, but without my success. Only a faint crisscross of rafters can be made out from the dark. Most of the tower disappearing into the shade. Why there? There's this place at the back of the church. A place where all audible vibrations seem to decease. I've named it the Swallow. And the higher you go, the less you record. The Pillar of Silence? Are you sure it's not just an architectural quirk? Maybe. But it's oddly close to the physical coordinates of the data loss that led me to this place. This is where the Crabman lives. I know. You don't think Crabman might be somehow responsible no, here? No, I don't. You said that research isn't going well, why not? Because it's just trial and error, trying to locate the swallow, the exact point in space. And I don't have a... Y you know what? It would be really helpful if you could just stop talking and let me work. That's all I wanted to know about the scary 2mm hole in the world, for now. Great, thanks. How do you feel about the Nordic dance me Okay, you know what? Right, I'll let you work in peace now. For but a minute. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Shut wait. up! <laughs> this is not enough. I need another logic. Okay. Yes, what is it? The swallow, you mean? Somewhere... Oh, not this one. There's this... The pillar... Maybe. I know. No, I don't. Exactly. What do you... Easy. You measure it by the world around it. You measure it by collecting data on its surroundings, on that which exists. Exactly. Very true. I mean, That's she told what us. I've been aiming for. That's why I have those basins. I've tried using hydro transducers to record the silence. To find out where it begins. But honestly, it's not progressing very well. Great. Okay. Thanks. How do you feel about the Nordic dance music? What? I hate it. Well, I bet she hasn't even heard it. Have you even listened to it? Like, actually listened? Yeah, like all the time. My tent neighbors don't really ease up with their partying, do they? She pulls a face that looks absolutely skating. Maybe I'd have to be on drugs to get it, but to a sober mind it just sounds like uninspired rock whipping. No idea what it has to do with either dancing or music. Right, right, but how do you feel? about a club for an addict dance music. This is about those speed freaks in the tent, isn't it? I've got some news for you. It's not a nightclub they want to build here. What do they want to build then? Take a guess, why don't you? Betting zoo. I'm still convinced they want to establish a nightclub for an addict dance music. They said it's their dream. 
I can't believe they got you so easily. Go have another talk with those up-and-coming entrepreneurs, will you? Thanks. Good luck. I'm not coming in there. Right. Okay, I think I think we are done. But yeah, I'm going back. I mean, by we are done, I mean we are done with here for the moment. But yeah, we are going back to the tent. There's still so much in my mind that I need to do before finishing this night. It's not even funny. So this is church. I have to go where? Was it here? Was it here? It's here. The ice here is thick enough to walk on, by the way. Hello again. Hi again. So, uh, how are things going? About the church, I checked it out. And? What happened? I talked to the crab man. Oh man! Who is he? What did you think? He gave me this odd lecture on alcoholism before rambling on and on about mother's love. Really? Huh. Interesting. What's he doing in the church? Just preaching and praying, from the looks of it. No matter. Is he going to be a problem? Yeah, Noid is right. Let's get back to the point. What are we going to do about him? These guys will never catch him. You will never catch him. There's nothing to do. Actually, he told me he wouldn't mind the nightclub at all. I don't know, man. Swords for Isn't everyone! It feel like hey, a Draven. To you? A spooky guy climbing around Draven. with all the guests to try and have nice, friendly hyper time. Welcome Raiders. Welcome Draven. Let me mute this game so we can give you a proper shout out. Hey Random Bloke? Random Bloke. Hello Random Bloke. Pink Note, Draven and the cats have pounced. Hello cats. Hello everybody. That's Dwarf Fortress, right? Well, probably go to one of those. Uh oh. <laughs> Not sure what happened. Okay, we have Vile Fortress of Darkness has arrived. Um, let's get everybody in. <laughs> I I couldn't tell what happened at all. <laughs> but you you got you had a mighty beard, that's for sure. It's going very well. How is it going for you? What were you playing? Let's see. Grim Grimoire once more. What is that? What is that Grim Grimoire? Was it a first play? First play stream? Yeah, first look stream. So how did your stream go? Welcome Raiders. It's great to have you all here. I hope you you had a good time at Draven's stream. I'm sure you did. And I hope you continue to have some good time here. It's a new game coming out on Switch next week. It's a remaster of a PS2 game. Oh, interesting. I never heard. I don't know anything about console games. I'm so illiterate about console games. I haven't heard almost anything, honestly. So, did, did you enjoy it? So, if you haven't been to Draven's channel, he's a variety streamer. He does a lot of first looks like this, you know, new games. Also plays a lot of, you know, um, JRPGs and stuff. Mostly that I have witnessed him play are a lot of J JRPGs. Regardless, whatever he plays, it's really enjoyable, you know, calm stream, chill stream. I, I enjoy my time there, usually. 
when I can catch him, you know, streaming. He sometimes, you know, streams before I wake up, so I, I cannot always catch all of his streams, but whenever I can, I enjoy my time there. You know, highly recommend the streamer. Go go pay visits. Give a follow for sure. It was very good. 2D strategy tower defense. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Yeah, nice. Very cool. We are continuing this collision. For those who are new here, I'm Mitral. I play a lot of RPGs and adventure games. And um, we are we have been playing Disco Elysium for a while now. This is the sixth stream of it. I feel like it's going to go on forever. <laughs> I don't know. I, I can't. I won't complain if it goes on forever. It's such a great game. Really enjoying this game. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Welcome again. So let's continue. Thank you so much, Braven, for the raid. And welcome again, raiders. You're just going to have to live with the crap, man. I guess it's not a massive problem, now that I think of it. Everyone is welcome to dance till the morning light! Yeah! Maybe. Uh, I guess we'll figure something out. Okay, but what about the other spooker? The one in Grandma's clothes? Did you see her? I was using the mainframe when Suna, the former lead programmer of Fortis Accident, appeared. A programmer? That's odd. What was she like? Did you ask her about the nightclub? She did not like the Nordic Dance Club idea. What a pity! That's my favorite thing in the world! And she doesn't like it at all! He drops a hammer back into her toolbox. A shame. What can we do now? Do you see a way out of this jam? And into a laser lit future of dance and unity? UNITY! Dance! So right now we are trying to... These kids wanted me to... Help them build a nightclub in a church and there are two inhabitants of the church one is a programmer woman the other is a weird man i don't know they call him the crab man he he lives in the ceiling basically and a drug addict probably so we are trying to convince the inhabitants of the church to let them build their nightclub in there she made it very clear that she won't leave until her own project is finished and you can't just evict her no, I want to, Victor. We have to come up with a different solution. Look at you, honor man. No, Noid. He's right. Maybe we've approached it the wrong way after all. I'm sure there's a workaround. We can make a deal not to bother her. If that's okay with her, we only want to get in the church and spread the joy and ecstasy of music. The lines in the dark exist. Coexist. At least Crabman seems like an advanced being. He's hard. He'll understand. Yeah, he can do his climbing thing in the tower. And the programmer, does she like anodic dance music? She absolutely does not. Really, truly really despises it. Egghead cannot believe Bad what car. you just said. It makes him pump the jam a little slower for a moment. But then he returns to the full swing of it. No worries. We'll figure it out. If coexisting fails, you can always muscle her out, right? If it's all okay with you, what do you think? I refuse to throw her out, but I can try convincing her. Excellent. Good luck, my friend. That's it for now. Goodbye, Farna. officer. So the crab man, crab man was all right with the idea of the the nightclub. He said it wouldn't bother him. However, the programmer woman, he, she does some delicate word work, and she absolutely despises the dance music. So, she wasn't really keen on the idea of a nightclub where she works. But as a good policeman, we are going to convince her. Yes, what is it? What, what if you didn't have to leave? I talked to Andre, he wants to make it work. I don't want to make anything work. She replies, her expression on change. Hold on, you don't want to make anything work? Yes, anything. I don't want to make anything work. It's not the anodic dance music that's made her bitter. It's the failure of Fortress Accident. Are you bitter because your radio game project failed? That's right. If we couldn't get our Welkins to happen, I don't want anything to happen. Ever again. There's not a trace of irony in her voice. She means it. Okay, suggestion. We can get this. I have suggestion items. I probably have some minor suggestion on myself. Be 
We are already at 84%, I think. Which is pretty high. Alright, we are at 90 something now. Okay, we it's pretty much guaranteed, I would say. Yes, what is it? Only start to cooperate with the ravers. Easy. When her research is done, she can move out. Listen, about your research. You mentioned earlier that it's not going very well. Maybe I can help with something. What? No. I don't really need any help with the project. She looks up from her work disoriented. But if I could help you finish the project, then you wouldn't have to live in a church next to the Boom Boom anymore. Just think about it. She thinks about it. A glossy look in her eyes. A gust of wind brings more snow in from the broken gallery. It touches her hair. Alright. Bring me the game's offside copy from my old workspace, if you really want to help. It's stored on a filament memory and I'm unable to go and fetch it myself. Is this the filament you're looking for? Show her the production schedule. No, that's the production schedule you stole and accessed without authorization. I don't need it. In his defense, it was simply lying in the desk drawer of an abandoned cubicle. Okay, but still. So it is, it is the ice cream maker, the, the frozen one that we cannot open. What's an offside copy and what, why do you need it? It's a backup of my former employer's project, the radio game we were working on. It's stored on a filament memory, just like the one inside this radio computer. She points to the glowing cube inside the machine. She's making it extra simple for you. The backup itself is destroyed now, but I'm hoping to use what's left of it to pinpoint the exact location of the anomaly. You just have to go to my old workspace and get the filament. Hold on. If it's called an off-site copy, then why is it still on-site? If it's called an off-site copy, then why is it still on-site? Oh god, not this again. It is not on-site. It is in the basement. Perfectly safe and not connected to the front at all. Basement? Sounds like it's technically still on-site. And no, taking it outside the building wouldn't have protected it from the data loss. There's nothing wrong with keeping the backup in the basement. What happened was a freak accident that has nothing to do with how the backup was stored. We clear? She stares at you with pleading furious this eyes. This is clearly a painful topic for her. She must have had to explain herself numerous times. By your old workspace, do you mean the studio for this accident in the Doom commercial area? Yeah, that's the one. You can get in through the bookshop. You just have to do some explaining to the bookstore lady. Actually, I've already been inside the Doomed commercial area. Welcome back, QP. Good. Then you might know the giant ice bear fridge in the building's cellar. The filament is inside the fridge. It's not Just there. Just go and get it. It's not there. It's in the ice cream maker. And where exactly is the offside copy? In the giant ice bear fridge. I just told you. It has red glowing eyes. It's impossible to miss. You just need to get the offside copy from the ice bear. But... You've been to the fridge and it wasn't there. There was a note saying... I found the note from the ice bear, ice bear fridge. It said the offside copy had been moved to a safer place. Wait, a note from whom? Did it specify where they took the filament memory? It said the offside copy had been taken to a nearby ice cream maker. The note was signed by someone named Sulinslau. Hey, where Mama? Jawiza, of course. How are you today? Good I'll to see you. Lead. Sulisvov Jawiza. God, he was always so hell-bent on keeping the copy somewhere safe. And feature creep, and the valley of the heads. Like it would have made a difference. Methoda. The offside copy was perfectly safe when the data loss happened. That data loss was anomalous. She crosses her arms defiantly. And the heads. <laughs> I won't even get into the heads. We are Feeling still at the them. same night, by the way. It's still still AM. Find that copy it's still 2 AM. AM maker, what do I say? Thanks. We are exactly where we left off yesterday, time-wise. I've been exploring that area for the last almost five hours now. Valley of a thousand heads. You like the sound of that. Exactly. I found an ice cream maker, but couldn't get it open. It's completely frozen. This is getting ridiculous. Can't you just defrost it? Of course it? I can. That's or the idea I had. I don't know. I don't 
know about the ice That's exactly maker. the just, idea I had. So we are going to pull the plug and we are going to pass time and it's going to defrost. Then we are going to be able to open it, right? This solution. But she doesn't want to hand it over to you yet. It's a thing. Something she holds dear. Why can't you go and get the filament yourself? The bookstore lady hates me. Says I'm part of the curse. Whatever that means. Why does she think you are part of the curse? Because she's from Martinez, and people from Martinez have never ever seen a radio computer. She thinks it emits elemental evil. That's a bit biased, don't you think? No. She literally started praying for the higher powers when she first saw my reign, Civic. I'm not making this up. The lieutenant coughs like he's amused. Once I came in one morning, only to find that my terminal was full of those strange trinkets and amulets. Wards. <laughs> it looked like some seminine magic. All right, I'll go look for the offside couple. Thanks. She thinks for a moment, then reaches behind the radio computer and hands you what looks like an oversized pry bar. Yes. And here's my Falsund multi tool. You might need it to hack loose some ice. It opens everything. If you get me the offside copy, then you can keep the Kvalsund. It hurts a bit for her to say this. She's not too happy to be parting with the Kvalsund. The legendary Kvalsund multi-tool. This is Prybar version 2.0 for professionals Heck yeah. like you. Heck yes? yeah. Thanks. You might not even have to defrost it now. Kvalsund baby. Let's put this away. Oh, we, this might even be useful to open the unopenable door, maybe. All right, so I'm going to take a few minutes break, like up to five minutes or so, since I feel like perhaps I might have to go a little bit late later today. So I'm going to take a very short break. So while the break is happening, enjoy the clips. I'm also going to play a three minute ads to disable the pre-rolls for the next hour. So thank you so much for your patience with the ads and um, I will be back three, four minutes, maybe five minutes and we are going to continue. I will enter this room, not that. Okay, I changed my mind. <laughs> Why does the Bermuda Triangle have such a grudge against all those boats and planes? Oh, the Triangle <laughs> got a bad rap for that. Scientists say those accidents were caused by sudden explosive outbursts of methane gas. Speaking of which... Max no. Dog. What, Sam? I was going to point out that many phenomena long believed to have paranormal causes have actually turned out to be far more mundane in origin. Only one phenomenon's tremendous power continues to baffle scientists and defy rational explanation. What's that? <laughs> Choo-choo! Choo-choo! I don't know, muscle memory is important, right? You don't... I mean, yes, you need a brain, that is true. I cannot argue with that bargain, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I tried to argue with your logic, but I cannot. You are 100% right. <laughs> but it is true. It is true. <laughs> it protects me from taking too little damage. Maybe, maybe. You know, I never quite looked at it that way. You might be right. But you're probably wrong. That was my best bear impression. You are one of the patrons whom he helped, but you can't bring yourself to open the gates. Wow, that's loud and long. You don't want to give the labyrinth another chance. Another chance to take it. Really, game? Really? Uh-oh.
What? <laughs> Rubber tree. <laughs> I never knew this. I never knew this. This is the first time I see it. You know, I I doubted my information that Have you seen a young woman with a Latin guy? Maybe. I don't know. What do you mean maybe I don't know? I have um uh... Hey, are you all right? Oh no, he's dead. He behaved so strangely when I asked about Nico. I know he died. That's so strange. He must have been guilty of something. I'm back. We've got boosts. Let's go there. Kingmaker. Welcome back. Kingdom come. And tyranny. Thank you for the blue swarm. I appreciate it. And now we can continue. Alright, five hours. It took five hours to look around this area at night. And I know for a fact that there is more during the day. There are two interiors that we can't enter at night and there is at least one NPC that disappeared when it got to 2 a.m. Hey Scrap J. Welcome. It is indeed a great game. How are you today? Good to see you. I'm having an amazing time with this game. There's a surprising large amount of stuff you can do in a single night, one time start. Exactly, exactly. Most of the NPCs disappear, but most of the NPCs in this area did not disappear. We, we did stuff with the musician kids, with the church inhabitants, with, um, with the cryptozoologists. But now we got Officer, the flashlight, Fine. please. I always forget. Hello, hello. Uh, Let me know if I can help you with anything. Wait, I need recordings. A typical Martinez street light, the light pole. This would make all the old. Hope the game's treating you me see well. Rows of toy soldiers it's not. The rest of the trinket. It's not treating me well. It's it's rough and tough and unforgiving. Oh, timers. I forgot again. Okay. Let's fix the timers. What is this? 505 right now. When did I come back? Can't have been too long. Five or three, two minutes. Okay, fixed. Yeah, I'm just kidding. The game is amazing, but yeah, it, it can be tough to handle, tough to digest from time to time. It is very strong, very effective. Sometimes very funny, too. It is amazing, the reason. We've been going on for five hours. <laughs> yes. Today, we've been going on for five hours, for sure. Good to see you, 1-2-PC. How are you? This orange machine is buzzing like an old submarine. Try it to crack has. open the lid. You slip your fingers under the frozen lid, but the ice is too cold for you to get a good grip. Exactly, Scrapshay. Okay. Exactly. Handy here. Or... Didn't Sona give you a ah. perfect tool for this kind of job? I don't know the why I asked that. You should take it out. Equip the you are mad at yourself for missing this. Uh, don't worry about it. You know, maybe you should, you should not watch today's stream. Instead, go to the world in two days. I always upload my words to YouTube. Or maybe, I mean, feel free to watch, of course, if you want to start from this point. 
This orange machine is Every single three, you almost abandoned. You should get back to it. It has a hand-cranked ice cream churner on top hmm. and an electric freezer that appears to be frozen shut. So we can try this for sure, but r rather than that... Only the black cable is plugged into something close to... Very smart. Opening the lid should be much easier after the ice cream maker has defrosted. I think I will have to wait. This orange machine is dead still. It has a hand crank ice cream churner and an electric freezer. The ice around it slowly melting. I can try now, but I think... Actually, I have some, some good physical instrument items. I think it's going to get even easier after a few hours of defrosting. Yeah, you should go back to your playthrough, Scrub J. I, I bet it was something very different from your first playthrough. I, this is actually the second time I start this game. I have started playing this game when it was new, when it just came out. But I couldn't continue, I couldn't finish the game. I stopped. And only now I'm going back. After having forgotten like 90% of what I, what I played anyway. So it is almost completely new right now. And I'm happy that I will be finishing it this time. And after finishing it, I plan to restart immediately after, off stream this time, obviously, and play somewhat different, more optimized playthrough. Are we doing a bunch of drugs? No, this is a zero drug, zero alcohol, and only one instance of cigarette usage playthrough, and that's cigarettes we smoked for the quests to get the 30 experience otherwise i wouldn't do it either but other than that i'm i'm consuming no drugs or alcohol or any more cigarettes this orange machine is dead still it has a hand exactly it's radically different and an electric freezer the ice around it slowly melting that's right ice groans and howls under the strain of your giant gavalzund multi-tool until the lid cracks open, darkness lies inside, but you can faintly make out an object, intricate and foreign, left there for a sub-zero beauty sleep, a filament memory, with the words, off-site copy, written on its side. You gently lift take the, the filament memory from its frosty bedding, careful not to damage it. We should take it back to Miss Lucan and Kilda as soon as no, possible. I'm no, not no, sure no, how no, well no. unused filaments tolerate room temperatures. Oh, you might have a yes, point. Yes, but aren't you curious to know what's on the precious filament? There's a radio computer upstairs. You know what? I think I think Kim is right this time. I think Kim is right this time. This is already a damaged filament. So I think we actually have to go to her. As soon as possible. I'm going to do that. I am curious, but I'm going to bury that curiosity deep this time. Wait, what? Where are we stuck? Am I going to the right? Yes, I am. Yes, what is it? 
Yes? I brought you the filaments. Give her the offside cup. Thanks. Looks like it's the one. What's going to happen now? Now I'm going to print it out to see what's left of it. She's already inserted the filament into the radio computer's car, ready to close the door. What are you even hoping to find? I have a theory. Lintel was able to divine the location of the anomaly from this broken copy. I want to repeat their calculation, only this time with better equipment. Watch. What an intricate display of failure. The paper starts filling out with ink, soaking it in a gleaming blackness. Not a single line of data stands out. This is wrong. Machines shouldn't behave like that. It's the abyss staring back at you. Oh. Something's very wrong with that filament's memory. Sona doesn't reply, her hands running over the printout. She's looking for something, for her morning star, eyes scouring the millimeters. Here, I found it. Where? The enclosure. Hold on. She's behind the keyboard now, typing in some numbers that only she understands. The terminal beeps and the light inside starts passing like a glowing heart. Can I do anything? Shh. Just give me a second. I'm almost... She clocks up her typing speed. I've never witnessed a programmer work before. Done. I've got it. I found the location of the anomaly. There's joy in her voice as she bumps her fist into the air. You did it. You found the coordinates. I found the coordinates. She lets out a celebratory laugh. She's beaming. You can feel it in your heart. Great job. Oh my god, congratulations. Thank you. She yells back with a grin. So, where is it? Where is your 2mm hole in the world? There. In the swallow. She points at the other end of the church where a group of water balls forms a ritualistic arc. Think you can help me again? Arch. Sure. I need you to go move those water balls for me. I need to double check my calculations. You like moving things around. Moving things around is calming. It really is. Just walk over to the circle and follow my instructions. Move the third ball two centimeters to the left, and the fourth ball five centimeters to the right. This should do the trick. Sure, Thanks. no problem. Do I need visual calculus for this? I mean, it's already pretty high, right? It's awfully silent again, as if someone turned off the entire world outside those walls. Water inside the bowls stands still. Measurements have been marked down around the bowls, each chalk-drawn line representing a centimeter on the floor. Oh boy, this is going to be good. Move the third ball from the left two centimeters away. It moves like a ghost without creating a single trace of sound. Move the fourth ball from the left five centimeters to the right. Some water spills out of the bowl, no. wetting the floor. The lead programmer sends you an encouraging thumbs up from across the hall. I'm very surprised that there is no option to mess with these balls right now. Like do they either move them wrong or spill the water or something. I feel like this is a game that would give you that kind of a choice. I wouldn't do it. But you know, someone might. Yes, what is it? I moved the water balls to the right position, like just like you asked. What's next? Great. Everything should be aligned now. She stops biting into her chapped lip. Miss Know It All is hesitating. What's wrong? Yeah, uh, nothing. Now the only thing left to do is to unmute the headphones. If we got the location right, we should then be able to hear whatever sound this anomaly makes. Wait, why did you have your headphones on mute in the first place? Honestly? Honestly, I'm a little scared. Isn't it going to be just silence and nothing else? I don't know. That's what I'm scared of. I don't know. It could be anything. I mean, what sound does the nothing make? How can you even listen to something that doesn't exist? She turns to face you, the main phrase, the main frame throwing shadows on her chin. What if silence is only what surrounds it, but the swallow itself is... What? I don't know. I'm just scared. 
Maybe it's going to be something terrifying. M maybe it's going to tear the world apart. Like that evil ink that filled the printout, erasing coherence and meaning. You're right, we should be cautious. We don't know what we are dealing with here. Maybe. Maybe I'm just tired. It's scary, but we just have to face it. Yeah. You're right. Let's do it. She puts on her oversized headphones to press unmute on the keyboard. The lieutenant takes a step back. <laughs> and then nothing. Nothing happens. As Sona Loken and Kilda presses unmute on her keyboard. Nothing but silence. You can hear some small animal cross the floor in the chancel. It's that quiet in the sanctuary. Can you hear anything? She doesn't answer. Her eyes closed and brows knitted together in a state of deep focus. One hand cupping the headphone. Well? Damn it! She lets out a loud sigh before tearing off her headphones. Still, she's still avoiding your gaze. Come on, did you hear anything? No, of course not. Nothing happened. Let's move on. Despite her fear, she was hoping for something extraordinary to take place. What do you mean nothing happened? Did you find a swallow? No. She rests her face on her hands, massaging the forehead. No, my hypothesis was wrong. According to this, I should have heard something if I got the coordinates right. Like I said, silence is only what surrounds it. But this... This is just another failure. Silence sounds like silence. That's all it is. She raises her head, staring at all the machines that litter the church, cables coiling up on the floor like pests. You can try on the headphones. See if you can hear anything. But don't get your hopes Ooh, up. Perception. I need perception. This can't be it. You should have a listen. Yeah. Okay, let's try... 97% for a legendary check. Let's let's go, chats. Let's go. Everything disappears. You are draped in silence like a drowning man staring into his puny little headspace. And then the pressure changes. What does it mean? It feels like flying on an aerostatic. Or when your ears pop. Or like a subtle difference in the atmosphere. A weather change hanging in the air. What if the sound you're looking for is too low for you to hear it? Suna, what if we just need a better sound system? A better sound system? Alright, but where would we get one? Suddenly, a rhythmic beat permeates the walls, causing a small patch of decorative stucco to crumble onto the wooden floor. They should really allocate some renovation funds for this place. Murmurs the lieutenant, inspecting the damage done to the arabesques. No. What they really should do is shut down the disco men for disturbing neighborhood peace. Yes, but they could help with the speakers. You mean the speed freaks? She closes her eyes as more dance music invades the holy silence of the sanctuary. Of course, the speed freaks. They have a fantastic sound system. And you think they would help me? They would, if you wouldn't mind them moving in with you. I guess I could live through a week or two of peaceful coexistence. Great, I'll go talk to them then. Sure, let me know how it goes. Thanks, officer. You're welcome. Yes. One of the most important quests complete. Get the disco up and running. Well, not quite complete. Unfortunately, Hello again. we can't get this check. And I suspect that she will move in with them and we will lose the check. Oh well. Hi again. So, uh, how are things going? I'm here to talk about the church again. Yes? What's the deal? Good news. I managed to convince Suna. She is okay with you guys moving in, but on one condition. She needs your speakers for her projects. I could actually buy speakers from... from the lorry guy, right? We are grateful, Cotman. You're an augury of a new era of a Nordic dance music. The speed freak smiles, happier than he's ever been before. We are going to have to share space for a couple of weeks until she gets her research finished. That's fine. We can manage. He grins, excited. And you're still sure about keeping our little side business, right? 
Oh, you mean the illegal drug lab? There will be no shady shenanigans in the church, only love and anodic dance music. Fine, we can make do. It's going to take us a bit to move our stuff inside. A couple of hours, maybe. Come check back later. Let's get moving. Couple of hours. So that might not happen until next day. We might actually be done with day three right now. But let's check anyway. Never mind, we are not done. We are not done. There's still more to do this night. Hardcore! Yeah, it's all set up, man. Can you already imagine a thousand people in here? Ten thousand! He waves his hands in an unbelievably lame, non-hardcore manner. Ecstatic vibrations! Totally transcendent! And I've finished setting up the new compressor, too! He looks at the imposing black box in the corner that's churning out the sound. Now, the only thing left to do is the name of the club. Will you do the honors, detective? What do you propose as the name, Andre? The name? Everything I managed to come up with sounds just wrong. He appears to mull it over, one hand idly touching his hair. Andre's overthinking it, says the girl with the microphone. Yes, you should do it, detective. It would be good for the signs. Spit freak with yellow beads around his neck is looking at you. Lloyd's right. You've helped us so much. It's the right thing to do. Asal, what would you suggest as a name? How about something simple? Like the club? Too modern and Boring. too ironic. We don't want ironic. We want real. Real and true and beautiful. Like a morning after the rave. Egghead, you must have lots of ideas. Hardcore club. Yako Qatar! Yako Qatar! The place to be! Yako Qatar, the zone of ecological catastrophe. That's too morbid, egg. Got anything else? Hardcore! Hardcore to the mega! <laughs> no, it has to be bigger than hardcore. Yes, Harder it core. has to be even bigger than hardcore to the mega. Hardest core to, to the mega. No, it give me your two cents on the issue. The amnesia. What? Like the. I can't remember the name of the club, Amnesia. Amnesia! It's not Amnesia, guys. So now, do you have an opinion on this? I don't. Good. We have too many opinions anyway. Kim, how would you name the club? I wouldn't. I wouldn't build a club and I wouldn't name it either. You are so boring, An Kim. An underground place with no name? Sounds like something the crab man would say. We're not going with anything the crab man would say. Why not? The crab man has ideas, Asel. Ideas from another level of Exactly. Crab man, where are you? I don't care. I don't like the crab man and I don't like his ideas. His ideas are spooky. Next, please. Yeah, clearly, we have to name the club Disco Elysium. Oh, we What's got the, the Disco Elysium option. No truce with the Furies. Reversal West. But yeah, we are going with Disco Elysium. No way we are going with anything else. Like that DeLorean word for the world, you mean? Elysium. But Disco Elysium? Isn't it wacky? Disco's kind of gone, isn't it? Forgot. The past is the future, but the future is dead. Heck yeah. No, it's beautiful. Beautiful and brave. Like we want it to be. And short. And memorable. It's settled then. Everyone welcome to Disco Elysium. Hey. A light beam washes over the dance floor, bathing it, bathing it in the wild blue. Andre breaks into frenzied dance-like motion to celebrate the name. Someone turns up the beat. What are you doing, Andre? I'm dancing! He performs yet another strange pattern of moves, but it doesn't look very cool or modern. Honestly, it doesn't. It looks kind of lame. That soft core gyrating is supposed to be dancing? We should talk about it. We should talk about your so called dancing. Yes, my man! He jumps up and down with glee, his moves punctuated by the strobe of 
stroboscopic flash of the club lights. Talk? What is there to talk about if you can express yourself with moves? Okay. Dance fewer incoming, chats. Dance fewer incoming. Goodbye, officer. Let's prepare for the dance fewer. Let me put on my dancing clothes on. What the heck? I really have nothing for Sawafe? Are you serious? I have and I have them on and okay, this is terrible. Maybe I put some points in there because I want to dance. Is it worth putting points in? Let's put one point. Okay, why is this so difficult? Oh, hey man, it's good to see you. I've been meaning to ask you, what's with the hair? It's to express my individuality. Is that a bald spot? It's hard to tell for sure, with the fused together spikes. But it looks like he's balding. Or is it because you're balding? Or because I'm balding, yes. I want to fuse the remains of my hair together before it leaves me. I want to show my hair. I don't give a fuck how old you think I am. I'm 20. How old are you, Andre? Not 20. Is it important for you to be an individual? Of course it is. Otherwise, I'd just be another poor guy with no education and no money. General issue, man. Now I'm all that, and I have radical spikes. Fair enough. Maybe it was a bad idea. Anyway. One in four. Goodbye, officer. One in four. Oh, hey, man. It's good to see you. You close your eyes and dream of the shapes your body should form to bring this strange music into life. For now, such ferocity of motion is beyond you. But just imagine the moves you could pull. I know. To this futuristic beat. Goodbye, officer. I know. One more point. It is worth it, isn't it? Definitely worth it. Oh, hey, man. It's good to see you. You close your eyes yes. and vacate your skull. Leaving your brain to wonder, where did that little fluttering light go? Total darkness. You sink down the darkest fathoms of your own personal deep. Vertebrate by vertebrate. Through the unformed skulls of your mind. It's a spine, not mine. Here it will begin. Where did the church go? Who fucking cares? Good. No, not good. Orgasmy. Where did the music go? Oh, don't worry. The music's still there. It's you who is gone. Concentrate on hearing. Nothing. Just the immaculate silence of your spinal fluid. Electrifying. I knew this would be so much more than just dancing. I knew it. And it's so great. What was that about unformed skulls? I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Oh, we are hearing the spinal cord for the first time. Your spine is an unformed skull ready to pop up and replace the old one. Like shark teeth. The one you're currently in has a little brain forming in it, waiting for its turn to rule the world. Oh my god, is that true? Yes, it's all true in the spinal cord. What do you want? From what I can see, it's about to bust a move. Bust a move. Foolhardy. Do you even know what's happening on the surface? Maybe a thousand years have passed. Or maybe you started spazzing out like 
two seconds ago. With your eyes still closed, Be even the first healed. thing you feel all the way back in the pivoting darkness of your own torso is warmth. You have become a triumph of rhythmoplastics, somewhere in a smelly wooden church on the coast of Revachon. The wounds from the war you waged on your body are healing, twist by twist, turn by turn. Open your eyes and dance like you never danced before. You have become a flawless <laughs> interlocking mechanism, a flesh and bone approximation of the throb coming from the speaker setup of the one called Eggheads. Entirely, rigidly, imbecile, without pity or fear. <laughs> that hat and the plastic bag. It's perfect. Perfect. Look at those moves. Free from self-awareness, no deliberation, only, and I mean only, execution. Oh my god! No way! Speed freaks would be leaders that stand slack jawed in this flip at the hard corners on display. He whispers to himself, no way. Yes way. With his reel-to-reel -reel mixer blasting the anthem of a future that will never come. The young man observes your moves for a second. Then blasts into the same hideous pattern, yelling. He throws a screwdriver and a bunch of drill chucks into the corner and explodes into dance. What he lacks in sharpness, he more than makes up for in violent enthusiasm. Turn to Asal. What are you doing? The young woman lifts her headphones up slightly and raises her chin, looking at you expectantly. Asil, aren't you going to dance? No, recording. She turns to Suna, then back at you. She briskly shakes her head and puts her headphones back on. The lead programmer throws the other young woman a knowing glance before turning her attention back to her own work. She's still at her mainframe, pressing buttons reading printouts but she started nodding her head along to the music dance pointed andre it is the law the young man immediately bounces up and down then assumes the same dance pattern embellishing it with some sort of waving motion okay this <laughs> what is kim get in here call for the lieutenant to join you what's going on here uh, delinquent the lieutenant looks at you and the speed freaks grinding around in the church, a group of unhinged lunatics. You know, he doesn't seem to be amused. Do we, do we want to push him? This is the first time that I heard or heard him raise his voice. He looks genuinely annoyed. On second thought, maybe I don't need to involve the lieutenant in this pioneering dance off. Well, maybe. I said get in here and dance. The lieutenant squeezes the bridge of his nose. The light reflects off his glasses, giving him the appearance of a surgeon in the middle of a tense procedure. He's having trouble adjusting to the new reality before him. What's happening? The lieutenant is forced to yell over the futuristic music blasting from the speakers. I'm not doing anything. The music made up its made its wind up a long time ago. I'm just implementing. Ooh, like the innocence. It's an inevitability. 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 It's not a decision. <laughs> Are we the next innocence? Good for you. Rock on then. Hey, I called you to dance. What? Ooh. In a ability. It's a ability, guys. No, this is. Oh, come on. We, we don't want to do this. We don't want to do this. 
It's a red check. We are going to fail. He's going to be... No. Nothing. It was nothing. We are not doing this. I really want to do this though. I really want to do this and succeed just to see what happens. No, we are not doing nothing. It was nothing. The lieutenant taps his foot and looks at his wristwatch. He doesn't seem pleased with this waste of time. Is there anything more I can do? I want to break the limits. The dynamic motion of your flailing body is bordering on the extreme. You're going off the charts. You feel as if turning on the hyperdrive would be a point of no return. Feels almost melancholy. Are you sure you have the entire posse along for this? Together, where are you? Here we go again! Hardcore fills the air! The sound above my head! Another red check with shivers this time. Turn on the hyperdrive. I should have put on shivers equipment too. Well, we are trying this one. On the coast yes. of the Martinez Inlet, in a small weather-beaten stave church built 380 years ago by settlers from the Occident, most likely to guard against an anomaly at its center, an officer of the RCM is contorting his body into idiotically rigid shapes as he invents the future of dance music. It's the hardest anyone has ever danced. What is this strange feeling I keep having this cold even now? I am La Revachelier. Wait, what's happening? I am the city. What do you mean you are the city? I am a fragment of the world spirit, the genius Loki of Revachel. My heart is the wind corridor. The bottom of my air is red. I have a hundred thousand luminous arms. Come morning. I carry industrial dust and let it settle on tree leaves. I shake the dust from those leaves and onto your coat. I've seen you. I've seen you. I've seen you with her. And I've seen you without her. I've seen you on the crescent of the hill. How are you talking to me? The modulations of my voice are noted down with thermometers and barometers. You feel me in your nostrils, on the little hairs on the back of your neck. I also reside in your lungs and vestigial organs. Everywhere, there is space. But who am I? Why are you talking to me? You are an officer of the citizens' militia. Jean yeah, I know, I know where, Mamo. When you wear your coat, you wear my soul. But it's better to succeed. You move through my streets freely, in motor carriages and on foot. You have access to the hidden places. You also circulate among those who are hidden. I need you. You can keep me on this earth. Be vigilant. I love you. An officer of the RCM is lying on the floor of a small church oh. with his eyes rolled back and his tongue lolling out. Several others are standing around him. He slowly comes to. Had a good rest there? I spoke to the city of Revachal. Fuck yeah! I bet you did. Those were some advanced moves, man. That's all great, but we should really get going. We spent enough time doing aerobic exercise for today. Get up. You might be imagining it, but it feels like Egghead turned the volume down. Such is his respect. Man. Or maybe we are going... Now! Now, man! Now! This would be leader status with excitement. Now imagine if we could do that, right? But with like a thousand people! End of human development. Mission complete. I wouldn't go that far. I would! You're absolutely beat. Muscles relaxed and feet like noodles underneath. That's it for now. Goodbye, officer. So what would happen if I failed the shivers check, Vera Mama? Yeah, I passed it now, so I don't mind hearing about it. 
All right. Let's talk to the others. She's whistling a melody. Her trusty contact mic attached to a wooden pulpit. At the sound of your footsteps, she stops what she was doing and turns to you. Why does that trill sound familiar? Hey there. I've been recording some new audio from all these beams and rafters. The sounds traveling through the wood are pretty cool. Creaks and stuff. Like you're underwater, you know? But like, underwater inside a tree. But that's not really what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to thank you instead. What for? For getting me and my friends in here. And we even found some new associates, such as they are. How's everyone doing? Good, I think. Lloyd is getting a read on the place. I think he finds the carpentry very impressive. Andre's been setting up the compressor and dancing. Egghead's been keeping the party up. He's got the stage under control. Sauna, the programmer. Oh, we still have this She's check. doing whatever she does behind that radio computer of hers. She doesn't talk to us much. And the crab man hasn't shown himself, thank God. Now, can you tell me about your associates? Sure. You helped us out. I can repay the favour. What do you want to know? Tell me about Suna. Ah, oh, she's a bit odd, I have to say. Doesn't talk much. I'm not really sure how to vibe with her, you know? Seems like she's not in a very good mood most of the time. But earlier today, she told me about Welkins. And she seemed oddly happy, like she had some idea with those little creatures. Some artistic idea. I didn't really listen, I was busy with my mic. What about Tiago? Oh, the crab man. Still gives me the creeps the way he moves. But he doesn't actually come down that much, just climbs around the rafters. I just try to stay away from the crab man. But he talks to Noid. They seem to have some thing going on. Oh, he talks to Noid? What for? Beats me. Noid said they get along somehow. They're both crazy enough, I guess. What does he do up there? Who knows? He doesn't really answer our questions, see? Not that it's easy to ask them. What are we supposed to do? Yell up at the tower? Thanks about the others. Who do you want to know about? Tell me about Andre. Andre? He's a cool guy. Doesn't really come off as one, but he is. To me, at least. She rubs her sides, but not from cold. Her shoulders are relaxed. She must have taken a hit, or she's on an upswing. He takes care of shit. Sorry. I mean, he's got a vision. For what life should be, you know? He tries to push things until everything falls into place. He's an organizer. What has he organized? Nothing. But then again, there's nothing to organize around here either. He really wants this church thing to work. Must have taken it as a sign when he found it abandoned like that. Said it was an augury. I don't know where he got that from. Andre's not super intelligent. I've never seen him so psyched about anything though. And he's often psyched. Looks sort of desperate, like it's his last chance or something. Or maybe he was just high. I mean, not that he does drugs, just Hi, you know. <laughs> Relax, girl. We are police officers, but we are corrupt. Rots into the marrow. You can tell us about drugs and shit. I don't give a fuck. No. On life? Uh, yes. Anyway. Is Andre your boyfriend? Yes. Tell me about the others. Who do you want to know about? Tell me about Noid. He's a four-burger, I guess. Like the rest of us. Okay. Maybe not Egg. I don't know about him, but... Noid and the rest oh, are okay. from Fulberg. Making the pilgrimage up north to visit the Palisium. Ah, oh, I see. Yeah, we we failed that check, I think, with Joyce. And did the alcohol side quests. I think that's what you mean, I'm not sure. Wanting to succeed on any specific red check only makes you avoid content that you might never see as a result. Well, it also might open up, open up things, right? You also don't want to always fail red checks because the way you are putting it right now makes it feel like red checks always make you skip content. I mean, it is, it is the thing about games like this. There are more than one path when you take a path, you avoid the others. Feeling red checks can also lead to lack of content. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. 
He's real hardcore about the lifestyle. What does he do? What do you mean do? Like for a living? Yes. He's a carpenter, trained and all. He's very good, he just doesn't have the mindset to work like that. In a shop somewhere. What kind of mindset is that? He abides by the hardcore, sir. You would have to ask him yourself. And you? Sir, I abide by the law. She gives you a switchblade smile. What is this pilgrimage you are talking about? It's just something poor Fulberg kids do every spring. To pass the time, we walk the entire length of Boogie Street, up to Jamrock. Or as much as possible. Why wouldn't it be? I don't know, man. Have you been down Boogie Street? It's a little bewildering. Let's say I haven't been down to Boogie Street. Okay. Then you should go and take a look, I guess. Boogie Street is cool. It's got a lot of immigrants and all kinds of different people. I might just do that if I make it there alive. Yeah. Tell me about the others. Who do you want to know about? What's the deal with Egg Egghead? What do you mean? What does he think he's doing when he yells all that stuff? Oh, that. He's the party boy. He told me as much, but what exactly is a party boy? Anodic music doesn't really do vocals in the traditional sense. Vocals are thought of as rock. That's to say they're a bit backward. No offense if you like rock music though. Rock music's called by me. I am kind of offended right now, Asel. Pachu, pachu, swish. Your credentials as the resident future man of Revachon are being questioned. Show her your hip with the times. Grace. Goddamn right. Rock music is the coolest. Rock music forever. Yes. Forever. Anyway, even if you don't have vocals, you still need someone to say something every now and then, right? To urge things on. That's where the party boy comes in. He basically just stands on the stage and dances and yells how awesome everything is. It's very catchy. I understand. People are usually afraid to do things if others aren't already doing them. Dancing makes you dance, like sneezing makes you Soft sneeze, car. or yawning makes you... Uh... Anyway. He looks around a little embarrassed of the enthusiasm of his interjection. Where is he from? How long has he been with you guys? Actually, we don't know where he's from. Or who he is, really. One time we were out partying somewhere in Backwater Forberg. Or maybe even Coal City. I can't remember. Maybe it was Coal City. Egg was yelling along to some jam someone was spinning. All night long. Just kept yelling until he didn't have a shred of voice left. When the sun came up over the mines. There were mines? Yeah. It was in Coal City. She nods. Egg came with us. He made this wheezing puppy dog sound all the way back. Couldn't even speak. It was definitely Coal City. Because it took us two days to walk back to the fore. He just wheezed the whole way. We never really asked why he came with us. Or who he was. I think his name is Jermaine. People are sweet. She says quietly. You can see it must have been a great night. The memory causes her to go silent for a moment or two. Who do you want to know about? Actually, do tell me about yourself. Me? Again? Yes, I forgot. Tell me about yourself. I told you. I'm a silver bird. There's that phrase again. Really reminds you of... What does that mean? Something. It means I don't answer questions about myself. But I'm a police officer. You have to answer me. Is there a law that would stop me from lying, though? That would depend on the circumstances. Fair enough. Thank you. Thank you. Some other questions. Sure. Cash the silver bird. Reaction speed. Do we have anything for reaction speed? I am nothing for reaction speed. Hardcock. The silver bird has already flown away. I will catch it later. We are trying again. Hardcock. O pasaro yes. behind. It flutters by your ear. It's what the Zemoyaki, the Gradian community in Rivershore, Call a person who never breaks under interrogation. It's an organized crime term. Or Pasara de Ainz, or something like that. Excuse me? She casually brushes her hair through her. brushes her hand through her hair. She's attempting to remain calm, 
but the phrase made her flinch. I remember now. It's a zem zemliaki term for someone who won't break under questioning. An organized crime term. What do you mean? The silver bird. All right. My father was a zemliaki. He died years ago. He was a bad man. Not a lot of good things to say about him and what he did. He bought the family a huge house, so we got to live, at least temporarily, in a giant castle in Jamrock. And then he died. What about next? What do you think? The competition came and took everything away. It was like in a war zone. She's grinding her teeth. So after his death, we had nothing left. And we were in danger. My mother had to change her name. Mine too. We left it all behind. Are you sure about that? What about this drug lab plan? It was a stupid idea. And I'm still disappointed I came up with it. Aren't there any local authorities who might look down on such activities? I took that into account. Of course. Coordinated the operation with the debardeurs. Else they might get... unhappy. So what you're saying is Eduardo tries this? Not in person, but I'll let him know. He can't do anything without the fat ones getting wind. It wasn't too difficult to convince him, really. It's a good thing you ended that mess, though. I felt I was turning dad-wise into a corrupt business person. Unpleasant. Come on, this is all fine. But you don't have anything on Everard now. That's not how these things work. Everard can just flat out deny and then we would cause problem for this girl also, right? I mean, we can add it to the list, we don't have to do the quest, or we can just see how it leads and reload. I will add it. We should confront Everard about this, maybe we can manipulate him using the information. No, I don't think it would lead anywhere with Everard. I, of, of course, He's obviously. Just going to deny it. Clearly. Yeah. Have you seen Everard? Clearly, but still. Let me check this guy again. Oh, they got a goodbye, officer. You got us in, cop. I can't believe you got us in. He looks around the hall, examining the carpentry. With wonder in his sharp eyes. Between you and me, I don't know if you've noticed this about me. I'm a little suspicious of authority, but you, you really came through for the hardcore underground. Yes, you really came through for the hardcore underground. <laughs> How come? He spreads his arms, looking around at the speed freak setting up shop. The would be leader is cutting some futuristic shapes on the floor, sweating profusely. A cell using her contact mic to listen to a tree underwater. The one with the large head is blasting the dance track on repeat, while the stained glass window behind him is rattling from the base. Hmm. Better here than in that tent. It wasn't safe. Okay. The lieutenant keeps it laconic. Noid, what do you think about the church? It's a miracle of carpentry. Dead bodies carved into total shapes. Now it can be something more. You say that as a carpenter yourself? I don't say much anything as a carpenter anymore. They tried to make me into a reckoner and a leveller. Made me a bit manic, you know. I regret the time I dedicated to that profession. And that worker collective. I say things more as a member of the hardcore side dance community these days. You're not going to ask me how I knew. Why? You're a cop. I carry carpentry tools. How old do you think this church is? Over 300 years? That's right. The first settlers built it, plus six more like it, on the coast here, was one of the first things they did. Must have been really scared of something, but I understand. Alone on an uninhabited archipelago, Forced to face themselves and nature. Pre-industrial quantities of solitude. The sea. Perhaps something more... Fundamental. I would want to build a safe place for myself and my own as well. His voice echoes in the wooden cavern of the church. What style is this church building? A cop who's in the building critique. Okay then. This is folk DeLoreanism. Lawmonger, huh? It's a subset of early DeLorean architecture. I'm not just a cop, I'm an art cop. Art of core. He nods respectfully. Ap he nods appreciatively. Okay, what is DeLorean architecture like? Total. Everything between an ancient concrete cathedral and a glass cube 
is DeLoreanism. This is just an homespun version of it. Folksy stuff. Early mass production. They made thousands like this. Does that help you out? What did the DeLorean building look like? Like that woman there. Vertical, thin, white. A false image of grandeur. The source of the system is up there. You're at the bottom. They really dug that power vertical. Like to show off large and intricate structures. Arches, spires. Put you down with them. They were really into painting everything white too. Virginal shit, you know. Marriage shit. Virtue and tyranny. Hey, marriage is great. Marriage is sacred. Hmm. This church isn't painted white as far as I can tell. Stands to reason it used to be white on the outside. Before the sea wind took all the paint off. Year after year. Flake after flake, whitewashed clean, then covered in green moss. It was probably white and gold with light red flower motives. Part of you, assumed to be lost to nerve damage, knows is, this style to be Ubi DeLoreanism. Is, is that such a thing as Ubi DeLoreanism or did I just make that up? Good catch, Art Cop. The herdsman of the Ubi Sun. Islands come here on the first boat. Their flowery version of DeLoreanism could be what we're standing in. What did you mean by dead bodies? Dead bodies are perennial plants. Sigma functions have left this place. It's a good thing we came along. The spiritual collapse has been total. Spiritual collapse? I saw some piglets suckling their dead mother. Have you heard this one, cop man? After a short while, they shuddered and went away. They had sensed that she could no longer see them and that she wasn't like them anymore. What they loved in their mother weren't her body, but whatever it was that made her body live. End of quote. This is an high quality carcass. The power of anodic beats and hard base is needed to reanimate it. First, where is that quote from? A Sarai's man who lived a long time ago, an ancient hardcore brother. What you're saying is you're not a big fan of the Innocentric system. Hmm. What you're saying is religion has stopped being hardcore. Let's go with a the first one. A 3,000 year old tyrannical regime of history. Built and maintained by hundreds of generations of self-appointed intellectuals. It's false core. <laughs> false core. The way he says it, the force in false core is invested with 20 kilotons of disgust. But you said that the ecclesiastes were all about law and hardcore before, remember? I only said unity. One word. Figures of authority always misquote you. He points to his friends. Andre doesn't care about the ecclesiastes. He just wants the operation to run smoothly. And Egg is a demi-beast. You shouldn't listen to what people say, you should listen to what they are. The kid is teaching us. I even agreed with you about the Ecclesiastes being okay with this. But were you wrong? The founding party is okay with everything. Look around. They don't have enough love for the human crew to oppose anything anymore. We're on our own. And you propose dance music will supplant the system? Anodic dance music. Regular dance music wasn't hard enough. And yes, I do. How do you like the glasswork? Point to the stained glass window. I don't. Fuck are giving me the evil eye. I'm getting some real negative vibrations from her too. Hmm, no. We don't want to say this or this. You want to get inside the church and now you don't like the stained glass window? I didn't know it was in here. We have to get rid of it. Dismantle it. Can't dance with a giant mass murderer looking at you. Ooh. Not a good look for the club. Mellow man, mellow. No one's a mass murderer. This is a house of love. Mass murder on the floor. <laughs> hmm. But she's the innocence of humanism. Humanism seems to be a pretty big deal around here. Humanism leads to eating sugar and pigs. Humanism was invented to mass produce billions of humans. Billions of humans can mass produce hundreds of billions of pigs. 
Okay, that is weird. And many, many more tons of sugar. She liked games. Her legacy, the thing we're living, isn't real life. It's a strategy for some kind of victory against a long dead opponent. But, yo, I'm only annoyed. What do I know? But she's pretty. She invented the beauty you're feeling. She and her glass cutters and iconographers. You set the standard, all right. Then you meet it. It's effective like that. But it is also very soft of core. That so-called beauty of hers. He's sensing bad soft core. It's terrifying. Hmm. You may be onto something, copper man. She's got those mass murdering hips. I don't want to say this or this. I do feel like there's something terrifying about her. There is. She is a party repellent and must be taken down before we can begin partying in here. Keep it. Keep the beautiful sharp shards. Keep her long face and her hair. The speed freak's eyes narrow with suspicion as if he's looking at a man possessed. It's not coming down. People are going to love it. It'll be like our thing. Plus it keeps the cold and the rain out. Isn't she supposed to be an embodiment of the world spirit? The world spirit does not have a body. It has organs. Ardcore is an organ of the world spirit. He raises his left hand. This Arno Van Eyck track is an organ. The carpentry and glass cutting that built this ass are also organs. She's a thief if you ask me. An organ thief. All innocences are. Would you say she was, you know, human? <laughs> I like this question, cop man. She did not live the life of a human. She lived like someone who's playing a game. The life of an operator. That's not the life that humans live. She was adored. Humans aren't. I don't know about you, but they hate me. And they do not think I'm innocent or some shit like that. Yeah, they had this too. Point yourself. Are we going to get moral oh. damage? They loved her. No, they don't. put all their love in her and forgot all about the rest of us. Young man lets go of the suspenders and they hit his chest with a slap. Yeah, I'm done talking about her. I don't want to think about her anymore. What a strange choice of words. Caustic. Overflowing with negativity. That can't be healthy. What's happening here? Why do you keep <laughs> coming just back took to damage. this window? He just took damage. So it was slightly delayed. I don't know. Well, you shouldn't. You shouldn't come back to this anymore. Stop talking about it, please. Let's talk about the glasswork again. I've been thinking about her. Murderer. Why? All right, I'm okay. done. Okay. How are you settling in? Hard to say, cop man. Signs in here are distinctly wild. Gonna take a while before everything's properly synced. I did get to talk to the crab man, though. You mean Tiago? Anyway, he's been giving me kind of a psychic rundown of this place. Dude's seen some crazy shit, but he's actually a lot like us. You mean all his mother's love stuff isn't too spooky for you? Have you been listening to what Egg's been saying? Love is hardcore, man. And the mother's love is the hardest core of all. The man picks up on stuff. And he knows a lot about the church. I got a lot to learn from him. Good thing you didn't squash him. I want right back. to see you in a bit, Parrot. I don't think we are ending in time soon, honestly. <laughs> I want to talk some more about this place. Dead body, spirit entered. What is there to talk of? Let's talk about something sure. else. What did Tiago tell you about the church? The crab man's been lurking here for a while. He's experienced things. Things that give off bad signs. As far as we can tell, the Ubis built this place about 320 years ago as a sarcophagus. Do you mean there are dead bodies here? Not like a literal sarcophagus. I'm just being metaphorical. What's it for? Encasement, confinement, of something they were afraid of. Something new and unheard of on the Isola. 
I think that's what the crab man is experiencing when he climbs around upstairs. Like, this is some old world shit the Ubies had heard about. I thought the best way to deal with it was to build a church surrounding it to contain it. I don't get it. Contain what exactly? I don't know. And it's not something they properly understood either. Or it does. But it's what this sonar person is looking for and trying to measure. He now stores the woman. It will be fruitless though. She won't be able to measure it. People like that always want to measure everything. All those things they really can't. What makes you think Suna is going to fail? Seems to be the trend around here, doesn't it? You can't measure shit like this. It's not like substance. I found the Doom commercial area in Martinez proper. Maybe it's the same thing the Doobies were trying to contain. Maybe it's the same thing the Doobies were trying to contain. Like a concentric ring spreading out. The struggling villages. And that is what caused the communards to fail in defending the beachhead. Yeah, a lot of failure has gone down around here. You think there's any merit to the theory? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. It's not a thing we can answer, cop man. Even I have limits. I'm a limited side person. Well, if it's without substance, I guess there's nothing to worry about. Maybe you can figure things out, cop man. I think we got on a good level here. The signs are syncing up well. Why are you so suspicious about everything? Suspicious people are esoteric people. We don't go around spilling everything to Johnny Law. They don't call me Noid for nothing. Oh, no ID? Is it? It took us setting out for this whole enterprise to get our signs synced. Why are you called Noid anyway? It's short for paranoid. Ah, it's paranoid. May I ask why? What good is being suspicious? A reasonable question. Say I get hurt, I want to make sure it never happens again. So I analyze the situation. Exercise caution. Caution is suspicion. What are you suspicious of? Uh, it'd be easier to list stuff I'm not suspicious of. I'm not suspicious of sand and color. Mechanics and chemistry also have a trueness about them. Most anything else deceives. Wants to steal your life away. And what are the most suspicious things? I don't have a top 10 list of things I'm most suspicious of. But if I had one, the left-right complex would be number one. Number two would be their sole accomplishment. The pig wheat paradigm. What's he talking about? Tell me more about the left-right business. I prefer not to. Both ask the wrong questions. Any spark of light from either one is accidental. Their combined movement's only concern is producing enough pig and wheat for everyone. The end goal of humanity. The original mistake was assuming that words have more being than bodies. That's what led us astray. Far from our true lives, but we may yet find a way back. Whatever this true life is, you feel it's the real centerpiece of this mythology. What's suspicious about the production of pork and wheat? It's our only shit. We should make better use of not being animals or cereal grain ourselves. What's bad about cereal, cereal grain? Having enough food could be a precursor for greater things. Yes, having food is means to an end. But the left never talks about the end, only the means. Caps are likewise suckers, constantly sleepless in worry. Well, that was certainly stimulating. I want to ask you about something else now. His eyes flicker. You mentioned true life. What would that be like? The life is true if it's free from fear. An internal division among oneself. And others, mankind has seeds of greatness in it. A germinal will come, a return to trueness. It will be hardcore. How would you go about returning to this true life? Beats and bright lights to shatter falsehoods. Nerve impulses for the collective body. We are very much alike in basic structure. An odd enough beat would awaken everyone to a truer calling. In unity. Just like that. The speed freak is right in your face. His eyes burning. His comrades look on worriedly. The young man is dead serious about this. So you're advocating a noise-based society. 
Many non-Occidental cultures share a beat at their art. Thus, they are closer to true, hardcore life. There's just never been enough of them. And they had to rely on some extremely basic percussion. You keep mentioning hardcore, what does it mean to you? Utmost dedication. Thoughts from the spinal cord. It's a potent superlative as well. Egghead usually has a better concept of the hardcore. He just really likes saying hardcore. Hardcore! His friend shouts from behind his mix table with a smile surpassing your own in wideness, a total moon face, and eyes full of naive wonderment. That was vague, dedication, something else super little. Maybe you're being too specific about it. Try consulting with your spinal cord, like before, when you pulled those primal dance moves. How do you know about it? I'm sure the world was glad to see him again after all that time. Let's change the subject. Oh yeah, sure thing. <laughs> 92% for a godly conceptualization check. This is what we excel, chat. This is what we excel at. This is what we are. Internalize the hardcore aesthetic. Don't just nod along, really feel it. Dedicated, hyperactive, unified. You will have to add something of your own to understand this list of loosely formed qualities called hardcore. You need your own entry. Make it. Jumping around as this sort of music requires, is actually a taxing physical activity and should be dignified with a sports suit. Overwhelm them with moves. Try Ooh. to have the most moves going on. We got a passive Savoir Fair success, legendary success as well. Challenging success by logic jumping around as the sort of music requires is actually taxing physical ability. Should be dignified with the sport. I don't I don't think logic makes any sense here. Dedicated, hyperactive, unified. You will have to add something of your own to understand this list of those deformed qualities called hardcore. So we have, we want to add another thing to the list of hardcore stuff. Or round down with moves. Hmm. Hard people, hard republic, hard sell, hard party, hard riot, hard government, core membership, core secretary, core teaching, core fighters. Long live the world that gave shape to hardcore to complete itself, a true heir to DeLorean values, three and a half centuries, and the gift still keeps on giving. I don't think he will appreciate this. I've got the money, I've got the place, you've got the figure, you've got the face. Let's get together, we are jumping all over the world. Hmm. I'm thinking of wearing sports apparel as my hardcore get up to maximize the mobility of limbs. I don't think so. I don't think logic makes sense. Well, in this game, thinking that logic doesn't make any sense makes a lot of sense sometimes. I don't seem to have anything to add to the car. Thinking of cornering the moves of the mic. What do we choose? This is logic's option. This is Savoir Fair option. I think. And these three come by default. I kind of like this one. I've got the money, I've got the place, you've got the figure, you've got the face. Let's get together. We are jumping all over the world. Let's let's try this. Hardcore aesthetic. Conceptualization jumping all over the world. So what what is this? <laughs> what grammar? Not only have you internalized the hardcore aesthetic, you also contributed to it. How harder core could you possibly become? Low core people come around you to correct your typos. It's hardcore here, hardcore there. Hardcore core in a third instance. What's going on? Those aren't typos, man. That's how hardcore hardness works. If you don't know hardcore from our happy hardcore, what the fuck are we even talking about? I have no idea what this is and I have no intention of researching this. I don't know what just happened. What's with the clothes? They're hardcore. Hardcore! 
That's it. They're just clothes. I thought there would be more to it. It's just a style, you know, normal hard style. Anyone can wear it. Take care, Noid. Delorean Church, the place to be. Make the noise, my church people. Our speakers are set up behind the young man blasting a family He song. stands on stage behind a table, nodding along to the music and waving his hand in the air. In front of him, the audio mixer, one reel spinning. The other reel deck is empty. Oh. Cables run hither and thither. On one side, you see an auxiliary line in with the number 4.5 written next to it. How do you like it in the church? Yeah! Back on the case! No disgrace! Bring it down to party place! The first page of the second chapter! He's always a causal around the Grand Hall. Could it be? Maybe for him. You only have a chapter or two left in you. Last of the penultimate, more like. Alright, goodbye, Cad. Oh, let's see if there's anything new here. The mother <clears throat> of you. No. Yes. What is it? How's the project going? I see that your neighbors have moved in, but all I hear is anodic dance music. What? What did you say? She leans closer, eyes knitted together in a puzzled expression. You can barely hear her over the thumping bass of bass of anodic dance music. I said, how's the project going? I can't hear you. The music is too loud. She shouts, pointing at the enormous speaker that's churning out the sound. The project, how is it going? Oh, the project! It's not going well! Her face lights up for a second before she gives you an exaggerated hand head shake. Why? There's that guy! I need him to plug a 3.5 cable into the auxiliary input so that I can route the audio signal through the mixer into the speakers. Why don't you just ask him? He doesn't listen to me! He only ever seems to care about hardcore and Yekokata. A place to be, apparently. I'll speak to him, see what I Thanks. can do. Maybe you can get through his magic rhyme. I already did. She does jazz hands to mock him. Let me know how it goes. Bye. A better deal. Yeah. Medium car. <laughs> hey, can you please route Suna's signal through your speakers? To the mega. Yeah, I can route it through auxiliary. What kind of a cable does she use? 3.5 or 4.5? It's 3.5. No doubt about it. It's on the ground. Point to it. Oh, she uses 3.5. Yeah, the auxiliary lining is 4.5 millimeter. These two hey, that boy. Thanks for the hydrate, that boy. Oh no, we're going to be in this church forever. Hello. How are you today? Don't worry, I have an adapter for it right here. He searches for the cable on the ground and picks it up, looking at the jack. Hang on, this is a 4.5. We're all good, people! With a grin, he sticks the plug into the auxiliary line and you hear a satisfying click. Oh, thank God. Adapters noticeably degrade the sound quality. Great! Someone got through to him! Okay, let's get it all set up. Can we turn the music off, please? I'm good as well, thank you. Egg the music. Everybody! Everybody! Don't panic! I'm going to turn off the on off for just a sec for a special scheduled event. The young man shouts as he clicks a switch on the mixer. The on off will be back, but we're doing something else for one moment. All right. Go tell her that Egghead is ready to rave to her tunes, and then I'll turn off the music. All right, goodbye, Egghead. Yes, what is it? All right, I told Egghead. He plugged in the cable. You can now unmute your speakers. Okay, but think you can ask him to turn the volume down a bit, just in case. She seems hesitant. Her eyes still fixed on Egghead. Maximum. 
Charles Egghead, a great smile still adorning his face, larger than a red dwarf star. Maximum is the only way! I know, I know it is, but could you please turn it down just this instance? Just this one time? Maximum is not the only way, okay? Pump it to the brick! Pump it to the hard master! There's no other way! Glue style! Glue style? Okay, there literally is no other way. The mixing desk is glued to Maximum. See? He pumped it to the hard master. It's hopeless. I think what I had is trying to say is that the volume button is stuck on Maximum. Of course it is. Okay, that boy. She shrugs, consigned to her fate. Yeah! Permanent enlightenment! Ray of sound! Never mind then. Let's get on with our project. I'm going to unmute the speakers on account of five. Everyone ready? She looks around the church. Egghead pumps his hand up in the air, waiting for the beat to drop. Born ready. Ready. I'm ready if you two are detectives. The lieutenant nods stoically. Not so stoically. His hand moves to the gun holster. Ah, uh, hold on for a moment. What? Never mind, let's do this. I'm ready. Ooh. Five, four, three, two, one. You disengaged. She lifts her hand from the keyboard. Complete silence fills the room. No wind outside. No waves. No floorboards creaking. Total, continuous silence. This is unnatural. The woman looks around. In the silence, you see dust move on the floorboards. The driver of the speaker vibrates in the air and then stops. Plasterwork begins to crumble down the walls. In the silence, a low hum starts creeping up your spine. It's a song inside you, not in the speakers, not in the room. A great bass sigh in the basement of your mind. Slowly, it builds until the air around you starts to vibrate. It will devour everything. The floorboards, the glass, the streets and the people. Nothing will remain. Guys, what's going on? There's alarm in the man's voice as he steps back to scan the surroundings. A slight rattle like crystal clattering in the cupboard fills the air, joining the chorus. This fragile world is about to break. Ooh. It's getting louder! Says Noid, his eyes riveted on this strange circle of water basins. In the basins, the water looks like it's boiling. Hosiana, mother of Mega! You hear Eckhead yell, then something else, but his voice is growing faint. In his mind, a tidal wave approaching from afar, swallowing entire coastlines on its way. Salvation. Hey, uh, what's that weird rattling sound? The beauty and the beat! The future of dance! Planetary! No, Egg! It's the window! The glass shards around Dolores Day's vacant heart appear to be vibrating from the sound. It almost looks as if she's alive. In the corner of your eye, the lieutenant steps aside, cautiously, his eyes searching for a possible evacuation route. The window is going to come down! No, the roof! She looks up as screech fills the air, a scream of wood and nails. The pillars of the church twist and creak about, the, about and around you. Cracks appear on the stained glass window. Cracks run up the wooden pillars in the dark. Come down to us! Love! It's shaking the building's foundation. The floor twists. A great pulse arises in your flesh. That's it. I'm muting it. Uh, <laughs> hmm. I want to dance with somebody now. Everybody, don't panic. It's beautiful. Let's go with this. Beautiful car! Beautiful life! Shit! It doesn't stop. A seal? Have you? The woman is furiously pressing down on her keyboard, but the sound doesn't stop. Yes, I've turned it off. She yells, holding the contact mic in her hand. Andre, pull the compressor! The place is gonna come down! Fuck! I can't shut it up! The signal's passed! 
It's not in here. It's... Andre frantically smashes buttons. In the mixing desk now, building into a positive feedback loop. This is it. A great roar. The vault of the roof twists above you. Glass shatters somewhere near the door. It's coming down. Egghead, it's in the desk. And then it stops. Totally and utterly. As if there never was a sound. Only your ears still ring from the shock. Everybody is staring at Egghead. Holding a dangling cable in his hand. A black three-pin connector. Egg. I pulled the plug. It was getting too hardcore. You did good, Egg. Most of the place seems to be intact. Fucking hell. Programmer lady, tell me you were recording that. Four years. Twenty-two people. Millions of reals. All that time. This is what we were up against. Just erased it. Her lip trembles. Suriswolf isn't gonna believe this. Yeah, but did you record it though? It was dope. I think we can use it. Yes, Andre. I recorded it. Damn, I, I need to send some letters now. He composes herself, wipes the dust of her sweater and rests her hands on the keyboard. Thank you all for doing this. Eggman, you too. And you, officer. I don't know what we've discovered, but I know what it sounds like now. That's the start. What was that? I've never heard anything like that. It was mathematical information Welcome from back, the friends. anomaly, presented as a waveform. That's what it was technically. Theoretically... He shakes her head. I have no idea. I've never even heard of anything like this. A voice seems muffled in the silent church. It's your ears adjusting after the exposure. Kim, did you hear that? It was very hard not to. I think you're right. There is something going on here. And you need to be very careful with it. I promise, officer. We will <clears throat> not play it again. You are going to write Sully's Law? Yes, our lead designer. And maybe some of the producers too. And some of the writers. <clears throat> if they're sober enough to open a transmission. They need to hear. That it wasn't her fault. Or theirs. They need to hear about this. Don't worry. I won't send the recording. Although I doubt they have the speakers to produce the frequency anyway. What happens now? Are you going to... Stay here. I'm going to stay here with these lunatics. Send letters, maybe meet Sulispov. Also devise further measurements. I want you to know that's totally chill with us. I don't care, but thank you anyway. <clears throat> that's the best she can manage for Andre. It's quite a lot in truth. For her, at least. Now, I have a theory to come up with. Some kind of preliminary explanation to all this. Or the letter will sound like I've lost my mind. Yes, and we have to get back to stabilizing Martin. It's not over yet. It's Instead not over of yet. It with loud bass noise of unknown origins. It's not over yet. Can we get more logic? I think I have my logic equipment on already. Never mind. Wait, maybe there is something with minus logic. Yes, what is it? We can do it. We can do it. All you hear is silence in your head. Really? Really? Yes, what is it? For material on the 2mm hole in the world. All you hear is silence no. in your head. No! No! No way! No way, no, I'm, I'm going to save scum. I'm going to reload and Ooh. succeed in that. I'm going to succeed in that. Yes, what is it? No! 
But I'm, I'm going to put the points though. To be to be fair. You don't have to. You already have. A long time ago. Wait, how? These thoughts formed in you somewhere in a long forgotten discussion behind the kitchen table in the evening light. Tuna, it's the origin point of the pail. What? The swallow, it's how it starts. It's baby pail. But, but pail isn't here. We're thousands of kilometers from the edge. She looks up and there's fear in her eyes as she considers the possibility. No, look up first. We are 20 meters from the very edge. She looks up into the darkness under the nave, then back at you. The pale is only an effect, a transition between the world and that. Then what is that? It's nothing. No, it's less than nothing. No. It's less than less than nothing. The final rest state for reality. Imagine if all this never was. Then the pale is... Simply a gradient. But the gradient, it clearly hasn't started yet. We are here and the pale is not. One day when it's larger it will be. I understand. A theory of the pale where instead of an outer ocean it metastasizes. Like a cancer or a mold. Erupting in points inside the world. This is one of those places. According to this, how long... Until it starts swallowing? It's already started, starting with sound. And information, causing data losses in the East Insel Indian front. Have you considered why it's formed in a church? And also when or how it might start growing, or if it has other effects in addition to sound and data? An intellectual hunger fills her now, casting fear aside. I also have a question, since we are piling in the now. How do you know this? I'm not doubting you. I'm simply curious as to how a detective of the RCM... It didn't form in a church, the church formed around it. Of course! A pine wood sarcophagus, or a, a containment facility of some kind, built by the first settlers. Yes, acting on an instinctual level, or religious practices we forgot. I have considered the same. The bad news is, there were seven pine wood churches built in the first decade of provincial settlement. Most of them were burnt down during the revolution, or repurposed before, during the suzerain. I'm not saying all of them have one in them, but... Some of them might. A black grain hanging in the air. All the failed businesses in the doomed commercial area, all the failure in Martinez. You think the presence of that puncture has somehow influenced the outcome of events here? Even, say, software development? She already made up her mind when she heard it. Some kind of great and uncaring force had to play a part. It wasn't only them. All the failed businesses and ideologies, there's something wrong here. I told the producers we need to go and move to a normal office building with amenities. But no, the artists like the milieu, the writers like the history. I told them. She shakes her head. I should let people still working in there know about this. They might be affected. Sure. You mean, play Sans and the Dice Maker? There was almost no one left when we packed up. Uh, I don't think play Sans will survive this knowledge. I don't think Niha is playing fair in this game. Why not? Well, yes, both of them deserve to know. Then go sure. I think I heard this thought before, that's how I know. An amateur anthropomedic police officer. I'd like to say I've heard stranger things, but I'm not sure. This is a hell of a guess, however. Well worded, I might add. Yes, it is very interesting. But I wouldn't say you know. This is a guess. One that's going to have to be proved by anthropomedic scientists. One day, all the world will be like that two millimeter hole. She falls silent. The wind blows in through the hole Cleaning out the stained rooms. glass window, cold and moist. What's that? 
Someone's been walking around in your dreams lately, looking for looking for something, tidying up, rearranging, storing away all the unrealized dreams, putting old paints in boxes. The worst nightmares have settled down for a while, a spot of light on the bedroom door after the dark, the fluttering of eyelids in the spring sun, a thought that arises only to disappear again, and yet there's a pattern emerging. I kind of like this one, it's like getting our memory fixed. Organizing our minds, something like that. I like the sound of it, but I don't have a point right now, so maybe later. I'm going to leave that out. But the rest? Some of this I can use to start to explain this to the rest of the team. Maybe I'll sound mad, but... Man, you will certainly sound mad. One more thing. Maybe a club for anodic music isn't the worst thing you can erect around this particular point in space. Perhaps not. Yeah! Once the light is on in the universe, it will never go out! Thank you, Egghead. Let's leave it at that, shall we? We have an anthroponetic detection to perform in this district. I do have one mystery that still needs solving. The radio ghost in the doomed commercial area's electronic doorbell. The creepy woman! We were wondering about that when we worked there. But I had completely forgotten about it ever since. It must be anthroponetic crosstalk. The one you get in radios and long distance calls. Now it makes sense with the pale right on the doorstep. Incredible. This would also explain why we get it on the police radio all the time. Anthroponetic crosstalk? It's quite common actually. When the signal gets rooted through pale, all kinds of irregularities take place. You may hear snippets of someone else's conversation, or the voice of your former lover, or an echo of an event that took place 100 years ago. Pale is a shroud of memories, and it doesn't really distinguish to whom those memories belong to. You could hear anything. That makes sense. Thanks for explaining that to Anytime. me. Anytime. Right, I'll let you work in peace now. Okay, I think we did good work here, and I think that's probably all of it. The mother of humanism stands above you. I, I think that's all. I can't imagine doing anything more. This will have to happen at some time or the other. We are not doing this. Wait, I, I did this. I did this. I got an armor piece. Why? Why didn't that quest get fulfilled? Armored gloves. Okay, this is going to be done next day in the during the day. Go read the bunker. Okay, we are going to read this book. We are going to forge these signatures. This I don't know. How did I miss these? I walked around the island so many times. Boardwalk Island. This next day, this I don't know. This next day. This I don't know. This is going to be next day also. This we don't know. And these three I may not do at all, but we'll see. So. Check the boardwalk for bullet traces, check the island for bullet traces. Where do I need to stand for these? Does anyone know where exactly I have to stand for them? Because I walked around the island 10 times already. Check islands, check boardwalk. What is boardwalk?
Maybe I need my visual calculus stuff on. By the way, if anyone knows, feel free to let me know about this. You can only access the board walk one for now. Ah, okay. Oh, I'm going to do that. Betting on something else when you read. The ah, okay, okay. So I can't go there yet. I don't have access. Okay. Wait, I have access to the boardwalk one? So I have access to one that I haven't found yet. Is that what you're saying, Parrot? I can find one right now. So this must be the island then, we can't go there yet, right? The boardwalk is the general area where you found the dead body. But I was there several times. Let's go back. So this this is the boardwalk. Yeah, I guess, but I don't know. We were here many times. Stop messing with the coin weaver and hold on to something. The wind is so strong. It's a long way down to your death from here. 20 meters at least. A man lies Does anyone, anybody know the exact spot that I need to stand to get the toad or whatever, the, the check? Oh. Maybe it's this, but I, I don't know how I um, how I'm going to get there. All right, Viram. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to end soon, probably anyway. So take care, and I'll see you next time. You see, a slogan used to. In I cannot find it. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it has to be the morning or not evening. I don't know. All right, let's let's go back to the hostel, read the books, do the forgery. And end the day and end the stream. I don't know about the boardwalk. This is the wrong place.
be able to come back here anyway. To talk to everybody that we haven't been able to talk to at night. We look around again with a fresh mind. I came. Right. Hmm. Let's start with this. You take the legal documents out of the envelope. A 12 to 40 month construction period and the zoning plan in the addendum. Okay, let's do this. Commence the forgery. With a confident flourish, you complete your forgery. What do you see on the signature line? Two names, Isabel Sadie and Lillian Carter. Indeed, they look distinctly different and very convincing. These might as well be their actual signatures, but they're not. And the document will be nullified if they dispute it. That means Everard will have to start over. All you need to do now is mail the signatures to Everard's accountant in La Delta. There was a mail delivery box in the plaza near the corner of the bookstore. Let's do that. Let's do that before we end the day. Or maybe we can do it tomorrow. As in in-game tomorrow. Okay, Cockatoo book. A Cockatoo. This book talks about the delicate nature of two as read well some as of introducing this. some of the most popular species among the bird enthusiasts. Read the about the major cockatoo, majestic cockatoo. Perhaps the most impressive of all the species, the endangered major majestic cockatoo is often described as the most flamboyant bird in the jungle. Its pink-colored wings and flowing crest embellishing its proud and bumptious nature. In the words of poet explorer Sir James Fournier, few birds more enliven the monotonous hues of the verdant forest than this big, bold, and beautiful species. It must be glorious to behold, dark pink and snow white. Read about the most common Bang Bang Cockatoo. Despite its banging name, the Bang Bang Cockatoo is actually the shyest of the species, common in almost all Seminese forests, as well as zoos and homes all over the world. Its plumage is mainly grey and white. The Seminese name Bang Bang is thought to be of onomatopoeic origins. Honestly, this bird does sound a bit like me. Yes, but all those cockatoo species are so different. Which one are you? And the rivers run red! Hey, Adlag. Montron? Wow, we discovered quite a bit of character, quite a number of characters today, right? We are down to 97 undiscovered. So today, I mean, the, the, this, these are the final few minutes of the stream and this season of Evilometer, so... Last minutes to discover a new character. How are you, Endlog? Okay, so which one am I? What if I'm just a fuck up a two? A fuck up and a cockatoo. Hmm. Isn't that obvious? Major Majestic, here I come. Only the funeral cockatoo in its darkness can truly grasp the depths of my doom laden soul. The grey uncommon bang bang, that's me. Which one are we? I'm good as well. Really tired, but good. Which one am I? Which one are we? I don't think we are big, bold and beautiful. Probably we are the funeral cockatoo. Only the funeral cockatoo in its darkness can truly grasp the depths of my doom-laden soul. This is kinda too melancholic. Let's go with this. You're right. Your Setarchus Venerius embodied. This ominous bird belongs on your heraldry. Put the book away. 
Okay, we got that one. So we read this book and then I the reloaded. In a browsing, your educational survey is done. That's the Dolores day. Very kind Correct. of scene. As the f question easy. Every Franco Negro. Franco ne question three. Who? Pastor Correct. Nick. The most final stretch. Dolores Correct. day. Correct. Everything. Congratulations on finishing the test. The results and your subsequent grade have been calculated. You get an A. All correct. Impressive. Oddly so. You really navigated some treacherous waters here. Well done. Ace that. Take that, you book. You are really just talking to yourself. It is quite silly. Put the book away. So we did that one too. What is left? Primary for small kids. You hold in your hand the colorful primer. The title reads, A Primer for Small Kids. There's a bear involved. Exactly what I need. Hmm. This book will show you the score. Get you oriented with those basic concepts you appear to be hazy on. The anthropomorphic bear will give you the lowdown of your life. On what? The alphabet. Flip through the pages. Every page has one word designating one letter of the alphabet with a faded illustration. Most of them are scientific and cultural principles. It goes as follows. Let's do this. A is for azimuth. B is for boreas. C is for cosine. D is for diamite. E is for ellipse. F is for phlogiston. G is for gamut. Mm -hmm. H is for homeboy. I is for econ. J is for yura. K is for collapse. L is for laudanum. M is for Myriad. N is for Nadir. O is for Oriol. P is for Perihelion. Mm -hmm. Q is for Quasar. R is for Rhododendron. S is for Sinus. T is for Tree Collar. U is for Ultra. V is for Vector. W is for Varheit. X is for Xylophone. Y is for Ustava. Z is for Zenith. That's it. That's it. You know the alphabet now. Yay. In what is called the IL, the international language developed by scientists from Grad in the 20s. Sinus means sign, for example. Put the book away. Is there anything that I haven't inspected here? Or inspected thoroughly? Tattoos, maybe. The pattern still. Now. What about you this? Stare at the now familiar. As you hold it in your hands, it makes an uncomfortable crunching sound. Why did I fondle the shit jacket again? There is no why. Let's just put it away then. Okay, we have actually checked everything. You know what? I'm going to mail mail them all up today. Then, then sleep and the day. Oh, maybe I can steal some gas from Kim's car while he's not here. Let's check that too. Dented yellow mailbox greets you with its graffito, bullet holes, and an RCM sticker. I knew I'd get to use this mailbox for something. Other than developing a personal relationship? Looks like you were right. Drop the white envelope into the mailbox. You drop the white envelope in the darkness. It lands with a soft thud on what sounds like a couple of letters. About a week's worth of mail as collected in there. They'll empty this very soon. Probably did the right thing. You can't trust that slug, Everard. You know he's going to play you somehow. I know I did the right thing. Let's find the motor car. Where's 
Where is Kim's car? Wait, what is that? The hawthorn tree on Rue de Sanji's lane. Bronze-colored ribbons of magnetic tape are caught in its branches, fluttering in the breeze. Disentangle the tape. With slow and deliberate motions, pulling, bending, and unraveling, you manage to extricate the magnetic Did tape. Did I miss this area branches. completely? Oh, I just noticed that holding down tab and moving the mouse cursor up and down scrolls the the journal screen. It curls up into a mess inside your pocket. If only you could find a way to respool it so that you could hear what's on the tape. Maybe Roy from the pawn shop can help you with this. Little Thorn, pat the tree. Patting the tree reveals a small sticker which has almost been worn to oblivion. It reads, RCM Emergencies Desk, number 8102. Underneath a slogan, Mankind, be vigilant. The gnarled hawthorn tree on Rue de Sanji's lane endures the wintry gusts with ease. Weird, I, I completely missed this area somehow. So now we have to stop by Roy as well. Officer, the flashlight, Okay, please. okay. Every time, every time. Hello, hello. Hey, do you know how to know fix this? I can help you Show him the bundle of magnetic tape. You mean Reese Poli? Yeah, I do, but... Great, could you do it please? This is important, I need to be able to play this tape for someone. But I'm not some Mr. Fix-It. I'm a pawnbroker. If you want to pawn the tape, sure. Although it looks pretty... worthless. Just explain why you need this so much. He's bound to understand. Worthless? It's not worthless, Roy. This could be the next big thing for the local dance music scene. Huh? What do you mean? Do you know that old church down the coast? Yes. What about it? I have some young ravers turn this place into a nightclub, and they play some, and they play these weird beats there, which they call anodic music. Is it any good? The music, I mean. No, that's the thing. You Hydrate. can't believe how unbelievably thin the beat is. There's nothing to it. No bass. It just goes bzoot, bzoot, bzoot. But this tape could make it hardcore. Man, you're really invested in this. Thank you, Gigi. I just... I think I finished what my third bottle today. Okay, I'll help you out. It's going to take a moment, though. So just sit back and relax. You take some time to look around the store. So this is the not something old that I missed. All around the pawn shop this is, is something new. Suddenly, Roy turns back to you with a reel of tape in his hand and coughs. You know these visuals would look super cool in the church. Hey, those visuals you got here would look great in the church. Point at the lights in the pawn shop. Yeah, I bet they would. All those lights in a massive church hall. He stares at the intricate interplay of light and shadow all around him, suddenly moved by the idea. A sanctuary filled with hand-picked positive photons. There would be no room for sadness in such a place. It's a brilliant vision. There's a but, isn't there? There's always a but. You and me, we could make this all become true. Mankind needs this. But... I rather like it here, too. So yeah, I'm not giving you my projector. This tape is all I can do for you and your... Yeah, Let's try this. I think. There's a but. Yeah, man. No. I rather like this place happy too. You know, where I work. This tape is all I can do for you and your friend's nightclub project. Well, thanks for the help. Look at the clock. Wait, this took more than just a few moments. That was at least 15 minutes. Yeah, it was. Respooling isn't that difficult. Although I had to mend the tape in a few places. Anyhow, it's yours now. He sliced the tape closer to you on the countertop. Well, thanks for the help. Yeah, my pleasure. I okay, we are done. So we have to go back to the islands and give the tape. We can do it today, but I am honestly, I'm done. I'm not going back there. 
today. We are going to do it next stream. Along with the other crap that we have to do. There's there's still so much that I I have in my mind. I feel weird having to stop. You know, it always feels feels weird having to stop on a Friday because we won't I won't get to play this until next Wednesday. It's a long time that I have to keep in mind what I have to do. But I'm done for sure. By done, I mean we are going to sleep. The bed is still cold from the broken window and not too inviting, but it's yours. You've earned it. Go to sleep. It's not easy, but your bones are so tired from what feel like weeks of work on the case. You have to try. After what feels like hours, you feel you might be sleeping. Thoughts, baby. A million little lights in the dark. You're one fine instrument, brother. All those faces and all those names. All that laughter and screaming and scheming around. Every corner and every street. Recorded in you forever on ferrotape. Spinning on empty. On and on it goes for untold hours. At the disco where you first asked her to dance. Okay. Rising. Rising. Above the dark curvature. The great wingspan of sleep. Studded with stars. Behold. There are millions of them down there. The first time. The last time. The smoke in her mouth. The plotted flowers. The faces turning, changing. Plotted flowers? What is it? It's the world, Harry boy. And you're made of it. Every day you're out there, you make more of yourself from it. I'm afraid you can't be unmade now. You can never forget this shit. The rain, the snow, I don't want to, it's beautiful. Beautiful! It's stuck on loop, whirling, spitting out words and images. You're the son of the world again, Harrister. A ceaseless agent, picking up litter and old newspapers, collecting your little bubblegum wrappers and idiotic picture postcards. What? Meaningless, meaningless keepsake. What's wrong with postcards? Reading your awful letters and recalling things, aren't you? The endless names of the world. An address book you are. The map of a city. That's right, I am an agent of the world. You'll go insane if you keep going like this. One more day, and you'll be in the loony bin. I just know you will. And for what, brother man? And the spinal cord is also the same voice actor, right? For the working class. Shut up, Richard. For the money, baby. Shut up, so affair. For the greater good. Shut up, empathy. Solving your little crossword puzzles, doing your tasks, crossing names off lists, trying to become some sort of world detector. It won't make it okay. It won't put smoke back in her mouth. I don't like any of these. We are making progress, measured steady progress, that is moralism. Economic self-interest with the ultra-liberalism. The first one is clearly communism. 
Forget politics, I'll never sleep if I keep on like this. Should I go further with the moralism? I already have the thoughts. And it looks like it's it is something to you know balance Harry. His mind is already in a delicate state. Maybe something like Centrism can keep him alive, basically. Punch your proprietor is the same guy, too? Let's go with moralism in this playthrough, I guess. We are making progress. Measured, steady progress. There he goes again. He's a real political animal, our oh, Harry. He still doesn't see that it's the world. Changing around Maybe I should have him. gone with the no politics option. He's got no idea what he's in for. Why? Cause only love can break your heart. Feel the pillow under your cheek. Beep, beep, beep. The alarm is ringing, Harry. The disco circus goes on and on. You barely slept three hours last night. You can do it. It's nothing. Do it for the city. Go. Do it for the picture puzzle. Put it all together. Solve the world. One conversation at a time. Open your eyes. Did we sleep at all? Okay, we are done. We are going to end here. Oof. Long day, tiring day. Long week and tiring week for me. Time for me to get some rest. Let's find someone to raid. Thanks for being here, Cupid. And everyone else. Who do we raid? Let's raid Johnny. When did we last raid Johnny? Must have been a while, right? Yeah, a month. Almost a month. Alright. Let's go say hi to our good friend Johnny Isle. He's playing Broken Sword 1. It must be his 100th playthrough or something. <laughs> anyway, let's go there and enjoy the gameplay and enjoy his stream. Thanks so much for being here. I hope you're enjoying the game at least as much as I am. I am really enjoying it. It's tough, as I keep saying. It can be tough on all of us, I suppose. Experiencing the game is, you know, this kind of game can be difficult. But yeah, um, I, I feel like we are nearing the end. And um, that means we are nearing the end of the poll. The poll is still going on Discord right now with... Um, Temple of Elemental Evil winning, if you want to, you know, solidify its win, or if you want to change that, the case, if you want, for example, Elder Scrolls Arena to win, hop into Discord and cast your vote. Also, um, yeah, actually, that's all. That's all I'm going to say for today. Again, thank you so much for being here, talking, lurking, chatting, all that good stuff, keeping me company. I really appreciate it. I will be back on Sunday with shard lights and next discussion stream is going to be next wednesday until then take care of yourselves and be well and don't forget to copy and paste the raid message to johnny goodbye for now